For those of you in the paddock today and for those of you tuning in from live around the world, welcome to Newcastle Motorsports Park for main events. It's Grand National Championship Sunday from Newcastle, and we are getting set to go green here with our cadets to kick things off for the first of the class rotation, all the way ending off at senior medium at the bottom of the lineup. We've got the drivers in their carts before the engines fire off. We'd like to ask that everyone in the paddock please rise and remove your hats for the playing of first of the Canadian National Anthem and please remain standing for the playing of the United States National Anthem. With that, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time to go racing. Tony the Toe Cirillo up here in the booth. Dave Mack was down getting intel on grid. It's about time to fire engines here. We're just moments away as the drivers are continuing to get suited and booted for main event number one. And Tony, take it away here. What a great uh, day it is right. outside. Beautiful weather. Some of the best we've had for the biggest Grand Nationals we have ever right. had. This is the best weather we've had here at the Grand Nationals. Unseasonably warm here today. And that's going to play a big part for these drivers. The track is heating up. 
We've seen a lot of rubber down in the corner, especially corner one. You could just see the rubber piled up there. It's going to get greasy. Now you got to plan for 16 laps. You got to plan for 16 laps. So do, how do you want to go out? Do you want to go out? Maybe you're a little loose in the beginning. You're, you're hold, trying to hold it on the edge, and it'll constantly come in. That's where you want to be. If you're, if you're really good in the beginning, you might start fading off towards the end. Lap 15 and 16 is going to be the important laps. We've seen that is where the passes take place for the lead usually, right at the end. So a lot for the drivers, a lot for the technical people in the pits to think about. How do they set up? Watching the temperature, where it is today. Short sleeves, everybody. We've been here wearing heavy coats, but now it is summertime for these drivers, and the conditions are changed. Now, for the locals, they know this track, and they know what it is. They know how the temperatures affect the surface because they've raced all year around here. So they're here all the time. You might, if you can get in with a, with a local and find out what's the setup. I don't know how many people are going to give away their secret setup, but that's where it's going to be. So let's watch as they, they take off and get ready for the biggest race of four cycle in the country, maybe in the world, the biggest race for four cycles right here, CKNA, Newcastle Motor Speedway in Indiana. We're getting ready to go. We're going to have our grid walk with David. David Mack, he'll be down there. And I got to say, David Mack, I think, started this even before NASCAR was doing the grid walk with how they do it now at NASCAR. But David Mack down there with Marie from the Canadian Series. We thank them for getting out there and talking to the drivers. All right, so this is the sportsman class. You got to be 10 years old to 13, 10 to 13. You see Jason, the, uh, the chief uh, starter out there. Jason, the chief starter, going around, shaking everybody's hand. A great guy, great flag person. He's our chief starter. So Jason now will work, walk back to his, his spot, and he's got his orange and black uh, suit jacket on there, supporting the CKNA covers. Dave Mack is down there with Marie from the Canadian series, the Canadian CKNA. So we appreciate it. Remember, this is the sportsman class. You got to be 10 years old to 13 years old. That's what's out there. And it should be starting on the grid. Hold, I mean, starting on the pole. Holding harder. Grady Chronic is in the first row. They're going to lead them down. Second row now, you have Carter Barks, Barkus and A.J. Stoner. In the next row, it's Leighton Mole and Alex Hasse. In the next row, it is Ezekiel Height and Tyrone Kemper Jr. In the next row, Isaiah Maxey and Sawyer Chambers. In the following row, it's, it is Jacob Shabble and Lincoln Davis. Uh, following that is Truda Trieb and Trevor Clinton. Then you got Braden Domont and Will Wilkie. And you have Evan Benoit and Adam Woodbridge, Slayton Badlock and Colin Eddy, Carson Benj Benjamin and Braden Westfall, Axel Robards and Hudson Jack. It's a little tight here. <laughs> You're in. Uh, uh, I can't get that last number. I'm very sorry. It's number 114, Hudson Jack. In seven, I mean, number seven is up the next row is Lincoln Massey and Person Gulseth. And then you have Noah Faust and Gage Grant, Jack Spett and Trace Rosinski, and Reese Hussey and Landon Robbins, Sidney Miller and Ethan Leroy. That'll be the whole 34 as they get ready to go.
All right, so we're getting ready here with the first class to go out in the Grand National Championships. It is the sportsmen. This will, whoever wins this class will be crowned your Grand National Champion in the sportsmen. You got to be 10 years old to 13. 10 years old to 13. That's what's out there right now. And watch the racecraft that these young drivers have. 10 to 13 years old. We still even got two other classes that are younger. But right now, it's the sportsman class. So we'll see how they shake up when they come around and get ready. And, of course, Jason, our chief starter, he'll be out there in the orange and black suit jacket. And he'll be giving them the green when he feels they are right. We want to keep this fair for everybody. We like a good slow start so that everybody has a fair chance. There are 34 carts to take the green. So we will see what happens. This is Tony DeTo Cirillo here at the CKNA Grand Nationals for 2023 at the Newcastle Motorsport Park. The biggest four-cycle race in the country, maybe in the world, or getting close to it. Five over 500 entries. We had to have last chance qualifier races to get it down to allowing 60 carts, 60 carts on the track. So it will be some event, and the first one to kick it off is the sportsman class. And as I said, Holden Harder and Grady Chronic, they are the two drivers that earn their way through all the heat races to make it to the front and to lead this pack down. And let's see if Jason Burgess likes them. He's our chief flag person. All right, and our, our main starter, as we call it, main starter, chief starter. And you see him exercising his arm, getting ready with that green flag, but he wants to hide it. He'll just put the yellow up and see what they do. If he likes them, that yellow will get out, put behind him, and he'll wave that green. Right now he puts the yellow up to say slow down. He wants them nice and slow. He wants everybody to get on the straightaway so there's no stragglers. It's going to be tough with 60 carts when we get them out there. Right now we have 34 carts, and look how big it looks. Oh, there are 34 carts out there in the sportsman class, drivers 10 to 13 years old. And let's see now what happens. Jason, he puts up the yellow. He's telling them, all right, make sure you get in the tram lines. And there will be tram line violations if somebody jumps that tram line before they get to the start-finish line. And there's a camera there to catch that. So be careful. Here we go. Jason got the yellow. He doesn't like them. He does not like them. They're going to go around again. They'll take a cutoff. They won't have to do the whole mile point one track. They will do a cutoff. So Jason, our chief starter, he's going to go over and spin, you know, give them a little bit of sign. He wants them. I guess they were coming a little too fast. I know this is the Grand National. A lot's on the line. People get a little excited, a little nervous. Hey, I know it's tough for the people in the pits that have a child out there racing. They want to get this first lap going and get everybody through the first turn. That's when you start settling in and you start racing and, and, and the, the, the nervousness calms down. So uh, we're getting ready again. You see Jason, he went over there, and he kind of gave them the sign that you got to get it right, otherwise I'm going to give you the yellow again. And if it keeps going, they, they take the first two and put them back in the second row and move the second row up to the front. But right now it is Holden Harder and Grady Chronic. They're the two that have to keep order at this point. The pole position driver sets the pace, and then everybody else, uh, outside poles, got to stay even or a little behind. So we'll see what happens again. Holden Harder and Grady Chronic. Then you have Carter Barkas and Leighton Mull, A.J. Stoner and Isaiah Maxey. Those are your top three rows. Let's see if he likes them when they come down that straightaway. So you see him. He's getting ready with that green flag. He'll keep it behind his back. And he'll get ready. And, they're, they're, you know, here's what happens, folks. They're nice and slow up there. But once they hit that straightaway, if somebody hits their gas and they hear that engine speed up, then another guy speeds and another driver speeds up and another driver speeds up. And Jason says, no good. you got to try to remain calm on that start. It is the hardest thing for a carter and the hardest thing for somebody that has somebody out there racing. They just want this to get going. You see Jason's got the yellow up. He tells him he turns it sideways. That means keep it in order. Keep it straight. Keep it together. Keep it slow. Here they come. They look good to me. They really look good to me. And he does like them, and he gives them the green, and they're off. 
And Holden Harder quickly goes into the lead. He takes the lead. And they get through turn one, turn two. Everybody's clean and safe. 34 starting, 34 carts starting the race. Right. Holden Harder did not come across a track like I expected. No, no, here, he, Tony. He, he, he that was really a good, that. clean start. I mean, I give these kids credit. They, they got through turn one with no major accidents. And again, we're telling the drivers, this is a 16-lap race. So they take it easy the first lap. You're not going to win it. And don't get into trouble because then you could be out for the rest of the race. Try to get all 16 laps in. And, oh, and we got a couple out already. I see the uh, 212. Let me look it up real quick. I'm not sure. I don't yeah. know. Holding harder. Him. Still holding on to the lead, but he, he's, I believe that might be Grady Kronick. Right. Oh, no, that looks like Carter Barkas right behind Aww. him. Barkas putting the pressure on already. Holding harder. Like, you know, now again, this is a long race. Yeah, 16 laps. 16 Huge. laps. So you got to think about what position you want to be in, how the draft is working, how the track is working. But of course, at the 15th and 16th laps, there could be a little bit of change, more rubber down on the track. Remember, these drivers have been running the same tire since Friday. The same tire. They cannot change their tires. Holden Harder in the lead. Carter Barkas in second. A.J. Stoner in the third place. Leighton Mull in fourth. Alex Hasse in fifth. Grady Kronick in sixth. Tyrone Kemper Jr. in the seventh. Ezekiel Height in eighth. Sawyer Chambers in ninth. Lincoln Davis in tenth. Will Wilkie in eleventh. Isaiah Maxey in the top 12 right now. So let's keep an eye on the leaders. Can Holden Harder hold it? 16 laps. Can he stay in the lead for 16 laps? He's being hard-pressed. Maybe a little action there for that third place. One, two, three, four, five. Well, five, and then there's a little break-off there in six, I believe. Grady Kronick has dropped back to that sixth spot. And the action now looks like the top five, maybe. Top six want to start to pull away. One, two, three, four. No, five are pulling away. And that's holding harder. Barkas, Stoner, Mull, and Hasse. Here we go. And they are running tight. Remember, these, these kids are only 10 to 13 years old out there. And you can see how they are driving. Now, they might make it look easy for you people at home that are watching this and people at the track. Well, people at the track know how yeah. hard it is. But at home, it might, you might think, oh, look how easy this is, how they go around the turns. But it is not easy. And they, these, chil these children have skills, let me tell you. Oh, these are, these are truly, this is future of motorsports. These are the best right. in the business right here. There goes a good pass, a clean pass, nice pass. Uh, I'll pick up that number. It might have been 4-11. Uh, you know, missed it. But a good pass going there. And so we got to change of position. And then, of course, we'll pick it up when they cross the, what we call the stripe or the start-finish line. Back in sixth place, Ezekiel Haight just turned purple. So he ran the fastest lap of the race so far. That was right. lap number two. So uh, Ezekiel Height, And when, when Dave there says purple, that means they went the fastest lap for this class right now. Now, there could be another faster person later on, but right now he turned the fastest lap. Or he could run the uh, turn purple two laps in a right. row, three laps in a row. You know, <laughs> he could be the fastest guy himself. out there, right? But, yeah, the fastest lap of right. anybody on the track. Right. And, uh, you know, it's not always the fastest person that wins. That's the other thing. It's all about driving, being, being calm, keeping it, being patient, waiting for your shot. If you're out in front now, that is a little different story. You really have to think about, you know there's going to be a major, if there's people on the, right on your bumper, what are you going to do when it comes to the end that they don't get into your draft and try to slipstream you or, or sling out on you on the straightaway? Now, we haven't seen that been working too good. We've seen the chance pass has to occur before the main straightaway but those conditions could have changed you see the top three now they have pulled away barkers harder in height they have pulled away in height now looking for a second place position but he holds on now here he goes well, again he, he ducks down so some good running by height there i believe that is the oh oh no i'm sorry that yeah ezekiel height the 048 it's actually heat hate yep 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 okay that is hate sorry about that that's all right <laughs> Sorry, Levi. We'll, we'll, we'll get it yeah. right sooner or later. <laughs> no, that's Ezekiel. No, his dad is Ezekiel. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you got it. Yep. <laughs> and look at Mull. Look at Mull coming up here. He's uh, back in. Is that fourth place? Yeah. Yep. There's Leighton Mull, and he's, he's uh, running a real good race. Once again, your leader, Carter Barker, is followed by Holden Harder, Ezekiel Haight, Leighton Mull, and Grady Kronick are your top five. The Mull boys are uh, doing a real good job. That's uh, 
Layton and his brother Cooper in a different class. And he's kind of peeking around. I think there's going to be some dancing pretty quick. For the most part, it's been real clean, Tony. Real clean. Just yeah, a couple no, they, of off. The, these, guys, these kids have been driving a great race here, and it is the Grand National. I know a lot of pressure. Uh, every position means something. Even if you're not in the top five, you every position means something to these people, to all the drivers here. They want to go home and say, I finished. I, well, the big thing, well, this one's going to be, made it. I made yes. the main. It doesn't yes. matter where I finished. I made the main. It's and, been a long weekend. And, yeah, the <laughs> fact that they're in this race, it's right. a huge, huge That's testament right. to their ability. So, so they want to go home that, but also you want to go home and say, well, I finished 20th out of 60. You know, it's still a big deal. Oh. And to look at the top three. They have pulled away. Barker's harder in height. Uh, hate. Hate. <laughs> <laughs> they have pulled away. And uh, a little space between them. Uh, we got to remember, Carter Barker's took the lead right at the, right at the green flag. But there's 16 laps, and we'll see. What happens? 12 to go, so we still got a long way to go. Remember, we were only running eight lap heats, <laughs> so yeah, it's a it's long way double, for these drivers. Double that. Yeah, we, we're running the features are double they that. They doubled now. that. Now you see in second place, the 57 of Holden. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Nope. Holden Harder's Holden, leading, yeah. Holden Harder's leading. I mean, the one, well, 048 of Ezekiel Haight. Yep. He tapped on his helmet. He needs some help. He wants somebody. And that's these young drivers have. They know what they got to do. They know their strategy. And when you see them tapping on their helmet, they're allowing the driver behind them to actually bump them. Yeah, they're they're asking them. help. Yep, help me. Help me. Push me. Yeah. Right. They're and asking the two for will help. run faster together than one runs alone. Of course. When you put two carts together, it becomes one vehicle with two engines. That's what happens. Something to do with physics, which I'm not familiar with. But when you hook up two carts together, they become one vehicle, but they got two engines. So that's why they can move so much faster than the rest of them. And you'll see drivers tap on the back of their helmet and say, it's okay. It's okay to bump me. It's okay. I see. A, I believe that was a 419 of Noah Faust. He had uh, gained eight positions, but he's running real slow. I'm not sure what's happening with Noah. Uh, tough break for Noah Faust. Fourth place, uh, Grady Chronic just turned purple, number 442. All right. You see that? And Leighton Mole's going backwards for some reason. He's back yeah. into seventh place. He dropped three spots so far. So did Grady. He dropped back, but he's still, he's, he turned the fastest lap that time. You also got some really fast you know, people that are moving up. Uh, Colin Eddy. Has moved up 12 slots. Cart number 99. Wow. Oh, we got one out in the dirt, but he recovers pretty quick. Colin Eddy has gone, moved up 12 spots, and now he's in the top 10. The number 99 of yep. Colin Eddy has moved up into the top 10, and he's had to pass 12 other drivers out there in order to make that top 10. Colin so. Eddy, one of my locals. I get to see him race all kinds of local tracks all over okay. the Midwest many times a year. So Colin and his sister Sparkles. Her <laughs> name is actually Alyssa, but I've known her Sparkles yeah. forever. <laughs> so uh, great job by Colin Eddy there, getting into the top ten. We'll keep an eye on him. Uh, you see Sawyer Chambers in the 245 moving up five positions, doing a great job there. Sawyer Chambers in the 245. He makes the podium right now. He's in that fifth slot. And that's so important to these young drivers to make that podium. But like I said, anybody making the features here today, that is a great accomplishment. And that's at least you could go home with that. I made the feature. And the ones that missed the feature, they have, they believe me, they picked up a lot by being here. They see what it takes to run a CKNA race and on top of that, a Grand National. Yeah, so they, here any, they any, come. Yeah, anybody out in the pits, you know, for any of the races coming up, if you made the feature, I'd be on the phone right now calling Grandma <laughs> back home. Grandma, I made the feature. So I, I'd be bragging, <laughs> guaranteed. Right. Holden Hodder, your leader, Ezekiel Haight in second, Chronic in third, Barkus in fourth, and look at Chambers. He's come up five positions to get into fifth. Kemper Jr. is right there in sixth. He's had to pass two people to get up to that sixth spot. A.J. Stoner, not sure what happened to him. He dropped back to seven. Leighton Mull dropped back to eight. Alex Hasse in ninth. Colin Eddy in tenth. Isaiah Maxey in 11th. Jacob Shabble in 12th. Braden Dumont in 13th. Tucker Treeb in 14th. I hope I probably messed that one up, but that's how they stack up. Top 14 drivers, but look at the top three. 
out there. They are driving a tight race, and you got to give Holden Harder credit. Cart number 57 as he runs with the number 048 and the 442 of Grady Connick and Height. They're right behind him, and now the, the strategy, you can't believe the strategy these young drivers have. So right now, they might be saying, I'm going to let Holden, I'm going to let him take the lead, I'm going to let him hold the lead, but I'm going to get aggressive when it comes down, and that's the halfway sign. So you see our chief starter out there, Jason, Jason giving Burgess, him that. Yep. Jason Burgess doing an excellent job. He's very animated. Oh, I love the, that. The best in the business. <laughs> the best in the business. And, I can't and, take it away from him. And I'll tell you, watch Jason at the checkered flags. Watch him leap off his <laughs> perch. You've never seen anything like it. <laughs> so, Jason, our chief started doing a Oh, now we're getting ah, a move. Race for the lead. And there goes a change of the leader. And it looks like, it was that Grady Chronic that took Haight. the lead? Uh, I got to pick that number Ze up. Ezekiel Haight. Or is Ezekiel yeah. Haight who yeah, has Zeke. taken the lead? That's the 048. So, and, uh, uh, that puts Harden back to second place. Uh, uh, yeah. No, it's still early. I mean, it's oh, yeah. halfway, roughly it's halfway. Early. So I wouldn't panic at all holding harder, which holding harder nope. wouldn't. He no, and maybe holding harder said at this point, <laughs> hey, let somebody else take the lead. Oh, yeah, holding harder going nope. back for well, it. And he, he gets it. The number 57 of holding harder becomes your leader. Again, wow, what a what a job there. 048, Hate goes into second, Chronic in third, Carter Barkas in fourth, Chambers in fifth. Those are your top five podiums right now. But what that did do is teach Hate that, yeah, he can take the spot when right. he wants it, and he knows where he can take it, what part of the track. And you see Hate again, banging on his helmet, tapping on his helmet, and he's getting help from Grady Chronic. If they yep. want to stay with, with Harder, they got to get up there and they got to stay in that draft. And it's so important now with these four cycles. And then a lot of people will tell me, hey, you know, when I was behind the guy, I can actually take my foot off the gas because yep. he's pulling me yep. through. And I'm faster than him. Not really. You might not be faster than him. He's breaking the wind for you, and it's, ma and it's making your cart run better. But once you pull out into the wind, you might not be as fast as you think you sure. are. So you got to be real careful. Right. Yeah, you got to be careful real careful. Pull, over, uh, pull out. So uh, we got some change of position there, back there in the pack. And uh, we still have, I believe it's still hard, harder up front. Yeah, harder is up front. Chronic, Height, Marcus, Chronic. Chambers, Kemper Jr. In six is Tyrone Kemper Jr., A.J. Stoner in seven. Alex Hasse in eighth. Colin Eddy up 13 positions mm. in ninth. That's the wow. number 99 of Colin Eddy. And Jacob Shively currently in 10th yep. place. Jacob Shively makes it up into the top 10. So we got some movers out there. Look at Hudson Jack Erlen. Erlen. In the 15th spot, he had to come up by passing 12 people. But look at Ooh. Ethan Leroy in the 63, 18. making up 18 wow. positions. What a drive by Ethan Leroy. Oh, man. And then uh, Landon Robbins passing 16 carts out there to get into the 17th position. So some great driving by those drivers. This is a grand national, and you could see the amount of talent throughout the pack. Maybe they're not on the podium right now, but the past 16 drivers, they're doing an excellent job out there. And who knows, maybe they had problems in the heat, and that's why they got set so far back. But you could see how these drivers can drive. You take, like, Ethan Leroy, who has passed 14 carts to get up into that 20th position, and then you look at Landon Robbins in the 035, passing 16 carts to get up into that 17th position. What a drive by those drivers. Let's go back to the front. It is holding harder now. He's back in the lead. He's holding on. He's Whoa, we got a change there. 442. Yeah. Brady Connick. Connick yep. goes into second. He was helping height for a while. Uh hate for a while, but he he said, All right, now let me see what I can do. Now height hate has to help the, the 442 of Grady Con Connick if they want to catch holding harder. And they're right there. Like at this point. The, any one of these three can win it, possibly even the fourth-place driver, Carter Barkas, and Tyrone Kemper Jr. in fifth because something could get messed up there, and, and that could make that fifth-place driver catch him. Right now, it looks like they're starting to gang up. The top four now are close. So that's Barkas in fourth, Hate in third, Chronic in second, and Harder, who's been our leader most of the race, uh, right now, still out in front, and so you got to give Holden uh, credit here. And trying to keep laps it. are wrapping down. We're down to yep. five. Jason Burgess just right. signaled them five to go. So uh, you know, the, wow. 
It's not time to panic yet, but it is time to think about what you're going to do. Right. It, it, it is. Well, yeah, man. You know, but I think it's going to it's going to be when there's two laps to go. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I mean, I would agree. It's time to start thinking about it. Chronic's got to hate. Hate's got to think about it. Barkus and Kemper. Are they going to make any crazy moves? Are they going to really try to do something? They got to think about it or they got to watch what's going on. How is harder driving? Is he taking this turn a little too wide? Is he going in a little too soon over here? And they're going to watch that. That's how seasoned drivers these drivers are. Even though they're anywhere from 10 to 13 years old, that's what's on the track right now, the sportsman class for CKNA, Cup Carts of North America Grand National here at Newcastle Motorsport Park 2023 finale for the season. And we're broadcasting live on Cart Chaser, and obviously if you're watching us, you paid the subscription, so <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> He can watch it for a whole month now. Yeah, if you're watching Dave Mack and Tony Toe right now, we thank you for the subscribing to Car Chaser, who's done a great job of this coverage and providing the Carters what they deserve so they can get recognized, especially the youth out here right now, the 10 to 13-year-olds. Look at these drivers. Look at the savvy they have. They're doing a great job, harder, chronic, and hype. We got Park, Barkus in fourth. Kemper, now Barkus dropped the position, but and Kemper's come up like three positions to get into that fifth. You got A.J. Stoner in sixth, Sawyer Chambers up into seventh, Alex Hasse in eighth, Jacob Schabel in ninth, and Isaiah Maxey in the top ten. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know Tyrone Kemper is from um, New Orleans, I believe. Uh, a lot of long-distance people. We have a number of people here from New Zealand and Bulgaria and in the United States and Canada, of course. So we, we're a uh, complete international racing series right, right. now. Your leader's still harder. Go ahead, yeah, Tony. and I just seen the number 245 of Soya Chambers make a move on the 214 of A.J. Stoner. And, I'd be, and yes, Chambers now has moved into six. Stoner drops back to seven. Seven, Ax, uh, Alex ha Hasse in eighth, and Jacob Schrabel ninth, and Isaiah Maxey up into the top ten. Wait a minute now, Colin Eddy. It passed 12 people, and he gets up into the top 10 and gets by the number 022 of Isaiah Maxey. So some great driving going on through this pack. Of course, we're keeping an eye on the leaders. Holden Harder in the lead, Grady Chronic, and Ezekiel Haight out in the top three. And But now it could be a four-way battle with Carter Barkas, and I believe in fifth, Tyrone Kemper Jr., 4'11", not far off. But look at the top three as they head down with three to go. And they are staying bumper to bumper, doing a great job for these, chill, these drive, young drivers from 10 to 13 years old, doing an excellent job out here in the CKNA, Cup Carts of North America, Grand National 2023 season. No, I was so concerned about tires, you know, tire yep. wear and whatever. It does not appear like it's affecting anything. No. Nope. I, I, I may have prematurely panicked yep no no i i had that i thought about that too because i know how tires could be and now we got we got chat with the with two to go or three to go i should say two two it is two yeah. to go two to go you're seeing some moves now holding harder in first still grady chronic in second barkus in third kemper jr in fourth ezekiel eight drops back to fifth so now that's what could look at them now they're really starting to dice it up out there and we got a lot of moves going on. Holding harder, harder I believe. Harder still leading, but <laughs> harder. Wow. And now you see, you're seeing a lot of pushing, trying to get people up there, trying to get up next to Holding Harder. And I believe Grady Chronic was able to, but with some help from Tyrone Kemper. So we got a lot. And that allows Harder to pull away. Yep. And that's what he needs going into the last lap, or next to the last lap. He needs to put some space between him and Chronic. And, and he's doing it. Because they got tied up. Oh, and there goes another pass by the 148, I believe, or the 048 of Ezekiel Haight, who was up there. So he's starting to move back up, but he's giving them a break at the front. 411, Tyrone Kemper Jr. making a move. So we got a lot. We said this is where it's going to come down to. When you get down to the, next, to the last lap, it's going to be action out there. And you see, now you see Chronic looking for help. White flag is out. This is going to be it. But Holden Harder's got a good enough lead if he can hold it. But if if Grady Chronic gets help from hate, they can catch him and maybe give him a challenge at the end. What a drive by Holden Harder. Cart number 57 is your leader, but look at the two behind them. They're Cart number 442, them. they're starting to catch yep. them, and that's what they, wow, yep, what they race savvy these kids got. They are, but they are using 
it to their advantage and not dicing for oh, position now yet. Racing again. A little bit hate got in there. He shouldn't have went for that second. Get up there. Get harder. Harder's doing an excellent job. He looks back and he knows he's got to try to keep that gap between them. And he's doing a good job of that. But now you see Chronic all alone with no help from anybody. Chronic's got the speed to do it. Here comes Hate again. Hate coming back, not giving it up. He got some help. We got a four-way, a five-way battle. Oh, they break it up a little bit. Now he's get, Hate's getting help from behind. Hate's getting help from Barkers. Barkers helping him. You can't believe that these nope. 10 to 13 years old, but now they're dicing it up. Now they're racing and again. That, they're racing again, and that's going to give I, Holden I, I, Harder I, I, a shot again. Holden Harder looks yeah, behind as win. he comes down. Yeah. We tell him, don't take both hands off the wheel. He does hands the one hand up. Holden and, Harder is your winner. Uh, what a job by Holden Harder. Chronic gets second. Height gets third. Height gets third. Kemper Jr. fourth. Carter Barkas on the podium. Then we have A.J. Stoner in sixth place. Sawyer Chambers come home seventh. Alex Hayes eighth. Uh, Jacob Shibley ninth. And Colin Eddy did go come home tenth. Then Braden Domont, Tucker Treeb, L Isaiah Maxey, Lincoln Davis, and Slayton Baldock came home 15. Slayton improved three spots. Ethan Leroy, Landon Robbins, Will Wilkie, J Hudson Jack Erlin, and Jack Speth are your top 20. And we're going to go to a real quick commercial break. And thank you very much, everybody, for watching Car Chaser. And come right back to us. Enthusiast, Drive Your Line is the Mid-South's only full-service kart shop. We make dreams a reality for those five years old and up. All racers start in karting, and we're the purveyors of fun for the whole family. Karting the Coast is presented by Drive Your Line Kart Shop and is the premier race series on the Gulf Coast and brings racing to Biloxi at Finish Line Performance Karting and at the world-renowned NOLA Motorsports Park. Call us at 601-667-0770 or find us at driveyourline.com. Also on Facebook or Instagram. Got it. At Cart Eat Parts, we are your complete online aftermarket cart part superstore. From chains to bearings to bumpers and components, we've got it in stock and ready to ship straight to your door from our base in Ontario, Canada. Check us out online at carteparts.ca.
Okay. I mean, you get mouth it. Right, you got any language? lip readers at home? You, yeah. you know what? No. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> so sorry. Thanks, okay. Um, oh, yeah, God. Can we get around? Oh, there we go. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right, well, I... um, can you turn around real quick so we can see it back? Okay. Thanks, Rob. Where are you starting? Yeah. Yo, Levin. That's my favorite number. Ready to go. Ready to go. Hop on. Carding nose right there. That's Rob Howden. <laughs> Marie has somebody over here, so we are not. I have no idea if audio is working. Nobody knows. Okay. Can you tell me? Uh, Jamie MacArthur. Ontario. Yes, he does. Ontario. MacArthur from Ontario. down so uh, hopefully it, it holds out for the 16 laps and okay. and we'll go from there yeah down there okay sorry Jamie you want to come back yeah come on come on guys we're gonna get Jamie we, we we may be out of range so we're trying give me a rough idea Are we good? Okay. Good. Who do you got? You got somebody? Oh, right here. Okay. Jamie McCarthy from Keswick, Ontario. Okay. And your tires are feeling good. Yep. Uh, hopefully they last the 16 laps, but uh, the tires have been kind of funny since we put them on. I think everyone's experienced, uh, they're very, very greasy this year, but I just don't know if it's the weather. It's been the hottest it's been that we've had. So, yeah, I, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we get on the podium. Absolutely, I hope so. And, and uh, the podium is way down there, so we'll figure out. Sixty laps. I wish you the best. Stable. Don't 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 be chasing a race until the very end. Jamie MacArthur. All right. Yeah, and here 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 we go. Can you tell us your first name, Ken, and oh, both names? Where are you from? Ken Paulson, Beloit, Wisconsin. Yeah, race. You're not in anybody's tent. You're independent, aren't you? Independent. Okay, and look, 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 look down here. Get, can you get a shot of him shoes? He wears steel-toed shoes when he races. And the, yeah, and the one time that he didn't wear his steel-toed shoes, he just wear regular tennis shoes, he had a really bad race. So he elects to never wear regular tennis shoes, steel-toed shoes, and jeans. You are so old school. That's right. Whatever works. You feeling pretty good, Ken? I am. I am. I'm starting back here quite a ways, so I'm going to play it cool and try to keep it on the track and try to move forward instead of backwards. Yeah, that's the main plan. How are your tires holding up? They're holding up well. Very happy to see you, Ken. See you make the feature. And that's a big deal. Um, who do you have? Where are you, Marie? Okay. I love that helmet, the old Woody, the Mr. Horsepower. Can you tell us your uh, whole name and where are you from? Uh, Dan Fear from Hamilton, Ohio. All right. And we've got a bunch of people from Ohio. You feeling pretty good today? I'm, I'm hoping so. I'm, I'm glad to be more toward the front. It's my first Grand National, so I'm happy about it. Well, welcome. We're very happy to have you. First Grand Nationals ever. That's really cool. Do you race uh, quite a bit at home? Uh, yeah. Over track, yeah. And GAJ is not very far from here. I know when we go there, we're right in this area. So. Yeah. Um, I am lost my Marie. Do you got somebody, Marie? Oh, no. Okay. We're done. There. Oh, we got to get off the track. Thank you very much. I'll send it back to you, Tony Nato and Xander. This is Kurt Chaser, and we're glad you're here. Okay, we're back in the tower here. This is Tony Nato Cirillo getting ready for the legends. Now, the legends, they are truly legend drivers. They are 50 years old and older in this class. So CKNA tries to help, uh, tries to appreciate all racers out there and providing the legends class. 50 years and older, we don't discriminate against any driver. So <laughs> giving them a place to race against their peers and look at how many legends drivers there are here at the Grand National. We're talking about 40 carts to take the green.
So 40 carts will take the green. They go out there for their warm-up lap. And then they'll come around and get ready. And Jason Burgess, our chief starter. Jason, you know, if you noticed, if you looked, if you were watching as uh, Dave Mack did the walkthrough, uh, listen, Michael Waltrip has nothing on Dave Mack. He, uh, he invented, Michael Waltrip copied Dave Mack. Believe me, he was doing this before Michael Waltrip did it for NASCAR. But you see that uh, Jason Burgess, he goes around and shakes every one of the competitors' hands. He does a great job out there as the chief starter and also shaking each of the drivers' hand. We appreciate Jason Burgess. Ryan Cassidy will be on the pole with Steve Lyons on the outside pole. James Perkins will be in third. Tim Hannon will start up in that fourth spot position. Jamie McMurray in fifth. Todd Barron in sixth. E Ellie Yanko from Canada in seventh. Doug Cook in eighth. Jeff Scott in the ninth spot. Brian Berga in tenth. Rob Howden out of e-carding news starting in that 11th spot. He's got a shot. He's in the top 20. Rob Howden starting in the 11th spot. Todd Davis starting in 12. Jim Fry in 13th. Dan Freiner in 14th. And then we got Tad Stahl in 15th. Kevin Scott in the 16th position. John O'Keefe in 17th. Anthony, I'm not going to get that one right. Cart number 610. Anthony in the 18th position. Joseph Mason in the 19th position. They'll go around for one more time to get in line. And we got Joe DeBo DeBover starting in that 21st position, and he has the number 21 on his card. Michael Wells in the 22nd position. Look at this. Tim Stiefel all the way back in 23rd position. Keep an eye on your number five of Tim Stiefel. He's starting way back there in 23rd position, but don't ever count Tim Stiefel out. He's a, a major competitor, especially on the Northeast Series, so keep an eye on him. Jeffrey DeNoon in 24th. Raymond Brown in 25th. Jeff Sterling in 26th. James Larson in the 27th position. In 28th, it's Timothy Clark alongside of him. Donald Hetzler in the 30th position. Ronald Henry. And in the 31st, Jeff Chambers. In the 32nd, Wayne Hadzik. He's got that Wayne Hadzik barbecue sauce and ketchup. Great stuff. Robert Nuzel in 33rd. Donald Harrington in 34th, Bill Cobb in 35th, Larry Pike, Martin Peterson, Brian Gre uh, Gregsgro, Ron Tipton, and Chris Pettit. That's how they line up for the top 40. Let's see as Jason looks. He holds that stick. He wants them nice in line, but he gives them the green. And a good move by Ryan Cassidy. So Cassidy has decided he's going to go out in front and try to maybe put some space. Will we get everybody through turn one? Yes, we do. So now... These are the legend drivers. You got to be 50 years and older. I'm not sure who's checking birth certificates out there, but hopefully everybody's 50 years and older. And I know we got some drivers that are in their 60s and maybe somebody in their 70s out there. So karting is a sport for everybody. And like I said, CKNA is not going to shut anybody out. They give everybody a place to race. This is Tony Toe Cirillo looking here at the CKNA Cup Carts of North America Grand National with over 500 entries. We're down to the final race. Remember, these drivers had to preserve their tires since Friday. They're on the same set of Vega Reds, and they're going, and they're like, I haven't seen. Well, we only had one class run, the sportsman class, and it looks like they are holding up. You got to give credit to Vega. That, that this tire is as sticky as it is, it can also last as long as you need it to. And Ryan Cassidy doing what he has to do by pulling way out in front so nobody could draft him. Let's see, here we go. Cassidy in the lead, James Perkins in second. Elianko moving up to that third spot. What a run by Elianko. Jamie McMurray holding on to fourth. Tim Haddon staying there in fifth. Jeff Scott up two spots into sixth. Todd Barron, Dr. Todd Barron still in seventh, but keep an eye on the number 11 of Todd Barron. Doug Cook in eighth. Steve Lyons in that ninth position. Brian Berger up two positions in 10th. 
A uh, good run by the 22 of Joseph Mason. He moves up five positions. Joe DeBover moving up out of the camp. Chaos. He's moved up to 14th position, passing five other carts out there. Got to give him credit, doing a good job out there. Wow, we got some great racing going on in this Legends class. And this is the Grand National Championship, so it's going to be tough out here. Wayne Hanslick doing, moving up to 26. He's passed four carts, doing a good job. Wayne Hanslick doing a good job out there, moving up through the pack. Oh, man, we got some good driving going on, but right now it is Ryan Cassidy. And Cassidy's got a pretty good lead. Let me pick this up. It's Cassidy, Perkins, Yanko, and I believe MacArthur. Those are your top four, uh, four. Then there's a little bit of a break. In fifth is the 73 of Jeff Scott with the 11 of Todd Barron up into six. Tim Hannon drops back to seven. Not sure what's going on with Tim. He's one of our champions in the Northeast. Doug Cook in eighth, Steve Lyons in ninth. And making it up into the top 10 is the number 99 of Brian Berger. Berger doing a good job moving up into the top 10. But right now, the people on the podium are Cassidy, Perkins, Yanko, and MacArthur, and Scott. Those are it. But keep an eye on the number 11 of Todd Barron. He's right there in six. And then, you know, Barron, I'm going to say this, might be in the duel at the end for the lead. But right now, it's Cassidy. Cassidy looks like he's got that coyote working perfectly. So we'll pick it up again. Let's watch as they come around. We got some battles going on throughout the pack. Wow, look at this. The zero of Tim Hannon could be in trouble as Doug Cook and Steve Lyons starts to put the pressure on him. So Hannon caught up back there in about seventh spot. He's got Doug Cook, Steve Lyons, and Hannon was probably trying to get up to Todd Barron, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Let's see. So here they come again across the stripe. It's Cassidy, Perkins, Janko, MacArthur. Then Jeff Scott in fifth, Todd Barron, Tim Hannon, Doug Cook, Brian Berger's right there. Steve Lyons in seventh, Joseph Mason in 11th, Jim Fry in the 2 one, one in 12th. Dan Fryer up two spots into that 13th spot, cart number 52. Here we go. Hey, um... So I just got up here. Tony, what, what's going on with Rob Houghton? I see he's down five spots. Did you see anything? Oh, Did no, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, okay. I know. I mean, he was doing, he was up there. I mean, he was in 11th, and you're right. He's down five down spots. Five Tough spots. break for Rob Houghton. Not sure what's happening. Maybe he got caught up. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to watch it. Yep, he got caught up in lap two. So, uh, you know, he's going to have to try to make that up. It is a rough time out there. You got 40 carts, and they all are running for a Grand National Championship. Yes, indeed. I see Ken Paulson with the steel-toed boots. Uh, he <laughs> moved up three spots. Number one, Ken Paulson. He's back uh, on 18th. Uh, who else do I catch my attention? Tim Hanna. No idea what's going on with him. He went back a couple of spots. Yeah, Tim Tim uh, got caught up there, and he's in that pack, and he's just got to try to work his way up. Meanwhile, the, the lead pack has pulled away from that pack. The top four have pulled away. Perkins just took the lead last time by the stripe. Perkins wow. ahead of Cassidy. Wow, not sure what happened there. I wasn't watching because I was looking back in sure. the pack. Perkins now, your new leader, cart number 15, to 53 of Cassidy in second. Ellie Yanko in third. Jamie yep. McMurray in fourth. Jeff Scott in fifth. Todd Barron in sixth. But Barron still got a way to go to catch them. Yep. So we got two packs out there, but the main pack is Perkins, Cassidy, Yanko, and I believe MacArthur. Maybe Jeff Scott in there. We'll have to pick that up. So three and four are both Canadians. I know Ellie is um, yep. um, Quebec and MacArthur, I believe, is Ontario. Wow. Two Canadians up into the top five in this Legends class. Remember, you got to be 50 years and old. They checking birth certificates, Dave. Ah, yeah, <laughs> good point. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? I guess we better look into that. Huh? <laughs> Uh, I don't think Smart anybody's going to lie about their age when it comes to being 50 or over. <laughs> I think I think that's uh, – is that our leader? That's Ryan Cassidy. So Ryan oh, Cassidy, Cassidy got back, back into yeah. the lead. So, uh, yeah, the top four trying to pull away from the rest of the pack. But any one of these four drivers can win. And we already saw Perkins take the lead for a while. But Cassidy's back out in front. And Cassidy starts to put some space between them. And it seems like Cassidy's definitely got the power on that Coyote cart doing a good job out there and pulling away. But we'll see. As time goes on, as laps go on, the, the, like I said, there's a lot of rubber down now. But these Vega tires have been holding up, and these drivers seem to be having their carts set up right, that in the end they're still performing as good as they did in the beginning. And that's what you got to plan for. Now we got some passing going on. 
If, there we no, go. Sir. Yep, two carts get in there. We get up to third. I think that's uh It looks like James Perkins, Perkins. MacArthur, and Scott, but it looks like Scott might have moved up. So we got some action going on in the top four, but it's Cassidy in the lead. Ellie Yanko has pulled up into second. Yep. So uh, let's keep an eye on that. Uh, let's see what's happening. Scott currently in fifth. Jeff Scott told me he was going to be faster during the features here than he's been all weekend, and I, it looks like he's proven that all true. Right. He's up there in fifth place last time we checked. So, uh, but look at Cassidy now. He has pulled away from Elianco. And while those people fight, no, that's sorry. That's yeah, James Perkins. Perkins. Perkins in second. Yeah. So Perkins back to second, but he's going to need help to catch uh, Cassidy. And let's see if they team up and, and get him. And that will be up to the 4475. A Jamie MacArthur, I believe, is behind Perkins. So what happened to Yanko? I kind of yeah, lost not him sure. What happened? Zero Yanko. I don't. So see here him. we go. We'll pick it up when they cross the stripe. It's Perkins now in second. MacArthur in third. Like I said, Ellie Yanko drops back to fourth. Jeff Scott staying steady. Todd Barron staying steady in six. Doug Cook in seven. Not sure what's happening to Tim Hannon. He drops back to eight. Steve Lyons in ninth. And Brian Berger in the top 10. Joe Mason doing a good job in the 22, pulling up to 11 spot, passing six carts, up six positions for Joe Mason. Not sure what's going on with Rob Howden. He definitely got caught up on that turn two. We got a pass going on now right there. Yeah, Rob Howden back in 13th, just like you said. Tim Hannon lost three spots. He's back in eighth place. Todd Barron up one. He's in six. Jeff Scott Oh, fifth. we got Ellie somebody Yanko in the fourth. grass. Uh -oh. uh, the 73 of Jeff Scott had gotten by oh. Ellie Yanko, I believe, and did made a good clean pass, but then not Couple sure more. what's going on here. Can you pick up a number, Dave? Uh, one, three digits. No, I can't quite see. 111 or 114? 111. Uh, no, no. 111 is John O'Keefe. So some problems going on back there in 21st, and he drops back at least five positions. Raymond Brown in the number 84 pulls up into 20th, and he gained. Look at the look at the drive by the number 96 of Timothy Clark. He moves up nine positions. Ken Paulson up three in 18. Tad Stahl losing a little ground back in 17. Ellie Yanko must be one of ours that went off because he, he all of a sudden he's five oh, spots but yeah. down. So you got Cassidy in the lead, Perkins now in second, MacArthur in third, Jeff Scott in fourth, Doug Cook in fifth, Tim Hannon up to sixth, Steve Lyons in seventh, Brian Berger in eighth, Todd Barron in ninth. Wow, what happened to Todd? Dr. Todd, Dr. Joe Todd, Mason yeah. in tenth. Ellie Yanko drops all the way back oh. out of the top ten into 11th spot. So we did have, like we said, this is going to be some close racing. People really got to be careful when they make that pass. Everybody's going to be protective of who's in the lead or who's got the spot. And you see the top four again. Even though it's a different top four, except for Cassidy and a few of them in there, Ellie Yanko's out of that top four. They are trying to stay with Cassidy. That's Perkins, MacArthur, and Scott. Doug Cook in fifth. At least it was Doug Cook in fifth on the last lap. So we'll pick it up again. But it is Cassidy doing an excellent job yep. out there and really keeping a space so that he doesn't end up getting a halfway sign, yep. Dave. I kind of got my eye on Jeff Scott. He's currently in fourth place. There he is right there. Jeff Scott, yep. he, he's uh, improved four positions, and he did turn purple a couple of laps ago. Uh, Todd Barron went purple this time by. He's in eighth place, but he did turn purple this time by. Uh, he's going to need the purple. <laughs> yeah, he is. You're right. But watch that Jeff Scott, that green, oh, oh. black with the green. Number 73, right? Yeah, Jeff Scott is 73. There he is right there. He appears to be on the move, and he's hungry. Okay. Good move by Jeff Scott in the number 73, trying to move up. He said he was going to be fast in the feature, yep. and he's, he's sticking to that word. He's carrying it out. But right now, Cassidy, I mean, is just driving an excellent race out in front. Cassidy in first, Perkins in second, MacArthur. And don't count out the 73 of Jeff Scott. Doug Cook in fifth, Tim Hannon up to sixth, Steve Lyons in seventh, Brian Berger in eighth, Todd Barron in ninth. But he did turn purple, and, you know, Barron's going to be back on the move. I don't know what he got caught up a little bit there. Joseph Mason in tenth. He, Ellie Yanko drops back to 11th. He's out of the top 10. Rob Howden, not sure what happened to him. He's in 13th right now. He dropped back about three positions. So maybe uh, definitely there was a lot of tight racing out there, a lot of bumping and shoving. Here we go. Here we go. Scott's coming with him. Right. There it is. They're looking to make that pass. Yeah, and MacArthur up to second. So MacArthur, well, he was in second, yeah, but right. they were getting side by side there. MacArthur was in second. Perkins in third. Which is Scott in fourth. Doug Cook in fifth. Tim Hannon still in sixth. 
So that, again, gives Ryan Cassidy a break. Now, Look at the lead now. Cassidy has now. That's unheard of here in a Grand National. We haven't seen that. And Cassidy putting on a show here on a Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning drive. He's doing a great job. And But while Jamie McArthur, Perkins, and Scott and Cook uh, dice it up a little bit, that gives him a break. They got to team up if they want to catch him. That's what they have to do. And we'll see if McArthur, Perkins, and Scott will do that. But that's what they're going to have to do if they want to catch Cassidy. Cassidy is just rolling along, and he's rolling those turns perfectly, not shutting down, the, you know, not bogging down the cart. He's just driving, really hitting all the marks. That's what he needs to do. This is a grand national. We got a little bit of passing going on there. It looks like the number uh, 409 maybe. 99 of Brian Berger making a move, I believe, on Steve Lyons. So we got some good racing going on there. We There's Cassidy again. And now you see, I believe that was Jeff Scott. No, that was, yeah, maybe yeah, Doug yeah, Cook. Sam. But that was Doug Cook, I think, that pulled out, that was trying to make a move. Jeff Scott, is is he green Still and black? Still back and forth. Oh. Yep, green and black. Uh, okay, no, that was Jeff Scott then in the 73. That was kind of seeing where could he go. Kind of pulled out, but did not make the move. The number 73 of Jeff Scott. So now you got second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. They are starting to get close together, but none of them are close yet to number 53, Ryan Cassidy, who is your leader. But keep an eye on two second place back to sixth place. That's MacArthur, Perkins, Scott, Cook, and Tim Hannon. That's where the race is on the track right now. The race is for second, but maybe not really. It's just the second place driver needs help to catch Cassidy. And if Perkins can help MacArthur, they could do it. If Tim Hannon could get at the back of that pack, back of that four four card pack and push everybody up, then there could be a six way battle for the lead. But right now, Cassidy is in in a good position. He's in a good position. Nobody really challenged him. But look at the four behind him. That's actually five behind them. Yeah. And you see Tim Hannon is right there. He's staying in the draft. But they got to all push up in order to catch Cassidy. And Cassidy is just driving such a super race out there. Oh, it's unbelievable. Cassidy, a longtime champion. WKA, I mean, I know Cassidy for 30 years or more. He is always a top driver, always been with Coyote, doing a great job. We got some passing going on right there for, I believe, Scott. Fifth, it's uh, Jeff Scott again, move making a move, and, and the laps are dwindling down a little bit. Nothing to panic about yet, Dan. I don't know if anybody's going to catch Ryan Cassidy, so everybody's battling for second place. Well, and Ryan's that know, good. It really Ryan is so good. Yeah, they they just got to get together if they want to catch him. And I believe Tim Hannon made a move that time and moved up a position. So we'll see where he is. And that's the number zero with the cheeseburger helmet, right? Yeah, that's uh, uh, Tim Hannon, yes. <laughs> there it is. There's a good shot of the cheeseburger. <laughs> Unfortunately, we, we require the drivers to put stickers on their helmet in different <laughs> spots for tacking, you know, for tires and whatever. Uh, to verify they did. So, unfortunately, we are ruining his helmet, but it is awesome. Yeah. It's my favorite helmet Yeah, by far. so Tim Hannon got ahead of the number 16 of Doug Cook. We saw that. And now Hannon looking out again. But you see uh, Jeff Scott saying to Hannon, give me some help. And right now, it's really Doug Cook who's got to give Hannon help so to they catch can catch Jeff up. Scott. Right, yeah. Jeff Scott. And, and to make that up. But it, it's, it's really a tough race out there. And this is given the number 53, Ryan Cassidy, your leader, just giving him a break, really. He doesn't have to deal with all of this. But maybe now we're seeing MacArthur and Perkins. They are teaming up, and maybe they can catch him and give him a fight right at the end. We said this is where the action's going to take sure. place. There's, I believe, three to go. Yeah, the and, next time by. Yep, yep. I believe three to go. So uh, we'll see what happens. That's when this is going to pick up. But right now, Cassidy, who had a decent lead now, is not. he does not have that lead now. He is being challenged at this point by MacArthur Perkins. And then you have Jeff Scott right there that could catch up, and Tim Hannon. Hannon has made it onto the podium in fifth. Now, look at the uh, MacArthur and Perkins have completely caught up to um, yep. um, um, Ryan Cassidy. Yep. So uh, Ryan Cassidy is not as dominant as he was a little bit earlier. Um, I was so sure he was going to walk away with this, and well, apparently yep, it's and not true. I, it's always, and he, yeah, you, you see <laughs> I mean, it. I mean, what a shock, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's racing. It's not over till it's over. Isn't you that see, the old saying? You yeah. see Jeff Scott saying, give me some help here. Yep. I got to catch Jamie MacArthur. He needs Perkins to push him up, and then they could do all six of them could maybe do bad. Any one of the six could win it. 
Well, Tim Hannon has dropped off the pace a little bit. He doesn't have anybody helping him. So the top four now have pulled away from your fifth place, number zero, Tim Hannon. The race now is with the top four, Cassidy, MacArthur, and Perkins, and Scott. That's where the race is. Don't count out Jeff Scott. And because Jeff Scott he, did turn purple last night. Yep, so yep, he, did go, he did go purple. Don't count out Jeff Scott. He's been aggressive. He's been hanging in there now. But he's going to get antsy. He's going to look to get by. But right now, it's MacArthur who's pushing Cassidy around the track and letting Cassidy know. But now you see Perkins and Scott have moved in. So it's a four-way battle for the lead as we come down towards the end of this race. And Hannon's in trouble now as Doug Cook gets by him. Cart number 16 of Doug Cook takes that position away, knocks Hannon off the podium. So, oh, man, what a race we're having here. Tough break for Tim Hannon. He was on the podium, but he could come back. But look at the top four. This is where the race is. Cassidy, MacArthur, Perkins, and Scott, they get the two laps remaining. Two laps remaining. And MacArthur, I think, is playing his cards right. He's playing it nice and cool. He's got nobody on his back bumper now, but he's able to stick with Cassidy. And that's where the race is between Cassidy and MacArthur. MacArthur doing an excellent job of maybe waiting right to the end to take the win in this Legends class here at the Cup Cards of North America Grand National 2023 season. Look at this. But the top four now start to bunch up again. So we got a four-way battle. Cassidy could go from first to fourth, but he'll remain on the podium. Not sure what happened to Tim Hammond. I believe Jeff Scott now is on the podium in that fifth-place spot. Doug Cook, I'm sorry, Doug yeah. Cook. Jeff Scott's Jeff up there in the yep. top four, that uh, bright black and uh, green colors. That is Jeff Scott. And now Cassidy's got his hands full. Ryan Cassidy, but an excellent driver, a seasoned driver, a champion many times over. And now he's holding on to that championship. So doing a great job of running. Did I shut New York? No. Uh, let's see what happens here. And we got a battle between Jeff Scott and Perkins, but that's going to maybe, no, MacArthur is, he's got to stay with Ryan Cassidy as we come down to the last lap. And Cassidy doing an excellent job of holding on. You see Cassidy, MacArthur, and I believe that's Perkins now in the top three. A little bit of dicing there between Jeff Scott and Doug Cook, and that, that kind of loosened up the top four. But Cassidy has still got MacArthur right on his back bumper. Cart number 475, Jamie MacArthur right there with Cassidy, along with the number 15 of James Perkins. So here it comes down to the end. But Cassidy, I said this yesterday, sometimes he finds some speed right at the end. And he starts pulling away. But MacArthur is not letting him get yeah, MacArthur staying right with him, not letting him get that jump. And Cassidy now looks behind him. He wants to see where he's at. So Cassidy might have some strategy. He knows he's got to take it tight. He's got to protect that lead. This is coming down to the end. Cassidy doing a good job. Here they come. It's Cassidy, MacArthur, and Perkins. Here they go. Cassidy goes wide. There goes Perkins on the inside. They're going, but it's going to be Cassidy. He's going to get the win. What a job by Cassidy. MacArthur gets second, but it was close. Perkins was right there. Jeff Scott gets fourth. Tim Hannon makes it back up to the podium, and he gets in fifth. Doug Cook drops the sixth. Brian Berger in seventh. Steve Lyons in eighth. Ellie Yanko gets back up into the top ten in ninth. Rob Howden makes the top ten. Howden moves his way back up and gets into the top ten. What a drive by Rob Howden out of e-carding news. Dan Fryer in 11, Jim Fry in 12th, Tad Stahl in 13, Ken Paulson in 14, Kevin Scott up to the 15th position, Joe Mason gets 16, Tim Stiefel gets up five positions and gets up into that 17th position, Stiefel in the top 20, Ronald Henry in 18th, and Jeffrey A. Denoon in 19th, Jeff Sterling makes the top 20. What a race we had there in that Legends class. So we'll get ready for the next class that's going to go out there. We'll get a podium with those top five drivers. And then it'll be, I believe, Senior Heavy up next. And then we'll have Dave Mack doing the driver walkthrough, the, the grid walkthrough. Like I said, Michael Waltrip has nothing on Dave Mack. He'll be down there doing that. 
what a race we had in that Legends class, but I got to hand it to Ryan Cassidy. He took the lead right from the beginning, and it's a 16-lap race, so you really got to use your head. Can I, can I maintain that lead? Can I everything hold up? Will my heart not change that much that I won't slow down? But he did an excellent job. A good comeback by Tim Hannon at a Hannon Motorsports to get that fifth-place podium finish. Great job by Tim Hannon. He's one of our Northeast. Of course, Tim Hannon provides a lot of the workers for the CKNA in the Northeast and also when we went to Charlotte. So great job by Tim Hannon. We thank him for all the help, but making that podium. So a good drive by Tim Hannon. Catch your breath. I'm okay. Ready? Okay, we're here with Ryan Cassidy, the winner of that class. Congratulations, Ryan. I knew you could do it all along. Um, did Was it a hard-fought battle? Was it really bad for you at all? Um, I mean, I was able to stay out in, in the lead the entire time, but I heard them coming. Yeah. And uh, a couple laps to go there right on my tail. I thought they were going to come get me, but uh, we were able to hold on for the win. 
I, I was going to say, I was up in the tower, and I got to watch you a little bit, and you were way ahead. And then the next thing I knew, right before I left, you were you had them right behind you, and I was really concerned. So Yeah, I'm sure they're all working together. I mean, it's hard, really hard to get away when you get a pack lined up behind you. You know, I'd say the draft here is worth three, four tenths or better. Yeah. And uh, I've got to lay down some amazing laps to be able to pull away. It, it's just too too difficult. So how much of this win do you owe to your dad? I know he works so hard on your card. Oh, a good bit. I mean, it's it's a definitely a team effort. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't be able to do it without him. Yeah, absolutely, I'm sure. How about tires? How do they hold up? Um, no worries with the tires. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. I was so convinced tires was going to be a major issue, and apparently it wasn't. So, Ryan Cassidy here, your winner. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Congratulations on another Grand National Championship. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. All right. And I think we're going to go back to the tower, right? I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit. People coming out. Um, I think we, I think this next class we have a full 60 entry. So 60 carts on the track at one time. And uh, they're all coming out. They're going to set their carts down and... Uh, um, I'm going to do interviews in just a moment here. That's right, I forgot. I'm, gonna do it okay. um, I'm just waiting for the front runners. Okay, so we got to come on the racetrack backwards. So the back markers come on first. We set the cars down, and I'm going to interview the front runners. So um, we're just waiting for the crowd to catch up here a little bit. And you can see all the people coming out here. This is heavy, right? Heavy class? Yeah, okay. The senior heavy class. And look at all these racers. Um, and I know a lot of names. There's a few I don't know, unfortunately. I can drive the driver over here. If you can find somebody. Fiesca. Caleb Fiesca. Toward the back half of the field. I don't know. What number? We want to interview? Okay. I've got Kaylin Brown. Well, first of all, tell me your name. What's your name and where are you from? I'm Kaylin Brown. I'm from uh, Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. So you're one of our southern ones. Do you know how many states? Did you ever look how many states we have entered? I didn't. No, I have no clue. Okay. But... I know we have at least one, Savannah, Georgia. Are you feeling pretty quick today? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I think we have a shot at getting a top 10 uh, today and heavy. But uh, we'll see uh, how everything plays out on the start if I uh, keep all four wheels on the track. Yeah, and I'm really concerned about tires. Nobody else is but me. How are your tires holding up? Oh, they're holding up pretty good. I've been uh, flopping them every day to preserve uh, the wear and all that. And I think I've been doing a pretty good job with that this weekend. But uh, we'll see how it plays out. we got 16 laps, a long race. That's a huge race. That's a long, twice as long as anything else we've done. Yes, sir, it is. So, um, did you shave your tires at all? No. Okay. You're just going to go out and run them? I'm just going to send it. Okay. <laughs> Where are you starting? What's your starting? Position? 21st. 21st. Okay. Sure. Kalen Brown, thank you very much. I've got another one over here. Everybody recognizes this guy for sure. I always refer to him as DC. He actually has a name, David Cole. David, where are you from? Grand Rapids, Michigan. Wow. And uh, I know you're absolutely infatuated. You love that state below you. They, 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 <laughs> so he's a huge sports fan, DC. And he's from eCarding News, by the way. That's, right. That's his association. He is a uh, second biggest deal. Yeah. Rob Howden's the owner, and, and David Cole is the big man. Um, and I, I'm going to tell you a story about David Cole real quick. I, literally, he, he won't say the word Ohio. He can't say it. He either calls it that four-letter state or that state beneath me. Is that true, David? <laughs> that yeah, state down yeah. south. The state down yeah, south. the state down south. So, uh, David Cole, where are you starting? 29th. So we got a lot of work to do to get in, uh, hopefully, maybe the top 15. So, what, 16 laps, though, there's a lot of things that can happen. Okay. And, and uh, the, big, the big joke on EKN and across the world is beat Rob Howden. Beat David Cole. Yep. Beat Rob Howden. Beat David Cole. Who's winning today? Well, overall, it's been me this weekend. So, uh, yeah. So, we, but we still have that Masters race we got to get through. Eat your heart out, Rob Howden. DC, I'm I'm the fan. Okay, we're gonna come over here real quick, and I know exactly who you are. But can you tell us your name and what uh, where you're from in Wake Cross, Georgia? <laughs> Wake Cross, Georgia, number one nineteen, Owen Lloyd. Owen Lloyd and Owen Lloyd, uh, South Georgia karting. They race all over the country. Owen Lloyd had his birthday earlier this year, and he's they race the South Series, obviously, from Georgia, South Georgia, right out, real close to the border. Um, Owen Lloyd said, Mom and Dad, it's my birthday. Uh, I would like for a birthday present to get to go race in the Northeast Series. So where did he come race? Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh International. He had a really good weekend. And uh, Owen Lloyd, and you have two older twin brothers. Yes, sir. 
very successful. I first met him down at Bushnell any number of years ago. Uh, two very successful brothers. Then this guy started getting fast, real fast. You know what the brothers are doing now? They retired. He scared them. Owen Lyden. Yes, sir. Where are you starting, Owen? 12th. Starting 12th? Yes, and sir. how about your tires? They'll be pretty decent. I'll say I'll just try and get top off. So top five? I think I'm the only person worried about tires here. Obviously, none of the drivers are. <laughs> Emily, Emily DeMaster back here. And thank you very much, Owen. I appreciate it. Good luck. Stay safe. And tell us your first, oh, your whole name. First and last name, and where are you from? Uh, Jake Hevlo from Galena, Maryland. This is him, Hevlo. <laughs> so, from Maryland, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and you feeling pretty good today? Yeah, yeah. I feel uh, we made some, some changes, try to keep the grip out of the cart, so hopefully and we can, uh, the cart comes in when it needs to, and we can have it there at the end. Okay, and what kind of changes? I mean, you can say no, because nobody else can change it. So. Or is that a big secret? Uh, it's not a big secret, but it's just, you know. Just to not say, okay. Um, um, what was I just, oh, how are your tires? You're good with that? Oh, where are you starting? Oh, I'm starting sixth. Yeah. Sixth, okay. Fantastic, have low, big deal. Who else you got, Where? where's Marie? Marie, I lost my, Marie! Dave, if you can, get the mic closer to the driver, oh, please. Closer to the driver, but not me, okay. Yeah, come on. Okay, can you hey. tell us your name and where you're from? Uh, my name is Caleb Vieska from Cypress, Texas. And you obviously have something to do with the production crew here. Car yeah, <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. I'm so used to being in your shoes, Dave. Now I'm in the driver's seat. <laughs> well, we're very, very happy to have you. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. And where are you? Uh, I'm starting 55th, so a lot, of, a, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of work to cover. I, yeah. I think I can do it, though. I think I can get okay. it done. Well, good. And, and uh, tires? Tires. You're tell me they're fine. <laughs> Tires, tires would be good. Uh, I'm going to go home and check my own tires, for goodness sake. I'm the only one worried. And can we get you in here real quick? Buddy? I'm not sure. Hi, buddy. This is the infamous, and you got your name tag? Yeah, yeah the name tag's on there, so I don't Jason forget my name. Burgess. This is the best in the business, hands down, in any business, <laughs> and we are fortunate enough to call him ours. I couldn't believe it when Greg called and said, yeah, we hired Jason Burgess. I just about <laughs> cried, man. Jason <laughs> Burgess, the chief. Preview. Yeah. We'll do it on the story. And this is the guy that I refuse to say his name because I don't want to cause a jinx. So you tell me what your name and where you're from. I'm Chris Carroll. I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. And are you feeling pretty good today, Chris? Uh, you know, I'm good. Car's good. Everything's handling well. So hopefully we have a good race. So all this year, and Chris is just a very good racer. It does very well all year long. And all this year, every time I started mentioning his name, he had some kind of run of bad luck. Yep. So I told him I'm not going to mention his name <laughs> anymore. So I'm just going to refer to him as number 12. Number Chris, 12. it's no offense. No, but I, I no don't want to jinx you anymore. Right. So, good. so I wish you the best of luck, Chris. Thank you. Take care, my friend. Bye, bud. And here, we're going to get this guy here real quick. <laughs> I tried to get away. Can you, can you tell us your name, Rick Folks, and where are you from? What you said, and uh, <laughs> where I'm from home. Okay, and I'm he's, Springfield, Illinois. Oh, Springfield. Okay, and Rick Foltz, we're very, very fortunate enough to have as our race director for is this third, fourth year? It's my fifth year. Fifth. Oh my goodness. So very, very happy to have you, Rick. This is the man in charge. He controls everything. So thanks, Rick. Appreciate Control, everything. Controlled you do. chaos. Yeah, and I know you're busy, so I won't. Okay, can we your name and where you're from? Uh, Jason Rothman, Grafton, Ontario, Canada. Oh, another Canadian from Ontario. And where's Grafton, roughly? Uh, it's just uh, just south of Kingston and in between uh, like Toronto, Oshawa area. Okay. And yep. where are you starting? Uh, 25th. Okay, that sounds like a good start. And you're obviously not worried about your tires because nobody does. No, no, okay. no. Just me. Um, <laughs> how tall are you? 6'4". Uh, Is it a problem with the wind? Uh, with the wind, yeah, it can be if I'm leading the pack for sure. Okay. Um, it's mainly the two wheeling with a hot day like today, but yeah, that's uh, yeah, we we figured it out though. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And engines running good, of course. Brakes, oh, yeah. you know, so there's no problems with yep. that. Yeah. Herder's engines working good. Right. And, yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, and whose tent are you under? Uh, I'm just by myself today or this weekend. You are yep. in it. Yep. Oh, nice. Okay. Yep. And you're you're fairly successful back home. Oh yeah. Have yeah. you raced Grands with us before? I have not. Um, okay. I got the Canadian uh, CKA Championship this year for Canada. Oh, so, yeah. congratulations! Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, I got one more. Right, thank Thanks, you. man. Appreciate it. Good luck. Well, I'm not sure if we can hear you. Can you tell us your full name? Uh, my full name is AJ Rodder. <laughs> yeah. 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 And where are you from, AJ? Chardon, Ohio. Okay. And that's like Gary uh, Lawson country, I think, isn't it? Something yes. like that. Yeah. Okay. Gary Lawson, engine builder. And how are you feeling today? Uh, tired. Oh. <laughs> It's it's I'm ready for the race to get on here. I think it's gonna be a good one. And you've got the tent. How many do you got on this weekend? Uh, we have twelve customers this weekend. Oh, okay, yep. and yeah, and I know uh, Emily is one of yours. Yep. You hired her away, and yep. you, you snuck her and a yep. bunch of other people. And do you, uh, what chassis do you run? Uh, we're I'm a I'm an Eagle dealer, so, so I sell uh, sell parts for Eagle chassis. Yep. 
and we're right in that neighborhood there. Um, um, Mark Dismore owns this property, and I think he also owns the old right? Correct. Okay, apparently there's a the horn, so I got to boogie off, so we're going upstairs. Thanks. Back to you, Tony the Toe. senior heavy class to go out for their Grand National Championship here at the CKNA Grand Nationals Cup Carts of North America 2023 season. Looking to crown our Grand National Champions here at the Newcastle Motorsport Park. So uh, we're getting ready. This is a full field. And when I say full field, 62 drivers to take the green. And starting on the pole will be Eric Fagan out of the MGM camp. And as we said, uh, MGM right up there. But alongside of him, the number 12 of Chris Carroll out of the Coyote camp. So we got two of the top cart American cart manufacturers right up at the front. Then in third, we got P.J. Lida. And in fourth, we got Dave Vasquez. In fifth, we got Ed F Eli, F uh, Eli Fox in sixth. Jake Hevlo and Hevlo on uh, an old, I believe, uh, eagle cart or arrow cart. I'm sorry, Agle, uh, arrow cart. And let me pick that up again. In seventh, it'll be the 577 of Jerry Fandry. In eighth, it'll be Colin Aitken. In ninth, it'll be Michael Dittmer. And Dittmer, always keep an eye on him. Look at back in 10th place, number 30, Sean Meyer. Keep an eye on that person. He'll be moving up. In 11th, it is Nick Sobiak. In 12th, it is Jacob Duval. In 13th, Owen Lloyd. In Owen Lloyd back in 13th position. In 14th, the 19th of Ben Crutenden. In 15th, A.J. Roderick. Roderick also a top competitor, especially here at uh, Newcastle Motorsport Park. So keep an eye on the 56th of A.J. Roderick. In 16th, it's the number two of Jesse Classy. In 17th, it'll be Brennan Hanville. In 18th, Jack Sukina. In 19th, Matt Lida. In 20th, Jeff Lida. We got the Lida brother. I believe there's three of them in this class. Kalen Brown running in the 21st position. Thomas Bat in the 22nd. Riley Scott in 23rd. Ben Lida in the 24th position. So a lot of the Lida brothers in this one. Jason Rothman in 25th. Owen Mall in 26th. 27 is Logan Stevens in 28. Just, imagine Justin Wishard, champion a couple times in CKNA, starting all the way back in 28. David Cole from eCarding News starting back in 29. Matthew Ruth in 30. Uh, we still got a little bit here. We can call out a few more. Jeff Scott in 34. It's Chris Giamara, tough break for him. He's all the way back in 32. Sean O'Shea in 33. David Galloweener in 34. Matt Del Sol in 35. Christopher Mitchell in 36. You see Jason, our chief starter, looking out there. He's going to put that flag to the, that yellow flag. He wants them in line. He puts it across. He wants them to be in there. And he gives them the green. Green is out. And let's see if those Iron Man colors of red and gold get to the front. And it is Eric Fagan going into the lead. But this race is going to come down to the end. Don't let anybody fool you that this race is going to be what it's going to be right from the beginning. I mean, Ryan Cassidy did it in the last class. Unusual, I think. Eric Fagan, let's see if he's got what it takes because he took the lead. Can he stay out there in the lead? Cart number 175, Eric Fagan. P.J. Leiter goes into second. Carroll drops back to third. Eli Fox in fourth. David Vasquez, VLR in the top five. 
Look at Jake Hevelo in the 3-3-2, trying to move up, trying to gain a position. Dave, uh, Jake Hevelo doing it. Oh, we already got a change of position up front. They're running side by side, but P.J. Leiter is going to put it on. But, oh, man, Fagan takes it back. So how about them lighters? We got, uh, what did you say, two, two in this match? Maybe no, three? Yeah, I think three? we got four. Maybe all four of them. All okay. four of them, I think. So that number 12 is doing a good job. Uh, it looks like he's in second place right now. Yes, he is indeed. Number 12 in second place. Your leader, Eric Fagan, right? 175 up right. Right. Eric yep. Fagan took it. And then the number 12. Lighter challenged him for the lead, but Fagan got it back. Look at this lineup coming down to shoot. So it's Fagan, Carroll, Vasquez. Lida drops back to fourth because he was deal dueling it out a little bit. Eli Fox in fifth, Jet. Jerry Fandry in six, Colin Aiken in seven, Michael Dippers now moving up to eighth, Sean Meyer moves up a position tonight, Nick Sobiak gets tenth right now, he moves up a position. Yes, indeed, so it looks like everybody's staying right in line, not a whole lot of movement, uh, somebody goes a little bit wide, too wide, but yeah, not a whole lot of movement, well, there's some passing going on now. Um, it's still really early, 16 laps, and I was really surprised. I asked every driver, I think, Donner, about tires, and nobody is worried. Nobody's worried me. about yeah. it. All right, that's good to hear that. The Vegas are holding up. Look at back in 46, number, t uh, number 05, Cody Swoboda moving up 12 positions back in 46. Remember, we got 62 carts on the track right now. Yeah, that's the, that it's going to be the biggest class of the day. All the other classes are going to be a maximum of 60, except right. this one. So yeah. 62 out there right now. And I'm just going to go through my scroll here yeah, and see. Eric Fagan, hold it on. Chris Carroll now moves up into second. Vasquez in third. P.J. Leiter in fourth. Eli Fox in fifth. Jerry Fandry moves up to sixth. Colin Aiken moves up to seven. Michael Dittmer's now up to eighth. Keep an eye on Sean Meyer. He moves up. Meyer in eighth. I'm sorry. Meyer moves up to eight. Colin Aiken in seventh. Jerry Fandry in sixth. Nick Sobiak in ninth. He moves up to position. And Michael Dippers drops back. And he's in tenth. I said keep an eye on Dippers. But right now he got into a little trouble and drops back to tenth. Jake, Jacob Duval in 11. Jake Hevlo dropping back six positions into 12th. <laughs> Owen Lloyd holding on to that 13th spot. Keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on the 56 of A.J. Roderick. This is his home track, I believe. He's up one slot into 14. Ben Hanville in 15. Matt Lida in 16. Jeff Lida in 17. Both of them up three positions. Thomas Batt up four positions into 18. Riley Scott up four positions into 19. Jeff Colossi falling back in the pack to top 20. Ben Crutenden falling back to 21. Let's go back up to the front and see what's going on here. Fagan, can he hold it to the end? It's going to be tough, Dave. Yeah, I, I, Eric Fagan is very fast, but it's going to be super tough. It's... Uh, like uh, oh. only two laps Fagan in, Fagan gave it up three this time. So oh, and Fagan did already. Yeah, Fagan yeah. gave it up, but don't count him out. But Fagan gave it up to Chris Carroll. Look at that number twelve up front. Yep. Chris Carroll, Eli Fox, Fagan drops back to third. Vasquez in fourth. Jeff Vandry in fifth. Colin Aiken in sixth. Nick Sobiak in seven. Sean Meyer holding on to eight. Jacob Duval in ninth. Jake Hevlo now in the top ten. But right now your podium people are Fox, Fagan, Vasquez, Vand and Fandry. I'm sorry, Carroll, Fox, Fagan, Vasquez, and Fandry. Those are your top five, but there's more than top five. Look at this. We got a pass going on Battle here. Battle for third. And that is, can't pick up the number. Can you see the date? No. It should be Vasquez It, it might be Vasquez. Fagan. It yeah. looked like 52 passing Fagan. And David Vasquez comes to us from California. Flew in a couple of days ago. He yep. decided to come racing. They shipped the carts. He was giving some interviews down there, wasn't yep, he? Yep, yep, and he's <laughs> always fast. And we, we went a year or two where he didn't race with us. He had other commitments, and now he's back with us. So we're very happy. Good to have him. VLR uh, with Miranda and the gang over there. Yep. Yeah, under their tent. Actually, their tent is a building this year. So <laughs> yeah, they, they got a they permanent really tent. Up, yeah. So a good job by Chris Carroll, but can he hold it for the amount of laps that we have to do? But right now, Chris Carroll on his Coyote cart up in front. We've had a great battle. I mean, Coyote's been strong at this race and has given a challenge to all the other cart manufacturers. And right now, they, they've been Coyote strong, I'm going to say, because they've been up there battling all the time. You're there, you'll hear their name being called out. They're up there. In second is Eli Fox. David Vasquez, I believe he's on probably a VLR, VLR oh, yeah. card. Guaranteed, he's out yeah. of California. Jerry Oh, Fan here we go. A, a battle for the lead. Oh. Yeah. And Eli Fox takes Eli it. Eli Fox. No, wait, maybe not. Nope. No, he gets hung out. And he's going to get shut out by David Vasquez, I believe. 
Back to third now. Back to third. And this is what's going to go on in fourth. The Jerry Fandry, Colin Aiken, Eric Fagan dropping back to six, but don't count Fagan out yet. Nick Sobiak in seventh, Sean Meyer in eighth, and keep an eye on Meyer in the number 30. We'll see what happens there. But right now it is Chris Carroll out in front on his Coyote card. And like I said, Coyote's been strong this whole weekend. Yep, and Vasquez right behind him, and Vasquez knows yep. how to get around him. And we got a little dicing to. for position there with another VLR. Oh, we got somebody down in the dark. It's the 119. Lloyd, Owen Lloyd, oh, no. Oh, a tough break for Owen Lloyd, but he does recover. The cart 119 of Owen Lloyd. He was running. Owen Lloyd was running in 10th, so that might drop him out of the top 10. Fandry peeking around. Uh, he tucks yep. back in, but Fandry, and we're glad to have him. He hasn't raced with us for a while, so we're really happy to have Jerry Fandry racing again. And there's your lead pack again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I would say the nine now, that's where it seems to be the break. And I believe then you got Hevlo maybe moving up into 10th. And, but he's got a little ways to go to catch that lead draft of nine carts. And here they come. Let's see what's going on. Chris Number Carroll. 12, still, yep, yeah, going. Carroll doing a great job out there. But he's got eight of the carts right on his back bumper. And a total of 62 carts on the track. Wow, so problem. this is some big race. CKNA Grand Nationals here. 2023 season. Eric Fagan now dicing it out a little bit. Trying to make some moves to get back up there. He was running back, I believe, in fifth. And uh, we'll pick it up. And I think Carroll just gave up the lead to Vasquez, maybe. We'll see uh, where that's going. I believe Vasquez took the lead over Chris Carroll. But yes, indeed. And that, that's exactly yeah. what happened. Yeah, uh, uh, Vasquez leading uh, Carroll in and second. And Carroll now Carroll swings out. Left side. Look at this. Carroll's, that's, that's Carroll's exactly. There it is. Oh, and he, we got a fight for second place. He brings, I think that's Fagan yeah. with him. If Fagan is being aggressive already early on, but he did drop back, so he knows he's got to at least get near up to the front in order to do battle. And uh, we got a good race going on again. It is now Chris Carroll back in the lead. He got it from, Fa uh, from Vasquez, and then Fagan snuck his way back up there, and Fagan now in second. And Fagan will pull the famous Fagan drive. If he, he'll stay behind Carroll, push Carroll, so they can get away from the third, fourth, fifth, uh, 62 cards, and then go for the lead. Maybe. I don't know. Strategies have changed. It's a 16-lap feature. But right now it is Chris Carroll and Fagan. That's uh, Coyote and MGM at the front. You talk about American cart manufacturers. These two cart manufacturers have been doing a great job, especially in four cycle, to keep the American driver with a decent price cart. And a de uh, you could tell, definitely a competitive cart. Coyote is strong at this series, but MGM has a lot of wins to their credit throughout the CKNA season. But right now, now they're starting to bunch up. One, two, three, four, top six. That is Chris Carroll, Fagan, Fandry in third, Vasquez drops back to fourth, Nick Sobiak staying in the top five, Sean Myers up there now in the sixth, Eli Fox in seventh, Jacob Duval in eighth, Jake Hevlo up a position into ninth, Colin Aiken makes it up into the top ten, Dittmers drops out of the top ten in 11, Owen Lloyd, he had a recovery, he did hit the dirt, but he's in 12th, P.J. Leiter in 13th, Matt Leiter in 14th, Riley Scott in 15th, Ben Crutenden in 16, Brendan Hanville in 17, Thomas Batten 18, Jesse Clossy in 19, Kalen Brown makes the top 20, Dave. Wow, fantastic. Yeah, Kalen, I interviewed earlier. Um, I'm looking down the list there. I see uh, poor uh, David Cole, D.C., way down in 34th place. I don't know what happened with D.C., but uh, that's easy. <laughs> so uh, good drive by the number 94 of Christopher Mitchell, moving up 10 positions. Uh, Caleb Case in the number 030, moving up 11 positions. And look at that, I told you, Cody, Sub Cody Sabota in the 05, up 21 positions. That's what it takes in this race. In order with 62 carts, you got to try to make it and get up there. They get the halfway sign. So Chris Carroll knows he's got his work cut out for him. He's got Fagan on his back bumper, and that's what you don't want. Believe me, you don't want Fagan right behind you. You'd rather maybe be chasing Fagan at this point but we'll see what happens. Look at third place, Fandry, though. Fandry's going to stay right there, and if he starts dicing it up, it's going to give Chris Carroll maybe a shot 
to pull away. But Fagan's going to definitely keep that door closed. He's going to stay right on the back bumper of that Coyote driver. MGM right there in second. You got Fandry in third. Vasquez on the VLR. What a battle we got from the chassis manufacturers. It's not going to be a battle with engine manufacturers because no. we're all on the Briggs 206. But really great driving by all these drivers. This is the Cup Carts of North America CKNA Grand National Senior Heavy Grand National Race. We will crown the Grand National Champion for 2023. Yeah, absolutely. And your front three are not changing at all. Front six are not changing at all. They're just staying in line. Um, and I think they're going to settle down. We're about halfway uh, through the race. Chris Kerr, I, I'm sorry, number 12, <laughs> <laughs> your leader, your pole sitter, your uh, up front, or uh, he's currently up front there. Yeah, did turn purple that time at 114.299. So. Oh, he's running. Yeah. And you see Jake Hevlo in the number 332. He's in the next pack, but he's got to catch up to that lead pack. Jake Hevlo running in seven with Eli Fox, Jacob Duval, Colin Aiken, Owen Lloyd right there with him, P.J. Lida, Matt Lida, Riley Scott, all behind uh, Hevlo, Jake Hevlo in the 332. He's running seventh, but he's got a break before he catches up to that main lead pack. But he's trying his best to do it. Meanwhile, at the front, it is still Chris Carroll holding the lead, but he's got Eric Fagan. The famous battle, MGM against Coyote. Here they go. In third place, though, don't count this guy out. Number Jerry 577 Fandry. of Jerry Fandry. He's playing it cool. He's saying, let me see what Fagan does here. I don't want to mess anything up because I know if I get into it with Fagan, I'm going to lose that chase to get Carroll. I'm going to lose that first place. So he's just trying to stay with Fagan. He'll even push Fagan and push Carroll so they can get away. And then the three of them could do battle at the end to see who's going to be your grand national champion. Hey, look back in fifth place, number 23, Wicked Nick Sobiak picked yeah. up six spots so far. So. Nick Sobiak yeah, doing Nick's a great job. So Sean Myers right there in six, so keep an eye on him. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. and Nick is right behind uh, David Vasquez, so they could actually make a move. Right. Sean Meyer right behind Wicked Nick just turned purple, right. just like you said, Tony. Yep. And then you got that gap. You see Jake Hevlo in, in the number 332, bright yellow and blue colors. He's back in the next pack that has a draft gun. He's leading that draft with Eli Fox, Jacob Duval, a Atkin Lloyd, P.J. Lida, Matt Lida. Man, what a field we got here. Riley Scott, Cruton Den, Manville, Klossy, Kalen Brown up to 18, Thomas Bat up into 19. Chris Giamara makes the top 20. Oh, man, are we having some racing. Giamara out of California. So a lot of racing going on here. But right now, let's go back to the front. It is Chris Carroll, Fagan, and Fandry. And really, it's Vasquez and Z so Sobiak. Sobiak, yep. Sobiak. And any one of those drivers, I say, can win it along with Sean Meyer, who's right there, too. So here they go. Man, and this is going to be tight. Fourth and fifth place, that's uh, Vasquez and Sobiak are both VLRs. So they're, they're going to try to team up eventually here. And it looks like we are going to have five. Yep, Jason Burgess is showing a handful out there. So five laps to go. Still a lot of racing left here on this 1.1-mile track. So, again, over a minute lap time for these drivers. We go to tracks that is 35 seconds, 40 seconds. This one's over a minute. And it shows you how vast this place is. Newcastle Motorsport Park in Indiana. What a place to hold the Grand National. CKNA Cup Cards in North America 2023 season. Doing a great job, over 500 entries. And here we are with Senior Heavy. You got to be 15 and over to run this class. We don't care how old you are, but you got to be 15 and up to get in this class. And the young guns will be coming on when you get to medium and light. Watch it. Because they are tough now. Even though we got some of our best drivers here for many years, the young guns are coming up. And I'll talk about that when we get to their class. But right now, it is Chris Carroll, somebody I know since he was a kid racing Kid Coyote. And he's now in the front. Fagan right there in second with MGM. Paul Rice, I know him when he was racing at 9 and 12 years old. And he went to Bandit Carts. And then one day I saw this cart out there and I said, what is it? He said, it's an MGM. I go, what the hell is an MGM? He says, mind game motorsports. Yep, yep, so absolutely. That's, that's the deal with Paul Rice. So I grew up with these kids, you know, <laughs> and seeing them. And now making it still into karting. And, of course, Jim Lampari, when he took over uh, Coyote Karts, he was racing as a young gun. And now he's up there and supporting these guys. Look at Chris Carroll, man. Like I said, Chris Carroll's the original 
Coyote Kid, and he's out there defending this lead against Eric Fagan, who's in second. But don't count out Fandry, don't count out Vasquez, Zobiak, and Meyer. They are all seasoned racers, and they know what they have to do as this battles down to the end. Look at the top six. Yeah, and they're just uh, they're just staying as close as they can together um, for the most part. Your leader, that number 12, has stayed out front. Well, okay, we just had a change there. Eric Fagan just took over the lead over number 12. Yep, so Fagan took the lead. Now, whether he took it too soon or he's realizing that he is he – is, Fat, way faster than Carroll, which I don't, I don't think so. But maybe he's, he was feeling him out all those laps and saying, I know I could pull away, so I'm going to take it. And this way it's all settled at this point. So Fagan now in the 175, Eric Fagan out in the lead. And like I said, look at Fandry. Fandry saying, now let me see what I could do with Carroll because – uh, Fagan seems to be getting away, and we got to catch him. So either Fandry's got to team up with Carroll and push him up to catch Fagan. Not sure if that'll happen. I mean, they're definitely not teammates, but it can't hurt to try to get it up there and then make it a three-way battle for the lead. Fagan, Carroll, and Fandry. Oh, man, this is going to come down right to the last lap. I can tell you that. In fourth, it's David Vasquez. Sean Meyer now makes it to the podium. There and there goes, goes Fandry. Fandry. So now Fandry's going to see if he, he's going to need help from Carroll if he wants to catch. Uh, that gives Fagan a break, and Fagan pulls away. So, and then you got Sean Meyer in fifth. But look at Jake Hevlo coming up in sixth. Could he make it a six-way battle again? But right now, it's Fandry. I said, keep an eye on the number 577 of Jerry Fandry. He's been doing a great job out there, and he wants this win. He wants to be the grand national champion. He's right on the back bumper of Fagan. He's not going to make it easy for Fagan. So Fagan might have felt he had Chris Carroll covered, but he didn't count on maybe Fandry coming up there. You know, Dave, this is tough. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, Fagan uh, still up front. We're going to have about two laps to go next time by the stripe. Two laps to go. Two laps to go. So what a, what a break. We, I mean, what a race we got going on here. Two laps to go. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's Fagan, but he's got Fandry right on his back bumper right on his back bumper. We're going to go right down to the end here. Carroll in third, Vasquez in fourth. Sean Meyer makes the podium. He's on the podium. But watch Fandry. Fandry's doing an excellent job. He's been laying there in third for the whole race. Moves now up into second. And now he's jumping up and down. Look at him jumping up and down out of the seat. He's going to try to make a move, I think, Benny. And whether he'll wait for the straightaway or he's going to make it a little sooner, that's what we've been seeing. They've been making that move for the end to get the win a little bit sooner. The number 577 of Jerry Fandry in second. Chris Carroll runs third, but he's got the VLR. David Vasquez all over his back bumper. Sean Meyer on a Coyote is in fifth. Can he help? Carroll, can he get up there? Well, we got some Ray. Look at the top four now. They have pulled away. And Fandry drops off a little bit. And look at the top four. You can't even see them behind Fagan. They are running close. You could drop a blanket on them. Here they come going into turn one. Fagan has to drive an excellent race here. He has to drive a tight race. Can he do it? Oh, man, Fandry's right there. And look at Chris Carroll. Carroll getting antsy. Carroll might be able to do it. Vasquez right there. So we got everybody in this top four. There they go. Carroll looking to the inside, but he doesn't do it. Fagan holding on. Fagan coming out of that turn. Here it is. Fandry's going to maybe wait. And this is going to happen. It's going to happen through one of these turns. Watch Fandry trying to get up. Fagan got a good pull out of that turn down the hill. Here they come. What a race we got going on in this senior heavy. This is coming down to the checkered flag lap, like I said. There goes Fandry making a move, trying to get a run. He's going to cut him over. He comes on the outside, then goes back. Carroll, oh, there goes, there goes Fandry. Look at him jumping up and down, and he gets the lead away from Fagan. We got a new, Fagan comes back. Oh, and Fandry hits the dirt. What a tough break there. Oh, and Carroll makes the move. He, oh, no, that is, oh, that is, yeah, Chris Carroll made the move. But let's watch it at the finish line. You got Vasquez. I'm going to pick it up. Black flag is waving. Chris Carroll gets the win. Oh, what a drive by Chris Carroll and Coyote. Carroll gets the win. Vasquez was right there, but just couldn't do it. Fagan drops back to third. Jerry Fandry in fourth. Jake Kevlo makes the top five. He gets by Sean Meyer. 
Oh, man, what a race we had there. But Chris Carroll, Kid Coyote, comes back. Well, he, he played that perfect with all the stuff that was going on. He was in third. You kind of felt like, can he do it? Can he get by Jerry Fandry? Fandry went for it. I don't blame Fandry. He did a great job. Maybe he got a little shoved over to the side. The black flag, I think, did no, maybe it didn't wave with the checkered. So this race might be official until, of course, Tech. But Chris Carroll is your Grand National Champion here at the Newcastle Motorsport Park, CKNA Grand National Championships Cup Card of North America 2023 season. Congratulations, Chris Carroll. David Vasquez, great job to finish up in second. Fagan did a great job out there in the lead most of the race. Gets third. And Jerry Fandry in fourth. And Jake Hevlo makes the top five. Hold on, let's confirm before. Yeah. <laughs> well, then it's the only three that are coming up. And I know um, Chris Carroll won. Yes. I can finally say his name. The jinx is off. <laughs> uh, well, was that Legends? It no. was. Um, I don't know. My thing's not doing it now. Okay. No I big know. deal. Yeah, I think you're good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Is the track cold? Okay. Is that right? Yeah, here. Okay. you were over there.
Okay. Not that bougie. <laughs> yeah. And you guys got to go all the way down, all the way down to the flag stand. All the way down to the flag stand. Well, yeah. Dave, we're live. Okay, we're live here. Uh, congratulations to, I can finally say it, the jinx is off. Congratulations to Chris Carroll. He won, and I did accidentally slip his name. So the jinx is off, I can say it now. Um, so we're just getting the, uh, is this the kid cars? No, this is uh, cadets, right? I think a cadet class is coming out. Yeah, so we got confirmation it's cadet class. So they're just coming out right now. I'm going to interview some, I'm going to interview somebody. Um, so I'll interview you. Turn up. Her name is, um, what is your name? Chelsea. Chelsea Jasperson. She is Greg Jasperson, the co-owner of Cup Cards North America's daughter. So it's Chelsea Jasperson. Dave, I call we her. Need you. We, need you. we can't hear oh, you, Dave. Okay. I, I call her Turnup Jasperson. Hey, Turnup. Hello. Yeah, and are you having fun out here at Cup Cards North America? Very much so. Yeah, and this is the Grand Nationals. Do you come every year? Yes. I know you do. She's at my little sweetheart, Turnup Jasperson. Yeah, and I've said many times the reason she's called Turnup Jasperson uh, she's 10 years old now when Mandy was pregnant with her. Mandy uh, saw a poster on the wall and said, at this age, your child is the size of a turnip. Mandy was so offended. Her mom, Greg's wife, was so offended. She said, turnip, couldn't they pick a bigger, uh, better fruit? She posted on Facebook, and I instantly jumped all over that and said, that is the greatest racetrack name I've ever heard in my life, and she is going to be famous as Turnip Jasperson. So i, I got to move over here real quick. The jinx is off, my the friend. Off. Oh, thank, thank God, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and you look very happy. You're throwing your yeah. arms in the air. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Chris, I'm telling you, Chris is very fast, and he had a rough year, and I felt so bad for him. Yep. Last, actually, last year after this race, uh, I went to the hospital, and I was in the hospital for like 10 days, so it's been a year of recovery, and we're just kind of finally getting back to the point where I feel like I'm healthy again, and we're fast. I am happy for yeah, you, Chris. Seriously, you. very happy for you. Appreciate Olivia, it. get to go see you yet? Oh, yeah, she saw me. She's crying. I'm crying, too, because <laughs> she's awesome. <laughs> Chris Carroll, everybody, yeah, congratulations. The big win. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank um, PPK, Coyote Motorsports, Lawson Speed Shop, Brandon Jarsa Crack Racing, and my wife for everything. So congratulations, Chris Carroll. Seriously, man. <laughs> best, my best to you. Yeah. Job, go, go celebrate. You earned it. Okay. So, okay, we're going to get some interviews here if we can. Hi. Can you tell me your name, please, and where are you from? Um, my name is Reagan, and I'm from Indianapolis. Reagan Hodges, right? Yeah. Okay, from Indianapolis. Have you raced with us before? Yes. And it was Grands last year, wasn't it? I've won the championship here from Ooh, Kid Car. Oh, she's a big deal. And do you race any uh, regional races? You, maybe you don't even know what they are, right? Did yeah. you race Whiteland with us by any chance? Um, yes, I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and thank you very much, Reagan. I appreciate it. And I'm looking for my lineup girl, and I lost her totally. So let's go. You want to talk? Can you turn around, stand with your back here? Turn around. What's your name? Braylon. What's your last name? Braylon. I don't know that. Don't know your last name. Okay, that's fine. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> Come on back. So uh, are you racing? You're not the racer, right? No, I'm not the racer. Who's the racer? Reagan. Ra oh, that's your sister. No, my cousin. Your cousin. Oh, okay. So we got the cousin. We had a little bit of support here at the track side. We're very happy to have that. And I still cannot find my lineup girl. So anybody else want to interview? Okay. Let's, uh, okay, real quick. Can you tell me who you are, Zion? Zion. What's your last name? Dyer. And where are you from? Indiana. And you don't know what city? Winchester. Winchester. Where's that? Is that near Indianapolis, maybe? Near here. North? Okay. North. Um, and your cart number? 18. And are you feeling pretty good today? Yeah. Good. I hope so. You got to make sure. Is that tight? I haven't buckled it. Oh, he hasn't buckled it yet. Okay. I want to be sure. Here, we got another one. Can you come over here? Cooper? Come on, buddy. Yeah, turn around so we can see the camera. And tell me your name, Cooper Mole. Cooper Mole. And where are you from? Lafayette, Indiana. Yes. And do you have a brother racing? Yes. What's his name? Layton Mo. And who's faster, you or him? You're in two different classes, but who's faster? I'm faster. Ah, Cooper. <laughs> He's my buddy. I've known Cooper for years and years. He used to have super long hair. Cooper's uh, overcome a lot of diversity, right? We got a lot of problems, and we're straightening them all out. Yeah. And you're doing much better. Cooper last year at Winter Nationals showed up in a, a Bucky's suit, right? The yeah. The complete Bucky suit. And he got on my pit bike and rode around Charlotte Motor Speedway, the most iconic motor speedway, 
in a Bucky suit on my electric bike. So I was very proud of Cooper. <laughs> Good job, my friend. And can you can, 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 got anything else? Yeah. Okay. Say hi to your mom and dad for me, would you please? Okay. And your f full name? Anthony Giovanni. Yeah. Giovanni. 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 I'm sorry. And where are you from? What city and state? You know? Um, I'm from Ohio. Okay. And I live in Menor. And you live there? I live in Menor. And. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And what? What's your home track? Is it G and J? No, it's. Thompson. Thompson, okay. I don't think I've ever been to Thompson. Yeah. And you've raced with us before, yes, yeah. absolutely. I think I remember you from Pitt. <laughs> yes, I was in Pitt. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yes, Pitt. Thank you very much. Yeah. Are you fast? You feel like you're fast today? Well, yeah, I do feel really fast today. Do you got a good chance at winning? Well, I feel confident of myself. I just want to win. Okay, who's your biggest competition? You know their name? Who, who, who probably has a chance that you're going to have to race against who might beat you? Uh, I don't know. I'll just say the winning driver. Yeah, well, you're going to be the winning driver, right? There's my man. Okay, we're going to move up the grid here, and let's see who we can find. Is that, that's not Braden. Arlo. Arlo. Arlo who? Oh, okay. Do you want to talk, Arlo? Okay. And, I'll just do it in the car. Okay. He, he's going to move around and get you. Okay. So, your full name and where are you from? Um, Arlo Barr, and I'm from Dodgeville, Wisconsin. Dodgeville, Wisconsin. You, you're starting in the back here, and I know you're faster. What happened? Um, just had a bad start. Okay. But you're going to make up for it now, right? Yeah. Okay. And who's, who, uh, first of all, do your tires feel okay? Yeah. Nobody's going to tell me they got bad tires. I keep searching for that. Nobody will admit that. So. Okay. Thank you very much, Arlo. I wish you luck. Be safe. I will. You don't win it on the first corner, right? You gotta wait till the second corner. <laughs> Good luck, Arlo. Canadian? Yeah. Right. Okay. Sorry. Here you go. Canada's up. Okay, another country represented. Can you tell me your name and where are you from? My name's Anthony and I'm What's your last name? My name's An my name's Anthony. My last name's Di Donato. Di and I Di Donato. Yeah. Okay. And I'm from Canada. Okay, what province? Ontario. Ontario. Okay. And have you raced with us before? Yes. Yes. Last year, didn't you? And we also up in Canada. And uh, I think Goodwood, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, you're feeling pretty good? Yeah. And how's your tires? Good. Ah! Okay. <laughs> Somebody's going to tell me they're worried about their tires. Okay. Marie's got something for me. And, and Maria is our Canadian promoter, so she's going to try real hard to pick a lot of Canadians. And what's your name? Um, my, um, Miles. What's your last name? Wilson. And where are you from? What state? Um, in you Indiana. Know. You are from right here. Okay. And Miles, you feeling pretty good? Yes. Okay. And do you, you don't have any uh, trouble with aerodynamics, right? You can crouch right down. Let me see what you look like when you're crouching down. When, when, you, try to, when you try to tuck. There we go, just like that. Way to go, Miles. I wish you the best of luck. And you're going to tell me your tires are just fine, too, aren't you? Yes. Okay, I know you would. <laughs> Want to say hi? Hi, Dave. How are you doing, buddy? Are we good? Can we interview? Yeah. Okay. Real quick, your name and your, where you're from. My name's Ryder, and I'm from Florida, Jacksonville. From, from where? Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Oh, Jacksonville, Florida. Florida. Yeah. 103rd Street Sports yes, Complex. That's our home track. Yeah, and you race with us. I absolutely love your track. It's one of the few free tracks in the United States yeah. where people can come in. You like Jacksonville? Yes. How do you like the new lights? Tell me about that. Uh, awesome. You're yeah. pretty happy with them? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Nice. Well, I wish you the best of luck, and I'm not even going to ask you about your tires because I know you're going to tell me they're just fine. Okay, yes. best of luck to you, my Thanks, friend. Dave. You betcha. Thank you. And we have somebody. And real loud, your, your whole name and where are you from? My name is William Veter, and I'm from Zionsville, Indiana. Okay, so that's fairly close, right? Zionsville? Yeah. Okay. And uh, are you pretty quick? Yeah, I'm pretty decent. What, what? Sorry, what's your home track? Uh, right here. Oh, this is? Okay. Do you go to Whiteland also once in a while? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Yeah, and I know your tires are fine, aren't they? Yeah, okay. Good luck, my friend. Thank you. Okay. What do you got, Marie? Oh. Ah, there we go. This is the one I'm looking for. I'm going to just sneak around here. So that's Mom, Mom Michelle. Yeah. Yeah. Jason. Yeah. 
And here we have sparkles. And you can always pick this one out. The entire cart and the helmet is pink. And the pony. Real quick, what's your name? Alyssa Eddie. Sparkles, and where are you from? St. Michael, Minnesota. How far away from Dave Mack? Um, not very far at all. Not far. <laughs> okay. Good luck. I gotta go. All right, we're getting ready to start with Cadet for their Grand National Championship. 28 cards, 28 cadets. Now, they have to be 8 years old to 10 years old in this class. So, again, a very young class. We appreciate their parents bringing them to this Grand National. And you can watch these children drive. They are excellent. So, 8 to 10 years old. Here we go with the cadet class. I believe on the pole we got... Looks like Aston Wyatt in the 221. Outside pole, Connor Lipka in the 44. Daniel Dragonoff in the 151 in third. Caden Williams in the 118 in fourth. R.J. Brown in fifth. Cooper Mull in sixth. Dominic Geddes in seventh. Austin Taylor in eighth. Keegan Irwin in ninth. Alyssa Eddy in tenth. Parker Stewart in 11th, Andrew Adams in 12th, William Ventor in 13th, Melville Casantos in 14th, Caden Lee, Lee, I'm sorry, Caden Lehans in 15th, Lincoln Wiley in 16th, Chase Thornton in 17th, Ryder Thompson in 18th, Hudson Howard in 19th, Miles My, Wilson in 20th, Zion Dyer in 21st, Anthony Siofani in 22nd, Arlo Barr in 23rd, Anthony D. Donato in 24th, Reagan Hodges in 25, Mila Stoner in 26, in 27, Jacob Faust in 28, Giovanni Fiorita. That's how they stack up 20 car 28 cards to take the green. All right, they're going to bring them down. That is, it should be Aston Wyatt and Connor Lipka. Let's pick it up. Cart 221 on the pole, cart number 44, Connor Lipka. And our chief starter, Jason, will look. And if he likes them, uh, one child raving his arms, not sure. He's looking. Jason Burgess is looking. And he gets them the green. So the green is out. And quickly, you see uh, Aston Wyatt come across and follow what the grown-ups do and take the lead pretty quick. So Aston Wyatt goes into the lead with Daniel Dragonoff, I believe, trying to pull up in second. That's the 151. And it looks like one, two, three, four, five have already broken away from the pack. But meanwhile, the number 221 of Aston Wyatt out in front. Aston Wyatt out in front. Daniel Dragunov in second. We'll pick it up as they come around. This is the cadet class. Remember, the kids have to be from 8 to 10. 8 to 10 years old. 8 to 10 years old. Um, uh, that's well. That's the age limit here. So keep an eye on these children. They're doing a great job, and you'll see. They know how to race. They know. It. Like I said, for people looking at home, you might say, "Well, they're not going that fast. It's easy." No, it's hard, and they are making it look easy. 
basically all the drivers here today that you will see, they are making it look easy. It is not easy, and it is physical, too, especially in the grown-up classes and the senior classes. It is physical. You get beat up out there with the G-forces, and, uh, you know, if there's a couple bumps in the track and just trying to hold on through the turns, you do get beat up. So uh, we'll testing. Yeah. So Aston Wyatt in the lead, Daniel Dragonoff in second, I believe, will pick it up this time when they come across the stripe. And uh, we'll see what happens. Here they come, over the hill, down the hill. Okay, Tony, I'm back here. Uh, nice to be back. Yeah, Dragonoff in second place. Dragonoff is that one that says on the back of his cart in Bulgarian, T. Gonish. <laughs> T. Gonish, and that stands for tag, you're it. Yeah, tag, you're it. Right. Right. A good kick out of that. Yeah, um, yeah Aston Wyatt leading on uh, Daniel Dragonoff second, R.J. Brown third, Dominic Gaddis fourth, Keegan Irwin fifth, Caden Williams sixth, uh, Connor Leip Lipka, or Leipka, probably Lipka. Lipka. Uh, 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 seventh, uh, Cooper Mole in eighth. He's down one spot. Sparkles Eddie up two spots already. She's up to ninth. And Austin Taylor rounds out your top ten. Uh, Parker Stewart, I'm looking down a little bit, dropped two spots. He started, uh, he was in uh, tenth place. He's down to twelfth now. And uh, So uh, Dragonoff has taken the lead. Cart number 151 of Daniel Dragonoff has taken the lead away from the 777 of R.J. Brown. But look at how tight these juniors run. And you see Aston Wyatt in the 221 who had the lead pulling out, looking to see if he can get back. But right now it is Dragonoff in the lead. Brown in second. Wyatt in third. Gaddis in fourth place. Irwin in fifth. Those are your top five. We give out, that's the podium positions, top five. So you want to get on that top five to be a grand national champion? This is for all the marbles here, this final race. These drivers have been qualifying since Friday, Friday morning through Saturday. And here we are Sunday at the Newcastle Motor Speedway, CKNA, Cup Carts of North America, grand national championships for the 2023 season. And what a race we have. What a full field of drivers we have here. We're starting up to 60 carts in a class. This class happens to have 28, but that is very unusual for the cadet class that we have this many cadets. And we'd like to thank the parents for bringing them to this race, getting them involved in a sport that gets them away from sitting behind a computer <laughs> and getting out there and, and having a good time. And it allows them to be in the race for the whole time. They, are, they don't have to switch out after five minutes that, you know, we're going to put another player in. They have to run this whole race, and they've been racing since Friday here. Yeah, and, absolutely, Tony. Uh, cart Mom and Cart Dad, huge hats off to every single one of you that you, you spend yeah. all this time and effort. And it's expensive. Racing's expensive. Yeah. We're economical, but the whole overall sport is expensive. So for your dedication for your kid, and you're making memories. You're not just making races. You're making memories. You're making lifetime memories. And these kids will remember this for the rest of their life. It might be the fondest memory when they're old like me they you know they're gonna look back <laughs> on their life they're well, gonna say this is the greatest thing i did you make a lot of friends in karting yes and that's you know for sure i mean you know i know i we've been around for a long time and i'm meeting people that i knew from 30 years ago coming to this race and they're here and it's like wow hey, i haven't seen you in 30 years yeah. but uh sometimes we don't recognize each other but we you know finally figure out who's who here but that's what karting does it really is a family sport it's a participant sport that's for sure and it definitely you're going to build up a lot of friendships. So let's go back. It's Daniel Dragonoff in the lead. Aston Wyatt right there in second. Gaddis in third. In fourth is Keegan Irwin in fifth. It, it, I mean, in fourth is Connor Lipka. In fifth is Keegan Irwin. R.J. Brown in sixth. Hayden Williams down two position. Drops to seven. Alyssa Eddy up three positions. Now up in eighth. Austin Taylor Holding on in ninth. Cooper Mull having a little problem out there. He's up, it, but he's in the top ten. Parker Stewart running 11. William Ventor in 12th. Lincoln Wiley, Willie Wiley in 13th. Caden, Caden Lehans in 14th. Melville Dos Santos in 15th. Ryder Thompson in 16th. Hudson Howard in 17th. Zion Dwyer in 18th. One of the people up three spots. You interviewed Zion out there. Yep. Miles Wilson in 19th. Andrew Adams in the top 20. Don't seven, though. Yep. I'm not sure what yeah, happened to Andrew sure Adams. Happened. He dropped Andrew. seven spots. but Yep, tough mm -hmm. break for Andrew. But right now, running in that 20th position, still you got to be happy that you're in the top 20 here with the amount of carts that are here. 
and the competition level of these cadet carts. Remember, they are 8 years old to 10 years old. And like you said, sparkles out there. You can't miss her with that pink and that helmet with the, <laughs> with the thing on the, on the helmet. But look at the top three. Wyatt, Dragunov, and Lipka running really tight. Gaddis in fourth, R.J. Brown in fifth. That's your podium. Brown down to that fifth spot. Keegan William, keep, keep, keep an eye on Keegan, Keegan Irwin in the number 92, running in sixth. Caden Williams, not sure what happened to him. He's running in seven. Alyssa Eddy right there in eighth. Austin, keep an eye on Alyssa. Well, you can't miss her with, look at her. She's making a pass there. So Alyssa Eddy in the number 100, doing a great job. And I think she moves up to seventh at this point. So she's on the move, Alyssa Eddy. And not being shaken up here as Carter's really kind of, look at that. She'll run nose to tail with them, no problem. And Cooper Mull right behind her. Cooper Mull giving her a tap in the back. The two of them are going to run faster than the one single ahead of them. So, yeah, that's a very good move for Cooper Mull and Alyssa Eddy. Amazing the strategy these 8- to 10-year-old carters have of knowing what they got to do. Believe me, this teaches them when they become driver's age to drive their car how to handle any situation. Because in racing, you can have spin-outs. You can have somebody spinning out in front of you. And you know what you learn what to do. And it becomes an instinct, not something, that, well, I got to turn the wheel in the way of the way I'm spinning. You don't even think of that. You do it automatically. It becomes instinctive to these drivers. And they become great automobile drivers when they get their license. They become the best, believe me. That's the absolute fact, Tony. And I noticed that over the years at club racing and stuff. All my kids, I've never had one of my kids grew up at the right. racetrack, grew up racing, that was a bad driver. Right. They're very aggressive and very fast. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, that's but the only thing. you got you got to yeah. control them. But, but other than that... They are, I don't care if they go to driver's ed or not, they are the best. I didn't have to take any of my kids to driver's lessons. I didn't yeah. have to take any of them to driver's lessons. Sure. They all just went down, I'm going for my license. Chris and, they Chris got and Drew, it. I, know, I know your kids well, yeah. <laughs> In fact, Chris is here right now. Oh, Chris Two Tents. Yeah. Chris is supporting his stepson, Hudson Brown. Yeah. Uh, making it, you know, Hudson Brown's in the show, so we'll see him later on. We'll see how he does. Sure. But Chris doing a great job there. Of course, snap your neck engines are doing yep. it, trying to give uh, Hudson Brown all the power he can use out there. But uh, Chris has been doing a great job, and Chris is the guy that brought me back to uh, kart racing because for a while I was out and. Chris said to me one day, Dad, well, let's go go-kart racing again. <laughs> and we did. And I'll tell you, if you ever see the schedule and you see uh, Chris's brother, Drew, yeah. Andrew, uh, racing, and he's bringing his buddy with, make sure you come out to that race because they do stunt bike riding, and <laughs> yeah. I am just mesmerized by this. I can't believe the stuff I'm seeing them do. Yeah, Drew just sent me a text message. He's won the first two heats at the local race, so he's oh. doing good. So I'm pulling for him there. Sure. So uh, right now we got nice Aston Wyatt. Wyatt continue to be in the lead. Connor Lipka in second. Daniel Dragunov dropped to third. He was your leader. Aston Wyatt, uh, he's been running good here today, and right now Wyatt takes the lead. R.J. Brown in fourth. Dominic Gaddis in fifth. Those are your top podium finishers right now. Caden Williams right there in sixth. Keegan Irwin in seventh. Austin Taylor in eighth. Alyssa Eddy up to ninth. She's in the top ten now. She's been doing an excellent job. Up two positions. Cooper Mull. I don't know what happened, but he's back in ten. Packers uh, Parker Stewart back in 11. William Ventor in 12th. Lincoln Wiley in 13th. Keegan, Keegan, Keegan Lehans in 14th. Those are your top 14 drivers right now. But let's go back to the front, Aston Wyatt. And look at, uh, <laughs> look at Alyssa, I mean, oh, out there. Huh? Alyssa Eddy doing a great job, moving her way up one by one. She's currently in ninth place, and she's uh, got her eyeballs on, on uh, um, the cart right in front of her, which would be, I believe that's Austin, Austin Taylor. Taylor, Taylor I believe it's Austin Taylor. And uh, Jason is signifying the halfway point. So we got eight laps down, eight to go. I know we've got uh, Don in the uh, racing in a little bit. We've got, uh, let's see, who was I just looking at? I had a good story, too. Um, uh, oh, Parker Stewart, uh, number two, Parker Stewart, back in 11th place. Parker Stewart is a world-class athlete. Um, he's a runner, uh, bicycle, you know, they got the what, triathlon. He does right. all that stuff. He ran a 5K, and he missed the cutoff, oh. so he ran a full K and still set a record. <laughs> all right. Your leader is still the 221 of Aston Wyatt with the 44 of Connor Lipka right there. And they start to pull away now, as you see on your screen. They start to pull away from third-place driver, I believe, 151 of Daniel Dragunov. 
So the top two trying to pull away from him. So it's a two-way battle instead of a three-way battle. Dragunov's going to have to do a lot to try to catch up. He's right there in third. He's running all alone in third, basically. A good pack coming up in fourth with R.J. Brown, Caden Williams, Dominic Gaddis. Oh, 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 tough break. We got a cart, and, two carts gonna, sideways on the track. We got a cart sideways on the track, and hopefully the other drivers are quick and see it and do not hit it, and they don't. Do an excellent job of getting around. That's one of your top carters right out there that just got into a problem. Aston Wyatt still in the lead. Karna Lipka will pick it up. Daniel Dragunov, I believe, we got by that. He's still in third trying to catch up to the two leaders. Yeah, as your two leaders, Aston Wyatt and Connor Lipka. And you see Lipka is not letting up on Aston Wyatt, staying right with him. Third place, uh, we have Daniel Dragunov. I believe Dominic Gaddis in fourth. Keegan uh, Irwin in fifth. Austin Taylor in sixth. Alyssa Eddy up to seventh. So doing a great job out there. But we had a little bit of a mishap out there. So that did change the lineup a little bit. But your leader continues to be the 221, followed very closely by the 44 of Connor Lipka. Here they come around that right-hand turn down, uh, around the left hand. And they are doing a great job out there. Look at these drivers. Look at them handle that wheel. And they do know just what to do. And they are doing a great job out there, Wyatt and Lipka. Boy, that, and that Wyatt has his rear view mirror full of Lipka, though. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Lipka's yeah. all over Oh, there. yeah. Lipka. They don't have mirrors, really. L Lipka, but yeah, Lipka's not letting up. Here they come down the front straight. So we'll pick up the lineup again. But it's definitely Wyatt and Lipka. And Wyatt, are, Lipka, Dragunov. They are so close, you can't even see Lipka behind them. We got Dragunov in third. Gaddis is still holding on to fourth. Irwin in fifth. Alyssa Eddy up to sixth. She's very close to getting a podium finish here. Alyssa Eddy up five positions. Running in six, cart number 100. Can't miss her in the pink. Number 24, Taylor, T I mean, Austin Taylor in seventh. Cooper Mull in eighth. Patrick Stewart in ninth. William Vettor in tenth. Those are your top ten. R.J. Brown running in 11th. Caden Williams in 12th. Lincoln Wiley up three positions in 13th. Yeah, there's Alyssa now putting up. She is driving excellent here. She just got passed by Austin Taylor. So oh, Austin Taylor got it, but she's not giving that up no, so no. easy. No, she's no. right on the back bumper of Austin Taylor again. So she is not giving that up easy. You got to give credit to Austin Taylor. He's doing a great job of taking a position away. And right now, your leaders continue to be tight. Wyatt and Lipka. Let's pick it up there uh, in, I believe that's Gaddis, Keegan Irwin, and Alyssa Eddy battling out positions back there. Yeah, so Alyssa back in seventh, Austin Taylor back to sixth place. Their leader still Wyatt, Lipka, and Dragunov. Yeah. And Dragunov is a little bit behind the first two. The front two are right together. Dragunov's kind of all by himself. Yeah, he's all by there. himself in third. Dominic Gaddis, nobody really approaching him. Here comes Keegan Irwin in the number 92, along with the number 25 of Austin Taylor and the 100 of Alyssa Eddy. They are battling for position. Cooper Mull in eighth, Parker Stewart in ninth, William Ventor in tenth, R.J. Brown in 11th, Caden Williams in 12th, Melville Dos Santos in 13th, up two positions, Lincoln Wiley in 14th, Kate. Keaton Lee Hands in 15, Hudson Howard in 16, Andrew Adams in 17, Zion Dwyer in 18, doing a good job moving up a couple positions, Miles Wilson in 19, Ryder Thompson in 20th, Chase Thrixton in 21st, Mila Stoner in 22, moving up four positions for the number three of Mila Stoner, the number 99 of Anthony D. Denado moving up a position into 23, Anthony Siafani. Got some of the Italians out there running in 24th. Reagan Hodges in 25th. Jacob Faust in 26th. Arlo Barr in 27th. Giovanni Fiorita brings up the pack. So here we go back at the front. It is Aston Wyatt, number four. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The 44 of Connor Lipka has taken the lead away from the 221 of Aston Wyatt. A good move by the number 44 of Connor Lipka. But, you know, Aston Wyatt's not going to give it up. Uh, he did give it up, but he's going to stay with him to try to come back and take that lead again. We got Daniel Dragunov again all alone in third. Dominic Gaddis in fourth. Austin Taylor in fifth, Keegan Irwin in sixth. Alyssa Eddy drops back to seventh. She was close to being on the podium there. Cooper Mull in eighth. And Parker Stewart, I believe, in ninth. William Vector in the top ten. Back to the lead. It's Connor Lipka now. Aston Wyatt. 
What a drive by the 44 of Connor Lipka, the leader with the number 221 of Aston Wyatt in second. Look at these two young drivers wow. coming through the turns, doing it perfectly, hitting their marks. You cannot believe they are only anywhere from 8 to 10 years old, Dave. Yeah, just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Fun they're, to watch. Yeah, They're doing a great job. They have pulled away from the rest of the pack. Dragon off, I believe, like I said, it was running all alone in third. Let's see him. There he comes. All alone in third. Here comes your leaders down the front straightaway. Lipka and Wyatt. Cart number 44 in the lead. 221. Aston Wyatt in second. There's all alone in fourth is Dominic Gaddis. Here comes the battle. And get a push. Oh, Alyssa Eddy, I believe, getting a push from Keegan Irwin and Cooper Moe. We'll see how they end up. But I believe Alyssa did a good job there and maybe moved up to fifth. We'll have to pick it up. Your leaders continue to be the 44 and the 221, but I think 221 now got by the number 44 of Connor Lipka. So your new leader, well, leader once again is the 221 of Aston Wyatt with the 44 of Connor Lipka in second. Look at the run. The Alyssa Eddy in the number 100 out in front of that lead pack. And it looks like she's in front of the 92 of Keegan Irwin. And look at her drive and that feather on her helmet blowing in the wind down there. But she did not get shaken up with all the, all the things that were going on around her. She's holding her position and driving a real good line. And now he's, wow, you see uh, Keegan Irwin doing the back of his helmet. Come on, I need some help to catch this girl. Yeah. I want to catch her. Here we go. Two, is that two laps remaining? Two laps remaining. Your leader, Aston Wyatt, in the 221, the 44 of Connor Lipka. All alone in third, Daniel Dragunov in the 151. Dominic Gaddis in the 714. Let's pick it up where the race is. Alyssa Eddy has made it to the podium. Alyssa Eddy in the 100 pink cart, made it to fifth place. Keegan Irwin right there. He's looking for help from Austin Taylor. Cooper Mall in eighth. In ninth, it's Parker Stewart. In tenth, it's William Vettor. That's where the race, the race is on the track for that fifth place position. And I believe Alyssa's getting into trouble. Yep, and the yep, and we got the battle for the lead is going on as we have a battle for fifth. Aston Wyatt, I believe, still holding on with Lipka in second. But we'll pick that up. And meanwhile, there's a battle for fifth. I believe Alyssa got passed, and she's lost that fifth place. So we got a battle for first and a battle for fifth. And you want to be in fifth place so you can get on the podium. So we'll pick that up as they come around. But they're continuing in front is the uh, 221 of Aston Wyatt. He is holding the lead. He is your leader. Connor Lipka is in second, and they have left the rest of the pack in the dust. I believe White Flag will be waving this time. White Flag is out. Daniel dragging off all alone in third. No, is Lipka going to try to make a move here like yeah. the adults? Yeah, Lipka is mean, definitely no. going to make a move. These kids are very race-oriented, race yeah. and uh, he's not going to give it up that easy. But right now, Aston Wyatt needs to put some space in. You can see Aston doing that. Let's look back at fifth place. Is it still going on to battle for fifth? Right? Aston Wyatt in the lead. Connor Lipka out in front. In third, Daniel Dragunov all alone in third. But it's the battle for the front with Aston Wyatt and Connor Lipka. Lipka holding on. I mean, Wyatt holding on. But there's the number 44 of Connor Lipka. They're side by side now coming down the hill. But Wyatt is able to pull back into the lead. What a race we got going on between these two children. Here they're running hard. Lipka and, and Wyatt. Man, Wyatt, uh, Lipka not giving up. Looking to the inside. Looking to the outside. Wyatt knows he's being challenged. There they go side by side again. Check a flag. Will end. Well, the 44 of Connor Lipka gets the lead. What a move by the number 44 of Connor Ash. Aston Wyatt, I mean, of Connor Lipka. Wyatt in, the, in second now. Here they come. Oh, man, it's coming down. He's not going to swing out at this point. It's going to be Connor Lipka getting the win. He puts his hand up in victory. Wow. Wyatt gets second place. What a drive by them. Daniel Dragunov, no problem. In third place. In fourth place, Dominic Gaddis. Let's pick it up in fifth. I believe it's going to be Alyssa Eddy making it to the podium. What a drive by this girl. Number 100, Alyssa Eddy makes it to the podium. A tough break for Austin Taylor in sixth. Cooper Mull ends up in seventh. Keegan Irwin in eighth. Patrick, I mean Parker Stewart in ninth. R.J. Brown in the top ten. Then you got Vector, Williams, Santos, Wiley, Lehans, Wilson, Adams, Thompson, 
Thrixton, Howard, Donato, Stoner, Siofani, Barr, Faust, Hodge, Dwyer, and Fiorita, your top 28 cadet class, 8 to 10 years old. Your grand national champion at this point in this class is Connor Lipka. What a drive by Connor. And I see the black flag being waved with the checkered, so we'll see what happens.
Okay, I'm here with Greg Jasperson, of course, one of the uh, pr uh, promoters of the CKNA series, the whole CKNA deal. Uh, of We got the North, the South, the Canadian, and now the Northeast. So good to have you here. Yeah, good to be here. Finally, <laughs> I finally made it up here after all weekend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know you're a busy guy. It is. It is. Uh, I know what it is just to run a hundred and something carts. I don't know how you're doing it with 500 carts. You know, uh, we got a lot of good help. Um, this is the most staff we've ever had. We had a couple sponsors that came on last minute, which was really awesome because it allowed us to hire some extra people. Um, right. I think we've got 46 people on site, so it makes a big difference in trying to make sure everything comes off well. Really good. I mean, I'm getting a lot of great comments from people out there, uh, people that have run other series, and, and I talked to somebody from California that's run a lot of different series, and he told me, he says, Tony, you guys are doing the greatest job uh, I've ever been at a race. And I think people are having fun. No, I, you know what? I've you been know? able to walk around the pits quite a bit. I mean, obviously, it's a racetrack, right? Yeah. Not, <laughs> everybody, not everyone gets to win, so there's yeah. some people oh, who yeah. have not had the best weekend. But um, all in all, it, it's been a really friendly atmosphere. Competitors are getting along. We had a great barbecue last night, and everyone mm -hmm. just kind of got to hang out and uh, have a beverage and right. hang out. And it's just been, it, it's been a really, really good time. And, and the competition. Oh, God. You got <laughs> Did you ever think this would, I mean, I, I, you know, it's just the people you got, the, the racers that are here is just unbelievable, the names that we're calling out up here. It's just unbelievable. These are the best of the best, not only in four-cycle. I'm going to say there's some two-cycle top drivers here and drivers from, like we said, all over the country and out of the country. No, absolutely. I mean, we have national champions not only from yep. four-cycle divisions, two-cycle divisions, uh, guys that have raced in world races. So um, this is really the top level competition of what's out there today, and it shows. I mean, we've got, you know, with the engine package being as competitive as it is, and, you know, the chassis and everything else all working together, and yet we still have this just amazingly tight competition. Right. It's amazing how CKNA pulled this all together because this is what the sport needed. It needed this to get people back into the sport or get new people into the sport. Right, right, you said, the engine rules, the tire rules, all of that, it just it makes it where I could tell somebody, hey, you can go out and race. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, the, the idea behind it always was just to try to make it simple for people. Right. Make it fair, make it simple, but it, it's not us alone. I mean, obviously, Steve and myself, you know, mm -hmm. we, we had a vision. We knew what we wanted to do, but the reason we have so many sponsors is because that's what it takes to put this together, and the sponsors have stood behind us through thick and thin, tried to help us out, provide support when we need it, and it, it helps us to put something on like this. Yeah, the sponsors have done a, a great job, and like I tell the racers that are here, that's the people you want to talk to when you're going to buy something. You're going to buy a card. I mean, uh, there's a number of chassis supporters here and, and sponsors. And you, you, whatever you want to do, you need parts for your cart. The right people are here that will get you the right part for what you need to compete in any four cycle, any 206, whether it's local or with CKNA. Yeah, you know, and, and to me it goes beyond parts, too, because we have the support here. And there's the, the advice. And, right. you know, I, I, I use the term coaching loosely because I don't think you need a driver coach to compete yeah. in this. You know, you can. But there's just, you know, the dad who's trying to help out his son and, you know, doesn't know – you know, cast or camber, simple things that he's right. trying to learn. There are people in this paddock that have people running up front that will still take the time to help, and that's a that's a big deal. Yeah, I mean, uh, we found out over the years that we started with CKNA, you know, under trying to understand what do we got to do, what gear ratios, what makes sense, what can, and people helped us. And they put us on the right track. I mean, you know, and then it's up to you to kind of fine-tune it and get it right. But you could tell by the amount of people here and the competition here, I mean, there's nobody really running away with it. No. I mean, it's great racing, and, and I've been told that by somebody who's raced all different things from cars to carts, and they said, you know what? This is real racing. Uh, uh, some races, you just pull out in front, and that's it. It's over. This, this is becoming real racing. And the tracks that we go to, whether north, yep. south, or whatever, offers a different challenge at each time. No, and that's one of the things when we're building a schedule we always try to look at. We want to make sure we don't have a lot of... All, all fast flowing right. tracks, all really right. tight old school four cycle tracks. Right. You know, we want that mix because it, it makes a more rounded driver. I mean, let's face it, karting yep. is still supposed to be the building block for f future motorsports, that's right. and that's what a lot of people want to do. If you only ever run the same type of track or the same type of conditions, y y you're going to be missing out on some of that, right. that learning experience. So, I mean, a lot of the drivers I've worked with over the years have really benefited from coming around, racing other tracks, getting other experiences, and, and racing other people. Right. And, and, you know, in the Northeast, when we went to Pittsburgh International Raceway, Pitt, as we call it, yep. that last race, some of the top competition showed up at that race. And I told them, this is, you know, a, a, 
a forefront to what you're going to see if you go to the Grand National. <laughs> it's, a, it's a preview into the Grand National, and that's a big track over a minute. Yep. It took them to get around, so that gave them that size. But up, up until then, we were on like 35, 40 second tracks. But that one gave them a, an insight to what this would be. So, like you said, moving to these different tracks builds these drivers and builds their pit crew and everything, what they got to do, how they got to change, what they got to do to make it around. And they go, oh, this turn is something like, oh, uh, I've been at South Bend and so on yep. and so on. Yep. And, you know, we've been to places like East Lansing and G&J and uh, really offering a different challenge. Than, oh, for than, sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's one of the things that some of the Canadian competitors have yeah. brought up to me is that they like the, the, the diversity of the track layouts that we chose at the different tracks because, um, you know, Trey Riviere, I'm sure I'm butchering yeah. the name yeah. of the pronunciation, <laughs> but um, that had to be one of the most entertaining looking tracks I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Um, and, and just watching how they raced up there and then watching it translate to down here, it, it, it's really neat to see, especially when we have, I think, 69 or 70 Canadian competitors that made the trip down. Wow, yeah, unbelievable. You know, um, yeah, and, and they mix in and great, and it's great. They run great. They're having a great time. Everyone's getting along. You know, it doesn't matter where they're from now. Yeah. They're, it, yeah. It's it's a four-cycle racing community. Right. It, it's, you know, like I said, the two-cycle, I mean, the 206 engine has brought the karting community giving them a place to start, and they yep. could stay with it. I mean, we go all the way up to the legends. Yeah, it's cradle to grave. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, uh, and and we're seeing that. I mean, we can't believe how many kid carts we have, how many cadet carts yeah. or sportsmen we have. I mean, that's usually the classes that are kind of light, but, you know, the parents that brought them out here because they want to be a part of this. And I told people it's just not about going to the Grand National. It is an event, you know. It's something that you just might want to go and watch. You don't have to go and race. Well, you know what? It's like we got the kid carts pulling out yeah. on track, getting ready for their, you know, getting ready for their grand final. And, you know, I've had people ask me, you know, well, you only got, you know, what do we have here? 12 entries yeah. in kid car. It's, you know, it's a lot of time for that. That's but a lot. <laughs> but you know what? At the same time, I think it's important for us to try to keep the kid car competitors as a part of the event because now they're seeing and the kids are seeing this is the future of the motorsport that you've chosen. And you've got the opportunity to continue to grow and to race in these larger fields. Yeah. And I'm watching the kid carts and stuff. I mean, they're they're watching the, 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 the grown ups drive here and they're pulling some of the same moves. Oh, it's yeah. Unbelievable. So they are, you know, like I'm telling people at home that are watching this, it might look easy <laughs> because they are real professionals i'm gonna say it might look easy but it is not easy me and you know that oh what yeah it, what, and what it takes to drive a track like this it is not easy no absolutely <laughs> i mean it, it's a it's really easy for me to tell these guys how to drive their go-karts and i used to do it and you're right but uh you know after you're out of the seat for a while you really yeah. gain a lot more respect for it yeah. but no like you said i mean we have these young drivers making really adult decisions out there i mean look at that pass we saw from yeah. the lead in the last race i mean <laughs> there have adults have been trying that move all yeah, weekend right. and have not been able to make it work yep. so so, I mean, these are this is the future of motorsports that we're about to watch here on this next race. And, and like I said, it creates a better driver when they do get old enough to drive, uh, get a driver's license, that they become much better defensive drivers and they know how to handle the situation. Yes. And I tell parents that it, it's, it's going to pay off in the end. And it's going to pay off with the friendships that you make and the people that you end up. Like, a, like we said, we're meeting people from years ago. I mean, oh, yeah. I see the RLV guys show up, you know, yep. and everybody used an RLV pipe in, in four cycle and two cycle back 30 years ago. And it was Rod <laughs> and, 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 and his brother there. So, yeah, it's just amazing what karting does for people and how it helps some people. You know, uh, I've had people, yep. uh, you know, move into karting and a, a father and son not doing too good. And then the father helping him, and then all of a sudden becoming a close relationship, bringing them back together. And, yeah. and I see that a few times. So, Well, you know, and it's like for me, I mean, I, I obviously have my close-knit group of friends that I grew up with back yeah. home. But, I mean, the majority of my friends that I talk to on a daily basis now are, are from the karting community, you know. <laughs> Um, I, a lot of the guys that I've met through, you know, my, my big race has always been the Rock Island Grand Prix. Right. And, you know, a lot of the people that I've met through that, that now race with us, some of them, some of them mm -hmm. work for us. Um, but, you know, they, you know, those friendships, they, you know, they're made at yeah. tracks and races right. like this. Right. And, and, you know, like I said, we're going back to G and J. I mean, I know Gary, who runs the track for years, yep. and it was great to see him again. So you, it just, those friendships just don't, just don't go away. And, and this carding, and this 206, has really, you know, I got to give hands to Bri hands out to Briggs and Stratton. They really got it right. Yeah, you know, absolutely. they got the rules right. They're not writing. They're writing what you can do, not what you can't do. Yes. Let's face it. And Steve and the gang down there are unbelievable. Oh God, <laughs> our tech staff is. I put them up against anybody in right. the country. I mean, right. and you know, that's that's the I, to me that's the big secret of our program is just making sure that we're doing everything we can to keep it fair, um, because these racers deserve it these right. racers deserve to have a, a an equal level of competition and, and the last plug i mean for this uh card chaser oh god really paying you know really giving these carters the attention they need that they deserve and that's what i said i mean 
you know, us calling the race is one thing, but now going live streaming to people out there, and Xander's telling me he's got a lot of hits, and a lot well, of people good. had signed up this morning, you know, paying the price to get past, as we're calling it, the wall up here. <laughs> <laughs> but unbelievable of how many people want to watch this race, and, and it's, it, they've done a great job here, and uh, that's, that's what these drivers need and, and pit crews need. Man, they put a lot of work into it. they got to be recognized. Nope. And it's, it's great for the sport, and this is, you know, that's why we wanted to bring Kart Chaser in this year is because there's so many right. other things, you know, ha having the driver interviews and having all these other things that Kart Chaser is just so good at right. that we wanted to really integrate into the event. And we appreciate CKNA doing that, and I know the drivers and the, everybody here appreciates it. And the people at home that couldn't be here and maybe have a, a child or a grandchild or, or a husband or somebody racing they can at least watch it and see what's going on no so. absolutely you know and it gives you know it gives everybody that that really good opportunity to to see what this is all about i mean i know personally at work i tell people yeah. you know oh yeah we're out racing go-karts right. and <laughs> yeah i, know, I get that they, they have no idea what that means <laughs> yeah so i mean this is a, you know a really good opportunity for people our families and our friends to understand what it is we do how serious it is why when why we love doing what we do right right and uh, yeah i get the same thing at work you know what are you doing this way i'm going to go-kart race. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, you know? And but uh, yeah, it, and it, again, I, I reach out to CKNA, hands out to you guys. You did a great job and bringing us back to four cycle karting, and also bringing in so many new people, and oh. that's what it's all about. And we're going to see some of those young guns coming up in the medium and light class. Well, yeah, but we're seeing them right now. <laughs> oh I mean, yeah, look, they, even they, though you know, right. even though we've got our kid cart class, right. which is you know our our least experienced drivers. Right. You know, look how close yeah. our top three. You could, you know, throw yeah. a blanket over. Yeah, it right, point. as we say. <laughs> no, great job uh, that CKNA has done. And, and, and let's keep it up. Well, yep, <laughs> that's the goal. It's not the easiest I mean, thing to do. You no, know? you know, what? It, it, it's a lot of work. It's a labor of love. Yeah, but, you know, is. we have a lot of support. I mean, obviously, you know, we've got our yeah. crew. We've got Steve who runs the tech department. Yep. We've got Megan who's kind of taken over yep. admin for <laughs> me because anybody who knows me knows uh, paperwork <laughs> is not my strong suit. Um, but, you know what, It's it, it really does take this big team. I mean, and then it takes – all of our families understanding that we're this is something we want to do. I mean, my wife's extremely supportive of the whole deal. Um, you know, my daughter's out here this weekend running, yeah, you know, selling yep, T-shirts sure. and stuff. So <laughs> it, it's it truly it's a family weekend yep. for me. Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is a getaway in a way. But for the people out there, they're working hard. And, and at the end of this weekend, and you too, I know. At the end of t after tonight, you just ah, I can rest a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, I think I need to yep. get up to timing and scoring okay. and uh, get back to my post. And but I see Dave and Xander uh, pacing yep. around. They're I think they're chomping at the bit yeah, to call this race. Get, yeah, so, they want to get this race. Uh, going. It was great. And yep. if, to anybody listening out there, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting your families and your racers out here um, because it's your support that helps them continue to chase the passion that right. they love. And thank them for all the sponsors. Absolutely. That we have. All <laughs> of our sponsors, Newcastle Motorsports Park, right. everybody, you know, I, I, I try to thank everybody all I can, but truly this is a, it is a huge team that puts this on and everybody does right. it. Hard. It's not one person. You're right. And right. Thanks to Newcastle Park, uh, Motorsport Park here. They, they've just really been supporting us. Absolutely. Every, anything we need, that Mike's there and he's jumping on it and he's getting it done. So yep. great appreciation there that they appreciate that we can bring something like this. And that was the same thing when we went to Pittsburgh. They talked to me afterwards and want us back, you know. Yep. <laughs> so well, and, you so know. that's what we want to hear. Okay. All right. Thanks. Good Thank luck you. up there, you yep. guys, and have a good day. Okay. All right, Dave. All right. I'm back here. Dave Mack, working with Tony the Toe. Mm -hmm. And officially on the track, and I, I just got a chance to sit down and look, Kick but it looks like Blaze Henry is leading over Spencer Height. Spencer Height is not leading, so I got to watch this really closely. We got the <laughs> <third part there. laughs> That's okay. why somebody lost the wheel <laughs> out there. Yeah, <laughs> we got a wheel stud and a wheel nut here, and, and I bet somebody's going to really miss it eventually. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Spencer Height is second. That's Blaze Hendry up front. Spencer Height in second. I'm not sure if Spencer got a bad start or what happened there, but hey, Spencer Height. Spencer Height has been fast all weekend yes. long, and right now running in second. But you know, these are our kit carts, and I want to specify, uh, let people know at home, they are only five years old, yep. and the oldest one could be only eight years seven. old. So se se five, six, and seven, I believe. I could be wrong. Uh, no, I looked five at the eight. rules. Okay, okay. It was five, eight. And, uh, but I think maybe at eight they can move 
or they can stay. But yep. once they move up, they can't come back or something. I'm not yeah. sure how that works. But definitely five years old, even five to seven. I mean, we're talking yeah. these are really young children, and you can just look at them, how they're driving here. They can't make their beds. They can't walk down the hallway, <laughs> but they can race race cars, open-wheel right. race cars, faster than you can drive on the street. So, so it looks like. The 31 of Spencer Height has taken the lead. I don't know why I'm showing Blaze Hendry. Um, I think that's wrong because Blaze is oh, leading. Oh, Blaze is that far yeah. out in front. Yeah. Wow. I didn't realize that. So Blaze got a good jump then, and he's out there. Number 19, Blaze Hendry out in front. Yeah, he's out there. Jackson but Reinhold's the, right behind uh, right. Spencer Height. That's the battle. The battle is for second between <laughs> the number 31 of Spencer Height and the 12 of Jackson Reinhold. We got Grant Hickman in fourth, Zeb Turner in fifth. Reed Hendry in six, Diesel Maxwell in that seventh spot, Jackson Brewster in eighth, Levi Scepter in ninth, Compitello, Liam Compitello in tenth, Riggins Barnacle in eleventh, and Will Fireson in twelfth. Those are your top twelve drivers, and to have twelve people in the kid carts is a big field. We're lucky we get three or four most of the time. Sure. Twelve is a great field. And look at the racing going on back here. Oh, <laughs> We'll pick that up. It looks like that might be, is that, was that the number, uh, I couldn't, double zero maybe, Zeb Turner, mm -hmm. number seven I see out there. Maybe I don't have that right number because yeah. I don't find There's it. There's Reed Henry, Diesel yeah. Maxwell, 141. Should be the blue card. Yep, there's Diesel. Right. And now the next it? one behind Diesel should be Levi Shepker, number 60. Yep, that is. I see uh, Jack Jackson Brewster in the mix there. And so uh, I bet you 99, Liam Compatello, and they get the halfway sign, huh? But look at the lead that uh, Blaze, Blaze Hendry, Hendry yeah. has over Spencer Heights. Been fast all weekend long. A great kid. He was pitted right next to uh, my, my sons and oh. stepson and uh, grandson there. And great kid. Uh, oh, the whole family is <laughs> yeah, just the whole family. Every is time great, I run right? into Yeah, them, huh? they're really nice people. But I can't believe it. Spencer Height maybe just didn't get off. I didn't see the start. But right now, it's the number 19 of Blaze Hendry. But the battle is for second between Spencer Height and Reinhold. And we got somebody off there, Oh, Dave. it's Diesel. I'm uh, pretty sure that's Diesel. Tough break for Diesel. He was battling for a position, and I guess this got a little tied up and fell off the track. So uh, tough break for Diesel, but he'll get back on there. You see the 463 of ja Jackson Brewster running up in ninth. He might have made up a position there. We'll pick that up this time as he comes across, the 463 of Jackson Brewster. But he's being hard-pressed by, I believe, Liam Compatello. Let's pick that up. Jax yep, Brewster moved up to eight. Compatello's right there, and so is Barnacle in the number nine. So you got a three-way battle going there for eighth place. So some good racing going on yeah. throughout the pack. But, I mean, Blaze Hendry's making it look. Yeah, look at this. This three-way battle still going on. And that's between Brewster, Compatello, and Barnacle, I believe. H Henry is the 18. Oh, Henry. All right. Yeah. For, I see 463 is Jack Jackson Brewster. Uh and that is Shepker, I believe. I believe that the front one, number 18, is Reed Hendry, and the number 60 is Levi Shepker. Wow. And then the 463, yeah, is Jackson Brewster. So it's six, seventh, and eighth right there. Yeah, they, if they made that front number a little easier, yeah, yeah. it's number 18, and that's Reed Hendry. Right. And I know all, all the drivers and, and uh, crew chiefs or whatever get frustrated with us down in the, in yeah. the scale line or whatever when we tell them we got to fix the number. The number we can't see him. <laughs> we can't see him. So Reed Hendry doing a good job holding off Levi Schepter and Jackson Brewster. And that's where the race is. You see it being shown up on your screen there. You see the 463 of Jackson Brewster looking on the outside, then on the inside. But meanwhile, Hendry starts to pull away in the number 18. So a good race going on for six spot, not even a podium spot at this point, but a good race going yeah. on between these three drivers. Here they come down the front straightaway, and that's going to be Reed Hendry, Levi Schepter, and Jack Jackson Brewster. And they, you see the number 80, uh, 60 pull out Levi, but he goes back in line. You, you can't believe the, 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 the knowledge these carters have, these young people, five to eight years old, doing a great job out there. So, and I believe uh, the two Hendrys are brothers this time. Oh, I, I, I just be. checked. Yeah, the 19 Blaze Hendry in first place and the number 18 Reed Hendry in sixth place, I okay. believe, are brothers. So right now, though, it's Blaze Hendry, number 19. Look at the lead he has. 
They had a blue cart there in the number 19, way out in front. We're waiting for the second place. Yeah. That's Spencer Height. Spencer Height doing a great job, not being hard pressed by the number 12 of Jackson Reinhold, who runs in third. So Spencer Height in the number 31 doing a good job of holding on to that second place. In third, all alone in third is Jackson Reinhold. So the top three have pulled away, and they were all kind of separated up front. No challenge, definitely, for the 19 of Blaze Hendry. He's so far out there. He's got no problem right now as long as he stays on the track. And that's what we've been telling everybody. It's not also about just uh, trying to win this race. It's about finishing this race because it's highly competitive. Sorry. Here's the race back further in the pack, I believe, for that sixth spot. Yeah, and we're seeing yep. that number 18, Reed Hendry, and the 60 of Levi Scheffner, and the 463 of ja Jackson Brewster. And I don't know if number Riggins, nine should of be Riggins, Riggins Barnacle. Riggins yeah. Barnacle no, no, might no. be getting in there. Riggins Barnacle has come up like three positions, so he's passed a few people out there. And here's that battle. So it's, and here it's comes really Liam six, Compatello seven, too. eighth, and ninth. And, yeah, uh, Riggins and Leon Compatello in tenth. So that's a good race for sixth place. Between the 18 of Reed Hendry, Levi Schepner, and Jackson Brewster, Riggins Barnacle, and Liam Compatello. So, like I said, it doesn't matter whether you're racing for front or the back. You're still racing for position. And these Carters, these young Carters, five to eight years old, here at the CKNA Grand National Championship 2023 season, doing a great job. They get the two laps, I believe, two laps remaining. Yep, so uh, we'll, two we'll steps, see what so. happens here. But uh, it is uh, Blaze Hendry way out in front in the number 19. In second place, the 31 of Spencer Height, the 12 of Jackson Reinhold, the 22, 222 of Grant Hickman in fourth, Zeb Turner in fifth. Those are your top five that could go to the podium. Meanwhile, Reed Hendry in sixth, Levi Schepter, Jackson Brewster, Riggins Barnacle, and Liam Compatello battling out for that sixth place. But Reed Hendry in the number 18 holding on, and we'll see what happens there. There's your leader again on the screen. He gets the white flag. That is Blaze Hendry. Here comes your second place, and that is Spencer Height and Reinholds. There they are running pretty pretty close. But, wow, wow, yeah, they, 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 I, they can't catch the number 19 unless something happens to the 19. So Blaze Hendry just has to drive a nice, comfortable race at this point. Nobody's pressing him. Spencer Height holding on to second. He could be hard-pressed by the number 12 of J J uh, Jackson Reinholds. And Reinholds <laughs> trying to make up the – there they are on the screen. You see Spencer Height and Reinholds trying to catch up. They're catching up to a lap card, I believe which could cause a problem for Spencer Height, but he's been fast all weekend. He knows what to do. He does get by him. Uh, there's your leader again. Blaze Hendry gets the checkered flag. He wins it very easily. Here comes the battle. It, it, one of those carts is a lap cart. Spencer Height does get second. Jackson Reinholds gets third. Grant Heckman gets fourth. And I believe Zeb Turner is going to get that fifth spot. Great drive. Now, here comes the battle for sixth. Let's see what happens here. In sixth place, Reed Hendry. Look at them. They're spreading out. They're going two by two. Coming down to the flag. We'll pick it up. And in sixth place, Reed Hendry holds on. Levi Schepter ends up in seventh. Jackson Brewster in eighth. Riggins Barnacle in ninth. Leon Compatello in tenth. Diesel Maxwell in 11th. And Will Fieries in in, tw in 12th. What a race right there for sixth place, but it's the number 18 of Reed Hendry getting it. Levi Schepter, Jackson Brewster, Bronico, and Compatello were right there. These Carters are not all far apart. They're running close, and that's what the 206 Briggs and Stratton rules do. Keeps everybody tight. It is a spec class right down from the air cleaner, the spark plug, and the tires. It is a spec class sealed engine for the people at home. These engines are sealed. These drivers cannot mess with the engine inside the engine. They are sealed. And if the seals break, there is nobody that can reseal a Briggs engine. You have to buy what we call a short block, which is not the full price of a full motor. So great job by Briggs and Stratton for bringing this 206 on. The, I know some people feel I can go to a Harbor Freight or something and buy the same amount of horsepower for a lot cheaper, but no support. Briggs supports this. They have a racing division, and that's what has been bringing Carters back to the four-cycle realm here. And CKNA has done, allowed us to have this championship race, this Grand National Race in 2023 here at the Newcastle Motorsport Park. 
So up next, that was the that was the kick cards. Up next, senior light. Now this is where the action's gonna get get tough. I don't want to say rough, but it's gonna get tough. So we'll talk about that later as they do as Dave does the walkthrough. But in all these classes now, they're coming up. I believe we go to the sixty cart mark. That's where we cut it off. Sixty carts will be taking the green in the next class, which is senior light. And as I was talking to Greg Jasperson, one of the uh, promoters and owners of the CKNA, along with Steve Vermeer, that the senior light and the senior medium, we're going to see some of the young guns. We got some some seasoned racers in there, people who have been racing a long time. But we're also seeing these young guns coming up. And they're just like NASCAR. They are starting to replace the names of the big drivers. But there are still some seasoned drivers that are hanging in there and going to give them a challenge. But right now, it, it, you got to look at the young drivers. They are really quick. Sometimes they still got a little bit to learn, and the seasoned driver could uh, outsmart them and take the, beat, take the position or the win away from them. But they're coming up through the ranks. And like I said, we've seen this. And this is what 206 Championship Karting is bringing to the community out there. And we will thank everybody who signed on watching this on Car Chaser. Car Chaser's doing a great job and allowing these drivers to get the recognition that they deserve. And this is Tony Dato Cirillo, and we'll be back with Senior Light. Sure was awesome. that
got him good. Okay, I've, I'm sitting here with Kale Zimmerman, number five, Kale Zimmerman. You're starting way back. What's going on, my friend? Uh, well, we had we had a rough qualifying, and um, then okay, we'll stand over after do eleventh, and I think we got a hard charger for that. Um, and then for heat two, it got ended it ended shortly after a red flag, so we we couldn't make much progress there. But then in the final heat, I made my way up to fifth. We were running really strong. Then my bumper got torn off by an, another driver, so that ended unfortunately, and I got uh, disqualified from the race. So this has been a rough weekend overall, medium and light. So just trying to make it through the race and hope for a top 10. Yeah, it's a rough weekend for sure, Kale. I know uh, it, it's a tough pill to swallow. I also know you're very fast, and I expect you to do great things. Number five, RLV, if we can get a shot of the cart over here, this is one to watch. That's Kale Zimmerman! Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. And we're going to cut through the uh, pits here real quick and see if we can find somebody else. And we ideally we wanted, and we got to do this so fast, ideally we wanted to get some front runners, um, but we don't know if we're able to. Can we interview real quick? What's your name and where are you from? I'm Chloe Drummond. I'm from uh, near Toronto, Ontario. Okay, yeah, uh, Toronto. Okay, and what was your name? Chloe? Chloe. Drummond? Yes. Yeah, okay, I know you actually, yeah. And Chloe, you feeling pretty good today? You're pretty quick? Um, we found a lot of pace uh, midday yesterday, so looking forward to hopefully making up some good spots in the final. Okay, and where are you starting? What position? 26. 26, okay. Wish you the best, Chloe. Thank you very much. Thanks for racing. And you've raced with us before. I know you yeah, have a number of times. This is your second year at Grants. Do you race any regional with us? Um, I did the Jacksonville series and I did um, Charlotte this year. Okay. Did you race Toronto with us at all? No, actually, we had a couple conflicting races when it was happening. Oh, so. some, other, some other series we don't talk about. Yeah. Who's the best? Who's the best series? <laughs> Who's the best racer? Chloe Drummond. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Chloe. And let's shoot up here real quick. You got somebody, Marie? Where's our driver? Okay. You want to say hi real quick? What's your name, Addison? I'm Addison. What's your last name? I know. Yeah, okay. And where are you from? I, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Oh, I, I never knew that before. Truly, I didn't. Okay. Very happy to have you. And uh, I-N-L-O, I absolutely love it. Many years ago, I asked your dad. I, I always stumble over the last name. He said, I-N-L-O. It's not that hard, right? <laughs> and, I mean, I, I've heard everything in the book. So. Oh, absolutely. But once your dad explained it to me, I got it. I've never, <laughs> I've never screwed it up again. Where are you starting? I'm starting 23rd today. Yeah, and how come so far back? That's unlike you. Uh, well, yesterday, I think it was heat two. There was a little bit of a scramble um, at the beginning of the race. Just trying to make up as many spots as we can. What do you predict you're going to finish? <laughs> uh, with how many red flags there were yesterday, I'm hoping for a podium this year. No red flags. Addison's number one. Thanks, Addison. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going we're gonna to move back, and she's got a huge fan club out here. We're going to move over here, and you want to say hi at all? Oh, you already did. Oh, yeah. What are you doing over here? Oh, who, we, who do we have? <clears throat> So we're going to come over here, and you want to say, hi, what's your full name, and where are you from? I'm Logan Ploder from Newmarket, Ontario, right in Canada. 
Boy, we're getting a lot of Canadians. How many Canadians did we get this year? Did you ever check? Last I heard was 69. What do you think? Yeah, something in the 60s. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, a lot. Very happy. And you guys pit way over to my left right now, and we call it Little Canada. That's right. And everybody's over there. Yep. And I bet there most beer cans on the property over there too, right? Yeah, probably in the Treadwell tent for sure, the BRS tent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably Treadwell, of course, yeah. And you feeling pretty good? Uh, yeah, not, not ideally where I wanted to start, but uh, we made some changes. And my first time here as well, so I'm still learning some things. Your first time? I didn't realize that. Well, congratulations and thank you very much. We appreciate you coming out and racing with us. No Whose tent are you under? We're under Pro, Pro Racing Ontario from Mossport Karting Center. Okay, and maybe someday we'll be there, I hope so. Hopefully. Okay, thank you very much, my friend. We're, oh, here we go. So, can you tell us your whole name and where you're from? Uh, my name is Brandon Jarscrack. I am from Reading, Pennsylvania originally. Now I live in Mentor, Ohio. Okay, Gary Lawson country? Yeah, and, very, very close. And I know, okay, let's hear what kind of chassis you got. And could you come over here, sir? I'm on a Coyote Zenith. <laughs> yeah, and do you like them coyotes? I don't know. Are they any good? Yeah, they're pretty good. We got the uh, top four locked out right now, so hopefully we finish that way. I think it's going to be a pretty good race. And at Brandon Jarsa Crack, I've heard that name before. Have you ever raced before? <laughs> yeah, I've done a few races. <laughs> He's a big deal. And we're going to just cut over here real quick. So we're talking about Coyote. I'm talking to you, my friend. Don't run away. Coyote, what's your name, sir? My name is Jim LaPerry. And what do you own? Coyote <laughs> go-karts. Yes, this is the man right there. This is the guy who builds and owns Coyote go-karts. Coyote yeah. Racing chassis, very successful. I know Tony the Toe is a huge fan up in the window, oh, yeah. and uh, he's oh, yeah. a big promoter, and he's such a homie. Yeah, such a homie. I got to listen all day long. About he's the best. You, you and your carts and your your, your <laughs> northeast people. And his son's a big part of the team. Yeah, too. Chris, two tenths. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And now his grandson, and, Hudson and Brown. And so. Yeah, Hudson yeah. Brown too, of course. So, yeah. yeah, Jim LaPerry, if you're considering buying a cart, go see Jim. Um, if you're way down south in the deep south, you can talk to John Seglum. John Seglum. Performance. Yep. Is it Seglum? So Have I, I always said it wrong? Him. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Anyway, Just don't call I'll, him late for dinner. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll get a hold of John later on and figure out if I'm saying his name wrong. Thank you, Jim. Thank Truly you. appreciate it, hey, man. Pleasure. Absolutely. Sure. Okay, let's find somebody. Where's Marie? I don't see her anywhere. We're going to cut up here. Oh, there we go. I see. I don't know. Can we say hi real quick? Yeah. Hello? Well, <laughs> what's your name? Ontario? Yeah, no, Toronto. Yeah, Toronto, okay. And we were just... Yeah. yeah. Sorry. The uh, American? No. No, oh, okay. I like them. <laughs> so, um... What was I, say? I totally lost. The director is telling me to do something, and I'm just not a professional. Um, so, where are you starting? Starting seven. That's very nice. That's all right. Hopefully, I make it through. Who's your chief uh, opponent here? The top four, five, six. Everybody in front of you. You're yeah. starting seventh, the front six. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> very, very good, very good luck to you, my friend. Where's Marie? Oh, right here? Okay. Yeah. What's your name? Um, Austin Jers. Yeah, and where are you from? Uh, I'm from Union, Illinois. It's a small town. Oh, okay. I, I think I've heard of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what you ask are you running? We're on OTK this weekend, okay. and uh, we've just been struggling for pace. We just can't sh throw in everything at the go-kart, and it's just not, it's just not really as fast as some of these other guys but uh we'll see what we have for the final but you're top 10 for sure i mean you've been consistently top 10 i know it, yeah okay um yeah and who's your chief opponent here um not really sure i'm just gonna try to keep it inside the top 10 this race um my mechanic dave burke and my dad have been working so hard this weekend it's just unfortunate end result but, uh, yeah, so we can do. good congratulations and best of luck okay and over here i know this face too okay what's your name uh, Brandon Jars Crack. And Mr. Jars Crack. Uh, Chris Hoffman, North Carolina. Okay, yeah. You're running a, a senior. And what? LaPerry. Okay. Yes, and sir. You're, you're obviously happy with it. You've had it a long time. Uh, no, not too long. Um, I usually only come out and run this race. Uh, it's an awesome event. Always love to come out here and have fun. Um, definitely a lot more relaxing than the two cycle side. So happy yeah. to be here. Yeah, and it's not that it's boring, it's just a little more comfortable. It yep. takes a lot longer to set up passes and whatever. Things don't happen as quick as in the two-stroke world. Yes, sir. So, and uh, you got any prediction? Mm, no prediction, just going to go out and do the best I can, have fun, and try to stay clean. All right, and I'm going to jump over here. Uh, best of luck to you, man, seriously. And that Jersey Crack is a big name. Can I catch you, call? 
Yes, you can. Okay, and what's your name? Colin. And we're in Florida. Florida, Colin. And what kind of chassis? PLR. Uh, PLR chassis. And do you feel pretty confident? I'm feeling good. Where are you I'm starting? Fifth place. Fifth place, okay. And you pretty happy. Predict. Yeah. It's another race. Don't have you ever won here before? I have, yeah. A <laughs> yes, lot. yes, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> he's absolutely right. Colin Warren, very, very happy to see you. Thank you. Thanks, man. Best of luck. Thank you. And who are we? Hello, I'm Dylan White. Yeah. And where are you from? I'm from Newberry, Ohio. Okay. Yeah. Tom Thompson Kart Raceway. Thompson, that's the second time I've heard Thompson. Yes. And uh, you're, you're feeling pretty good. Where do you start? I'm starting right there in 15th. 15th, okay. Yeah. Pretty confident? I feel good I can make up some spots. Don't try to win yeah. on the first lap, right? Yeah, who else first did you hear Thompson from? Um, I can't remember who else was from Thompson. Somebody else is. Oh, from. it might have been Henry. It may have been. Yeah, yeah I don't remember. So. Me and Henry go way back. Okay. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Stay safe. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did you check your lug nuts, wheel nuts? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm finding a bunch. And Scott, can you tell me your name? Yeah, I'm Scott Clayman. Yeah. <laughs> Novi, Michigan. Novi. Okay. Novi. No, that's Lower Peninsula. Yes. Okay. Yep. Outside and, of Detroit. Yep. Have you ever raced with us? Just a little uh, bit. About 100 times or yeah, so. I'm yeah. I, I, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. So, yeah, Scott is very fast, and he's on a, another one of them Coyote chassis. Yep. And who's, are, who's tent are you under? Anybody? Under my own. You're, oh, you're uh, independent. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But uh, you get plenty of support from Jim and yeah. John. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's really a whole family. Yeah. I mean, you know, we all support each other. It's, so, it's a lot of fun. So if somebody is brand new into karting, what would you recommend? What kind of chassis? Well, of course, Coyote. <laughs> Man, okay. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Okay, where are we going, Marie? Right here. Okay. I gotta stand on this side of you. Yep. Can you tell me your name? Colin H. And where are you from? Uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Are you are you halfway decent? Yeah, I'm starting 22nd. <laughs> <laughs> well, not this race, but yeah, traditionally yeah. you're very fast. Yeah, I'm starting 22nd. Hopefully, I can move up. Yeah. We got the car feeling better this this race, and hopefully, yeah, I can move up and get a good finish. Okay. Who 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 chassis? Uh, VLR. Okay. And are you under the VLR tent? Yes, sir. Or I guess you have a whole building. You don't have a tent here. But yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And are you their golden child? Uh, Probably not. There's some heavy yeah. hitters in there. Yeah, there's some. Who's, good who's your biggest competition? Colin Warren. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I knew it. Thank you very much, my yeah. friend. Marie? Yeah. <laughs> Until we hear the horn. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Tony Cart, by the way. This is a little bit different. What's your name? Elijah Gags. Gags and Pro Tennessee. Elijah Gags has been racing with us a long time. A number of years. Fourteen years. Fourteen years? Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. Um near Tony Carter. Who's are you on anybody's camp? I'm on MGM right now. You're on MGM? I'm I just, sorry. I just have a Tony Carter. Oh sorry, Paul and April. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm looking at the suit, I didn't realize. That's and funny. is it working well? Uh so we had some bad luck early on. We're making some good adjustments. We're moving, we're moving forward. So I'd say yes. Okay. Yeah, under MGM, are you, are you in their tent? Are you under their tent? Or no. Not? Okay. We're in our own. But is April helping you out? I heard she's yeah. a really good mechanic. Yeah, her, her and uh, Paul are helping me out. Okay. Good. They've been helping out. Did so. you get to see Axel at all? Uh, the dog. No. <laughs> oh, I'm infatuated with their dog. Over my. It's probably touching me. Come on. Uh, it looks like we got somebody over here. Oh, right here. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Tell me who you are. Uh, Keegan Clark. Huh? Uh, Keegan Clark. Clark. And where is home? Uh, here. Really? Yeah. You didn't drive far? Uh, oh, that's nothing. Do you go home every night? Oh, yeah. It's nice to sleep in bed. It would be, yeah. I, I haven't done that for years, so I, I don't know. But, um, and what, what's your guess? I'm another another old What's your favorite candy? Uh, Milky Way. Okay. Yeah, and orange, we gotta leave. Oh, no, we, we got one more. Who? Oh, we got. As soon as stuff starts moving, I'm gonna have to run for the sideline. So, Dylan. can you move over here just a little bit? There we go. And who are you? Dylan Hamilton. And where are you from? Uh, Florida. Florida. Camp? Okay. Yeah, and you're, you're kind of quick too. I know, yeah. Yeah, kind of quick. Yeah. yeah. And what's your chance? We got a MGM. MGM? Yeah. I have GMs here. We're really getting married? Yeah, two weeks. Congratulations. We, we actually have somebody has their bachelor party here. It's uh, Michael Wells. Yeah. Michael has his back, bachelor party here. Oh. Show us the ring. Oh! oh got one. Oh. Oh. 
<laughs> okay. Until the wedding. So the horn went off. I got to get off the track. So cool. best of luck to you, my friend, and congratulations. Seriously, is your bride here? Yep, she's right there. Okay. Just interview her real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the one you need to be interviewed. Yeah. Okay. What's your name? Alyssa. What's your last name? Firely. What's it going to be? Amundsen. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Good on you. Winners around here. <laughs> yeah. And this is home, obviously, somewhere around here. Or? No. Florida. 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 Okay. Yeah. I mean, you live near him. Yeah. Oh, okay. We live together. Ah, I know you're going to say that. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Good luck. Congratulations on the marriage. Good luck on the race today. And are you the crew chief? No. Are you a wrench at all? No. Did you check the lug nuts? If I needed to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck to you. Congratulations. Thanks. I got to go. Dave Mack doing Dave Mack things down on the grid there, Tony. He's been having, uh, I, I think he's having probably as much fun as anyone else here in the, at this race event right now, being able to walk and hang out with everybody before these races. Yeah, Dave Dave is always having fun at these races and coming up with the, the best questions that you can think of to ask the racers. But this is, the, this is a big class, senior light, 60 carts that take the green. This is where I say keep an eye on the young guns. There's a lot of young guns that have, haven't been racing. They just moved into senior, some of them. This is their first year, maybe some of them second year. You got some of your, uh, your regular racers, I mean, the guys that have been in uh, senior light, and they're out there. Can they outsmart the young guns? The young guns are fast. Their reflexes are, are quicker, but it still takes that race knowledge of what to do when it all starts. Oh, no, we got problems already off the bat. Yeah, the 337 machine started uh, about mid or uh, 45th. That's Patrick Lelevier, Le Le uh, one of the Canadians. Yeah, I, I was going to say French that Canadian, must be French. Right there. <laughs> uh, 45th was where he was supposed to start. That motor will not fire. He will not join. So we're already down one to 59. Let's take it through the front half of your starting grid, and we'll get through as many as we can before they get underway. Pauly Massimino having a fantastic weekend so far, whereas Tony's been mentioning a lot of speed, a lot of promise at these events over the years. He's normally ended up having just bad luck in one class or both, but definitely um, enough talent, enough speed to be able to run up front. This weekend, it's come together thus far, and Pauly Massimino will lead us to green alongside his PPK BJR teammate, a James Overbeck. In fact, it's another PPK BJR second row with right. rookie Christopher McKeithen on the inside and team owner Brandon Jarsakrak on the outside uh, for today's main event. Colin Warren is the uh, highest of uh, the oh. VLRs. He'll roll off on the inside and try to uh, go on a 1v4 battle, it feels <laughs> like, with that entire Coyote contingent in the first two rows. Alongside Colin Warren on that trackside karting services GFC is Austin Garrison. And I uh, ch chat with him a little bit earlier before he got onto the racetrack. He was saying, man, it's it's just so unpredictable because you're playing everybody around. You can have all the experience in the world, do the smartest move, and still some other variable, one of the other ten drivers in the pack, does something you don't expect them to do, and it throws it off. You go back to row four. Gianluca Savaglio on the inside, the Canadian, alongside Keegan Clark, one of the local drivers here at by Newcastle Motorsports Park on the AEM karting EOS cart. Uh, Nikki Palladino on the inside of row five, alongside former race winner Jordan Pryor. No green on the attempt first time around. It'll give us time to go back to the rest of the grid. And, man, is it strong, as we've talked about all weekend long and driven through. It's Austin Jers, first driver outside the top ten. He'll roll off in 11th alongside Midwe uh, fellow Midwesterner uh, in Ian Quinn in a beer alert for Mark Steele Motorsports. Jonathan Treadwell, another one of the Canadians up uh, in the front half of the field. He rolls off 13th alongside Adam Maxwell in that Amax racing machine. Dylan White and Parker Gill make up row number eight. Then it's Elijah Skaggs and uh, Scott Clayman on row number nine. William Adams, and of course we spoke to Dylan Amundsen, and even ended up Dave uh, was able to chat with Dylan Amundsen's wife, uh, or <laughs> wife-to-be, or no, I believe wife, uh, in Dylan Amundsen. Two, uh, two weeks. Two weeks yep. away. <laughs> wife-to-be still. <laughs> two more weeks. I knew it was coming up. I couldn't remember if it had happened already or not, but there we go. Two more weeks. Uh, for Dylan Amundsen to get married, and it'd be a heck of a wedding gift if he could drive all the way up from 20th and uh, get a trophy here in senior light. Beyond them, there's 40 more. We lost one, of course, unfortunately, Patrick Lelevure, uh, who was slated to start 45th. 
but 59 drivers. We had the last chance qualifier. Over 90 on the entry list. Paulie Massimino on the inside. James Overbeck on the outside. Boys and girls, let's go senior light racing. Down to turn number one. Everybody file it on through. And as we look down on the wow. racetrack, one driver a little further back dropping a tire, but they've all survived turn one, turn two, a little bit jammed up coming into turn number three, further back, up front, it's a big train, and it's the Coyotes that have slated themselves nicely by playing good on the opening start for the first two rows. It is Massimino in the black suit, Overbeck in the blue suit, Christopher McKeith in there in the middle in the all black suit and helmet combo in third, and team owner Brandon Jarsakrak in the fourth spot watching his drivers up the road lead the way early on here in senior light. Behind him, Colin Warren was there side by side as Gianluca Savaglio was trying to get by. Just behind this leading quartet, who, uh, as we've seen so far here in this uh, early stages of the main event, are working together nicely. Headed into the infield hairpin, although Jarsakrak is going to go by one of them. He'll go to the inside of Christopher McKeithen, passing further back. That's Jordan Pryor to the inside of, uh, I believe, Jonathan Treadwell and uh, Austin Jers. Treadwell dropping back in. Jers hangs on just beyond the top 10. Savalio right there behind Austin Garrison's GFC, but it's Massimino, the leader at the end of lap one, one down, 15 to go, Tony. Yeah, so this is what I'm saying. Paul Massimino, I'm going to consider him a veteran here, but you got Overbeck. These are the young guns coming up. Jossocrat, definitely a veteran. He's in the mix. McKeith in those right there. He's a young gun. You got Colin Warren, a veteran. So we got a good mix, and we can, I, I can't predict what's going to happen. I mean, paulie has been great this whole weekend. He had problems in past Grand Nationals, but this weekend things been going good for him, and he's been driving an excellent race. Kenny Holt Hold it through the eight, uh, the 16 laps that are that are continuing, and he's already in trouble. But that doesn't mean he's out of it, because you maybe don't want to be in the lead that quickly. But we got those young guns, and maybe they want they might make that. They don't have the experience that you got in Massimino, Jossocrat, and Colin Warren. Top experience there, a lot of veteran racing there. It's going to be interesting who comes out on top. Unpredictable, as I I feel, it's unpredictable. Jarsakrak now uh, around uh, one more here as he was fending off Colin Warren. Uh, actually losing one spot, sorry. got Tried to get around Overbeck as well. Ended up net up, net down the same. Still third for Brandon Jarsakrak. But James Overbeck, your newest leader here. Massimino second. McKeithen fourth. Warren fifth. Garrison sixth. No changes as we bring that leaderboard up on the left-hand side of your screen. You can find where your favorite driver runs. We'll show as many as we can, but you just never know when it's going to erupt in the lead pack. And that's where the spotlight shines on here. And like you said, it's almost a 50-50 blend right. of young talent here at the front and veterans. Austin Garrison, another veteran racer <laughs> there in six. Gianluca Savaglio getting uh, some years in the senior classes up in Canada. He's turning into a veteran. And there it is, veteran versus young gun already. Warren tried to get by McKeithen. He opens the door for Garrison to get down the inside. He'll try to stay wheel to wheel with him. Garrison's going to cut him a break, lets him back into line. And uh, Colin gave him a little thumbs up saying, thank you for that. I'll try again and see if I can do a little better. Unfortunately, Garrison being the nice guy, he's going to pay for it. Through the inside that time was, I believe, Nicky Palladino on that blue mm. and orange Ricardo cart. Garrison goes back in on Nicky. Here comes Savalio, Keegan Clark there. And that little battle, that little trade of positions in just two different corners awesome. is enough to cost him about four to five car lengths and put Austin Garrison in no man's land without a dancing partner and now need him to be flawless to drive back up to this lead group where it's four teammates, one, two, three, four, and Colin Warren's got to find a way to break up the swarm. So far, so good for all them. And James Overbeck continues to lead uh -oh. as we've got a big crash further back, about three cars collected. I don't know who we've got over on the far side, but here's a look at Austin Garrison running back in that sixth spot on the black and white GFC cart, trying to close in on the top five. And it looks like Nikki Palladino has gotten away from that group as well that are starting to battle for the eighth position and, and fall further and further away from these leaders because these guys, they are just single file, not wasting any time, not giving up any time, and trying to see how many cars they can drop off the end of the lead pack and whittle it down to 
maybe in a dream scenario for Brandon Jarsakrak and team fellow team owner John Seglum, a Coyote lead group only here at the end of Senior Light. That yeah. would be picture perfect for them. Yeah. What I'm seeing here right now, like you said, man, Coyote strong. They're out there in front, and they are driving as a team right now. They're really being careful, making sure they can keep Overbeck, Massimino, Jarsakrak, McKeithen. They are all on the same team and doing a great job now of pulling away from the rest of the group. It's going to be tough for Colin Warren to try to penetrate that. That coyote wall, I'm going to say it at this point, they look at them. They, have, they are doing what they have to do in order to get some, one of them up there. Right now it's Overbeck in the lead, Young Gun, Massimino. He's got the experience, so at the end we'll, we'll see. It'll be probably every racer for themselves. But right now they're doing the right thing and trying to push up and get away from everybody and make it a coyote one, two, three, four. It would have been a coyote. Man. If they had one more in there, it would, they could have five of them on the podium. It's going to be unbelievable if that happens, even if they get the four carts on the, on the podium. I cannot predict what's going to happen. Overbeck, he's a young gun. He's doing a good job, but Massimino's got the experience. Jossocrat, you can't count him out. He's got the experience. McKeithen's right there in fourth, but then you got the, 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 the wild card, Colin Warren. He can penetrate that group and really mix them up and cause a problem for them. So we'll see what happens. Or right behind, you got Austin Garrison right there too. Yeah, and again, for Colin Warren and Austin Garrison, they're not teammates, but the enemy of my enemy right. is my friend. <laughs> That's At this right. point, they are <laughs> unlikely allies if you put it down on paper. The only two non-Coyotes in that group, of course, Colin Warren on that TS Racing VLR, Garrison on that Trackside Karting Services GFC and they're linked up at the moment and they have completely dropped the rest of the field. I thought Nicky Palladino had a shot at maybe running them down, but not even no. close. He's already over a second and a half away. The leaders were four tenths better than him last time by by them gluing together like a train like this. Overbeck doing a great job leading, not making mistakes. Paulie and Brandon and even McKeith and as well staying right on Brandon's bumper <laughs> pushing at every opportunity as soon as they're out of the corner I mean you can even see look how yeah. little space Paulie's able to drive close <laughs> to Overbeck without hitting, hitting him in the him. corner and messing him up knocking him sideways that's a talent in its own as well to be a really good pusher to be able to stay this close consistently and of course part of that is easy when it's your teammate because you're normally oh, yeah. going out in practice sessions around right. them you might train together right. you know what this guy is going to be like his body language and how he drives and how he attacks the corner so you can adjust your style to him with lots of time whereas again for Colin Warren and Austin Garrison they've raced together four stroke and two stroke and a bunch of different national major races over the years but not nearly as much time on track together in the last probably 12 months as the four drivers have with each other in front of them down the front stretch this time here Dave Mack we're closing in on halfway. What's sticking out to you as you keep your eye on this one? You know, the one I'm watching who absolutely loves this race and loves this track is that number 111 back there, Colin Warren. He is just dangerous, and he just turned purple. He's back in fifth place right now, and he'll bide his time, but he is so successful at this race every year. So McKeithen has had a really good summer. I like watching him. Uh, Overbeck, of course, the Cincinnati kid is wonderful, but... I just got a feeling that Colin Warren is going to be uh, trouble for everybody later on. Well, yeah, Col Colin Warren's definitely the wild card, like I said, and also uh, 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 Austin Garrison could be playing in there, but they are playing together, and they're not teammates, but at this point, like you said, who's your enemy? And they're doing the right thing. The top four, though, are unbelievable, and they're driving very good as a team, and that's what they need to do. Overbeck, Massimino, Jossocrat, McKeithen, they are playing like just what uh, – what you were saying, that they're really, look at them, they're staying inches apart and then pushing when they can push. They got this down pat, and that's what happens when you got a team out there. It's going to be tough to beat them. The only one I think that can penetrate that team is Colin Warren on that VLR, and we'll see if he could do it. But he does need some help from Garrison. Austin Garrison, the last time he was here in Newcastle, Indiana, he was a race winner, won the U.S. Pro Kart Series X30 Pro Division uh, main event here back at the end of June. And, of course, that was his second pro national win of 2023. He's had a stellar year. He said that he's getting more seat time than he has had in about the last four seasons combined. He feels as good as ever at 24 years old. And while he's lost a little bit of ground to that lead pack right now, I'm not sure if it's going to be the, this division where he gets the win here today, but he's close. He just needs to hang on because these guys, they are dropping the lap times quickly. Even Colin Warren starting to lose a little bit of touch with that leading four-pack here because they were at a 112.9 oh, a few laps ago, a 
four last time by for them. Warren at a 112.5. Garrett or uh, Garrison a 112.6. As good as these two guys are, two you know of the best North America has to offer when it comes to superstar talent. And Colin Warren and uh, Austin Garrison of their generation. Unfortunately, right now it doesn't look like they maybe have as good of a race car as the four drivers in front of them they're trying to hang on to. And hopefully that changes here as we get to the second half of this one because we're right at the halfway marker. There's the cross flags from Jason Burgess to your leaders. And while we've got them, we know, of course, that the elite teammates are probably going to play nice with each other for quite some time. Let's take a look a little bit further back than your leading six here. Jordan Pryor. Has had a great charge forward here. Decent start from the outside of the fifth row in 10th. Former CKNA medium Grand National champion just a couple years ago. The Canadian is uh, up three spots net into seventh. Unfortunately, the bus has left the station without him. That lead pack is already long gone, two and a half seconds up away. But he's at least driven a, a few spots forward. He's got Keegan Clark pushing him. And if in some way, somehow Colin Warren can split that group up, start them battling and costing them tenths per lap, half a second per lap by uh, trading positions, maybe these guys could join in. But uh, not at the moment will we see Jordan Pryor and Keegan Clark probably get to the uh, top guys. Clark that time was only one-tenth of a second better at a two-second deficit. He'd need 20 laps. He's only got seven to get to the lead pack. And then, of course, Nikki Palladino back there in the ninth spot and Adam Maxwell in 10th. Here's a look. Wow, look at how much they pulled away from wow. Colin Warren in just the last lap alone. Another burner lap from that group of four. <laughs> Warren fell back to a 112.9. The PPK BJR Coyotes have dropped everybody else, and it is a dream scenario right. for the team right now. <laughs> for Colin Warren, this is about as frustrating as it could get because he was almost on their bumper, ready to maybe try and pass one or two a few laps ago, and now he's kicking himself for not taking right. that opportunity to get by, let's say, Christopher McKeithen One of them, and have right. McKeithen start pushing him forward. Because he, he's, you know, as soon as Garrison fell back from the pack, Colin Warren, was uh, he lost his safety net. In fact, Garrison's gone by him now. I don't know if Colin maybe has a problem, but Colin Warren is rapidly losing time. Well, I, I just think that the, the, the Coyote team is just so perfect. They're a fine-tuned instrument out there right now. They're doing a great job, and that's what they have to do as a team. It's been a long – I mean, it's been – I haven't seen a team in four-cycle race and team up like this, and here it is. This is how important this Grand National is. And Coyote's team here, uh, PPK and Performance, they're doing a great job. We'll wait to the end and see what happens. But unbelievable. Overback, Massimino, Jossocrat, McKeithen, they are – and you see them looking back. They know what they're doing. And they're, uh, Colin Warren doesn't have a shot, I don't think, at this point. And uh, uh, it's going to be tough for you, Austin Garrison. You know what Garrison. I think, Tony? Yeah. I, I think Colin Warren, realizing that he was losing touch with them, mm -hmm. may have purposely backed up right. to hook up with Austin Garrison and think maybe it'll work out better if he's the one behind the pair You're and right. he pushes Garrison back forward. Because, again, he knows early in the race Garrison was able to track them down by himself and latch yeah. on, and then he just kind of lost touch a little bit. So they're at the moment about a second and a half away from the lead and about a second and a quarter away from the back bumper of Christopher McKeithen, maybe. Again, that's it's a Hail Mary move yeah. from Colin Warren <laughs> to try and do that and, and drop back even further uh, and maybe get Austin Garrison and himself to work forward. But either way, it, it just doesn't look like they're making up any ground this lap. If anything, uh, the duo behind them, Keegan Clark and Jordan Pryor, are catching up to both of them. They might even be able yep. to get around them. And, and then if they become a four-car pack with those guys leading – Maybe. I mean, they've been chipping away. Last time mm -hmm. by, Jordan Pryor was 200s better than race leader James Overbeck, a 12.33 to a 12.35. Now it's a 12.1, the new best lap for Overbeck. Mm -hmm. What does Jordan Pryor do? He does a 112.11 as well. So Jordan Pryor and Keegan Clark, the two fastest cars on the race back, racetrack by just a smidge. And, man, if they would have just had a better spart start, Tony, oh, yeah, they, they would have been right up there. The start was so important here, but you got to give Colin Warren credit. There's where the veteran experience comes in place. He's given up the podium at this point. He's, not, he's dropping off the podium, not going to finish in the top five, but not yet. But I'm saying he was okay to drop back and hopefully push Garrison up there. That's the only chance they have. 
to catch that lead pack. So, again, a great veteran move by Colin Warren saying, okay, let me lose a position, even though it's, the, it's losing the fifth position, which we're, we're crowning the top five here, but I can maybe push up there and finally break up that group. The top four of the Coyote team, like I said, they're driving like a well-tuned instrument. They're just they're taking their – they're doing everything right. They might not be the fastest. We're seeing faster times by some other drivers, but you see Christopher Keithan went purple at one point. Look at these guys coming down the front straight away. Unbelievable of how they have have pulled away, and it's going to be tough. The four of them right now, all of them hopefully on the podium. It'll be a big win for Coyote to show four Coyotes. And back in the day, in the old Gold Cup days, Coyote was the winningest most chassis in Gold Cup history. So here we are trying to place it again now in the future, trying to get there. But as a team, I've never seen team racing and four-cycle racing. Here it comes to the Grand National, and there are teams racing. And this team is out there in front. It's going to be tough to break them up. A little bit uh, further back, how about some shout-outs for some guys that have had to move some hay and catch uh, a lot of drivers getting going. Back to that third group, Owen Lloyd on that all-orange South Georgia carding MGM has picked up 13 spots from 25th mm. on the grid. He is on the edge of the top 10, right there third in line on that white and black suit behind Ian Quinn and, uh, of course, Adam Maxwell. Both of them up a couple of spots as well some major movers some of uh, an update as well your last chance qualifier drivers the likes of eli fox david barnes who was ripping in that lcq he's up 31 spots from uh, basically dead last to 27th he'll probably crack the top 20 at this point it'd be a mega drive from david barnes the canadian to get himself all the way up there and uh, again he's in the middle of this group there's a look at gianluca savalio dylan amundsen barnes i believe is not terribly far back from them uh, he's uh, another about probably 10 cars away. Addison Ionello in that group. She's had a, an up and down Kale light Zimmerman. division so far. Cale Zimmerman in the number five there. He's up a lot of spots, 13 to 22nd. I so think, great run for him. I think also Will Lawler has made up a lot of spots. We'll have to go back here and see. Uh, well, 14 spots by Mason McRander. Good run for, by him. 19 spots by Eli Fox, who was fast but had some problems. 20 spots by Drew Such. Man, what we got some Reagan Saville. These are people that were probably in the last uh, qualifier, right? Yeah, Reagan uh, Saville got right. in on the last chance qualifier, one yeah. of the last guys to transfer. And uh, by the way, we've got a battle going for six right now. Oh. The leaders are headed through the Monza, but side by side further back in that second group, they have caught up to Austin Garrison and Colin Warren. Uh -oh. Keegan Clark tried to get to the inside, couldn't get there, but he did get around Jordan Pryor, and now has moved up into seventh. <laughs> Two to go. Here, given by Jason Burgess. We know the battle's eventually going to commence. They've done a great job building that three-second margin. Colin Warren as well. He tried to push with Garrison, decided, you know what? All right, finally time. It's the end of the race. I need to get back up onto the box. He's fifth. Down the short shoot to the horseshoe. At this point, Brandon Jarsakrak and Christopher McKeithen probably are not going to win this race if they stay where they're at. They need to start moving now. Paulie right. Massimino, he knows that. He'd probably like to be second on the final lap. But uh, he knows that third and fourth are there. They'll be looking to make a move. And, of course, James Overbeck, a former junior Grand National champion here, just got his first career KA100 senior national title last weekend in Cincinnati in, at, at home at the Stars Championship Series. Could he go seven days later and get a Grand National Championship title? He's already defending, trying to fend off his teammates. They all know each other's playbook. But again, the mentor, Brandon Jarsakrak, you know what they say when you're teaching? <laughs> you still don't teach them everything. Right, I might have right. taught you everything you know. I haven't taught you everything that I know. <laughs> right. Let's see what B-Jars can do, what Massimino can do. White flag here, Tony. Unbelievable. They are. This is when they're going to start racing. You got to give Colin Warren credit again. He wants to get up on the box. He wants to be on the podium. So he's done the right thing. He's moved into fifth. But he's not going to catch this group. He's not going to break them up. The only thing that might happen, as long as they drive, they could go for who's going to win this race but they got to be careful with that they can't take each other out here they go there's some moves going on now as we got overbeck and massimino and overbeck still holding on but what a this is that coming down to the checkered flag and and right now they're spread out well yeah and again overbeck doing a good job defending massimino followed oh, oh jarsacrack looking high and low mckeithen 
He doesn't have anyone behind him. He can open up. Colin Warren and Austin Garrison were hoping for this to start two laps ago because then yeah. they might have gotten back to him. But James Overbeck, look for the crossover attempt from Massimino here. But he's got to be careful about opening the door. Jarscrack's going to go for it. Leaves the door open for McKeithen. <laughs> McKeithen gets by. Overbeck, at this point, just low line it to the end. And uh, who picks who inside the team to push each other to the line? Because right. through to the Monza, to the final turn. It's full throttle from here all the way through to the finish line. Can James Overbeck get another national title? Here as they come. They fan oh, out. Oh, look at they fan out. Big run. <laughs> Jarson Crack points to the heavens. He's like, hell yeah, my team. One, two, yeah. three, four. And James oh, Overbeck man. is <laughs> now a grand national champion in junior and in senior light. James Overbeck. Holds him off by 13 thousandths of a second. And I don't know if he's more excited uh, than Brandon Jarsakrak because that has got to be the biggest smile he has to have. He has coached Pauly Massimino and helped him develop into the superstar that he is today. He's helped develop James Overbeck. He's helped develop Christopher McKeithen. All of those guys, protégés, success stories, their win, just as much a win for Brandon oh, Jarsakrak. Yeah. He couldn't be happier be happy. with a fourth-place right. finish he's in got, his life. He's got to be happy. And, and you got to give Colin uh, Warren credit. He's going to put that VLR up there next to the Coyotes. But the Coyotes are definitely going to outshadow anybody with four carts making the, the podium. And they did a great job, great teamwork at the end. They all went for it. Like we said, that's when it, it could take place. And it didn't take anybody out. They uh, tried to pass clean. Overbeck really had the pressure on him by Massimino. Massimino being, like I'm saying, somebody who has a lot more experience than Overbeck in the senior class. And he did a great job, but just couldn't buy, get, get by him. McKeithen took the, the, the cue and got up there for third. Jossocrat, like you said, can't be more happy in letting McKeithen, but he didn't let him go. McKeithen earned that third place position. He did not let him go. McKeithen made a great move and took that third place position. Brandon Jossocrat gets that fourth place position, but you saw him waving his hands just as happy as if he won this race. And Colin Warren deciding at the last minute, let me get up to at least fifth and get on the podium. So a great drive by him. Austin Garrison. Jordan Pryor in seventh, Clark in eighth, Quinn in ninth, Maxwell in the top ten. Owen Lloyd just falls short of the top ten in 11, Treadwell in 12th. Paladino, who's been quick, he ends up in 13th. Scott Clayman, a real veteran, a Gold Cup champion from many years ago, still racing with the young guns. He can move up if he wants, but he's staying in this senior heavy class, uh, senior light class, and I give him credit. He finished up in 14th. Uh, Salvaggio in 15th, Addison Ionello in 16th, Logan Ploder in 17th, Dylan Amston in 18th, there's a top racer also, Parker Gill in 19th, Cade Godhera in 20th. Kale Zimmerman drops out of the top 20, finishing 21st, Colin At Atkin in 22nd. What? 60 carts to take the green, and Overbeck is your grand, na James Overbeck is your grand national champion at the CKNA Grand Nationals here, 2023 season at the Newcastle Motorsport Park. Wow. Man, what, what a day for James Overbeck. What a day for, of course, for Brandon Jarsacrack Racing, Precision Performance Karting Group. They got a win already with Chris Carroll and Heavy. Yeah. The, uh, Coyote got the win there with Ryan Cassidy, and we've been talking about them a lot. But, again, this has been just a stellar weekend. you got to talk been about them. The <laughs> They've been at the front. It's not man. like we're pushing them, but they're winning, so they're out there. And, and, again, like you said, Colin Warren, good job to him. He was yeah. able to hold off Austin Garrison at the very end after getting around him and keep that fifth position for TS Racing and VLR, a single car effort, of course, for them with yeah. Colin Warren. He did everything that he could, just didn't have another dancing partner. And that last little bit of speed to hang with those guys in the front four was right there. And, of course, Austin Garrison held, holding strong, a superstar talent as well. Uh, puts uh, GFC and Trackside Karting Services just almost yeah. into the uh, top five podium, P6 for uh, Davey Florida's Austin Garrison. We can see now the drivers are making their way back over to the carts. They're going to head over to the scale area. I know that a handful of them uh, we'd love to chat with. Of course, you got to hear from James Overbeck. What a turnaround for him. Yeah. Last weekend, he's, he's had his only bummer from his uh, inaugural championship in the K100 Senior Class of the Stars Championship Series was that he just didn't get a main event win. He won the season off consistency, and he would have loved to get a main event win on the last weekend, especially at his home racetrack at the Motorsports Country Club of Cincinnati, but just came up shy. He's like, yeah, the title was cool. I'm happy we got it. 
but I would have loved to, to get the checkered flag first. Today, now, just seven days later, James Overbeck Grand is the main National event champion. winner. Grand National <laughs> Champion in uh, 206 uh, Senior yeah. Light. So an awesome performance for him. And now we look now back to some of the younger drivers as the juniors are making their way onto the grid here. And we'll be getting ready to send it down to Dave Mack momentarily. <laughs> I know Dave's ready to chalk here. Dave, let's send it on down to you, buddy. Have some fun. Hey, it's going well. Uh, we're just getting ready. The, the next class is coming out, and this is our junior class. We're going to get uh, start doing some interviews real quick. I'm going to try to interview Yeah, Here he comes, the Cincinnati kid. He's going to be my first one. I should ask him sometimes if he minds if I call him the Cincinnati kid. I've never asked him that. I've just always called him for a long time, called him the Cincinnati kid. And he used to do a very special move when he won the race, and his hands were full this time. But here he comes. None other than Cincinnati's own James Overbeck, just about here. And he's got sporting that coyote shirt, a bunch of coyotes up front. You want to catch your breath for a bit, Ed? James, are you good? Okay. So here he is, James Overbeck. What's up? Congratulations, man. A hard-fought win. Did you think you were going to win it right before the end? Um, I wasn't sure. I knew Paulie was really smart. I mean, earlier this year, I did some driver coaching with Paulie, and he taught me how to treat the end of a race. So really shout out to him for helping him beat me or for helping me beat him, which is kind of funny. But, yeah, it was super cool to get all four Coyotes, one through four. I wasn't really sure who was behind Pauly, but I knew he was behind me. I knew he'd work with me. So it was super cool to get all of us on the podium. Well, congratulations to every every one of you. You're all out of uh, um, um, John Seaglum's tent or no? Yeah, John's tent. Uh, everybody is. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Then I'm sorry. I keep, <laughs> I keep getting scolded by my race director here. Um, here comes Jason Burgess. Were you excited about that finish, Jason? That was Thank a you. great race. <laughs> there we go, Jason. Who better than Jason to tell you who's the best out there? So congratulations. Seriously, James Overbeck. I'm a big fan. Thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely, my friend. So we're going to get some interviews here as soon as we get for our junior class. There goes Porter Trudell. And I'm just waiting for a whole bunch of people here. Um, I'm going to try to get, we've, we've gotten a bunch of people in the back, which is very nice. We usually don't have the people in the back. We have this time um, because we have a problem with a uh, microphone system. It's wireless, so um, we're just trying to get this straightened out. So I'm going to try to get some front runners this time. And I got Marie, our promoter from Canada, uh, going up towards the front. And she's going to bring some interviewees over. And it looks like we have one right now. So we're going to stand right here. If you can stand on my side. Okay. Sorry, and then we can get all the people going. Uh, so, what's your name? Indiana Anderson. And what's where? Where are you from? Uh, I'm actually from here in Indianapolis. And your first name is truly Indiana. Yes, sir. Good on you. And what, what's your chassis? Uh, I run an Eagle, and the motor is built by Gary Lawson. Yeah, I know there's a few Gary Lawson motors around here, isn't there, in this neighborhood? Lots. Yeah, and uh, uh, Eagle is also Gary Lawson, and and right here, Comet and the whole business. Yes. yes. You feeling good? Confident? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident. I won the LCQ, so give me a little bit of confidence, but hopefully I can just push through. Had a little trouble in my first heat, and then second heat didn't go as planned, so hopefully, hopefully the race, everything will go as planned. So if you won the LCQ, you start 51st, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And and I just wish you the absolute best. Thank Love you. that name, man. Have you raced yeah. with us before? Um, This is my second CKNA race here. Yeah, at, at this track? Yes. So you raced Grands last year? I did. Okay. And where else? Have you raced anywhere else with us? I don't remember. And obviously mm. we have hundreds and hundreds of racers, but I don't sure. remember. No, this is my first time ever racing here in CKA. You're going to race with us next year? Are you having fun? Hopefully, yes. Okay. You're going to race Charlotte? Spring Nats? Maybe. I hope so. I'd like to see Indiana. Thank you. Take care. Very nice interviewing you. Let's see who Marie has. Okay. Can you stand right here? And you got to tell America, tell the world who you are. Peyton fan. And where are you from? I'm from Colorado. Oh, another one out of Colorado. <laughs> Denver, Colorado uh, uh, City? Yeah, uh, no, Colorado. like Denver, Fort Collins area. Okay, yeah. very good. Do you got a whole bunch of people out here from Colorado? No, very few, very few. <laughs> okay, you under a tent with anybody? Uh, ruthless Carding. Oh, you're Ruthless. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 I know. I walk by it many times. So, mm -hmm. And what chassis? Uh, OTK. Okay, a bunch of OTKs here this yes. weekend. And you feeling fairly confident? Yeah, I feel pretty confident as long as I can keep my head in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something Dad probably <laughs> said to you. Um, so, okay. Oh, oh where do you start? Uh, I start 43rd. Wait, no, 40th, sorry. Okay, 40th, good. Yeah. What's your favorite candy bar? 
candy bar, probably a Twix. <laughs> okay, that's a good choice. Yeah. I'm waiting for somebody to say an Almond Joya, because that's my favorite, but uh, nobody said it yet. <laughs> and thank you. here we go. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. And if you can stand on my left side, and you got to tell me your full name if you'd be so kind. All right. Colt Garrett Schlothauer. And where are you from, Colt? Idaho. North Idaho. Really? How many, how many from Idaho you think? How many you brought with you? Uh, I brought one from Idaho. Okay, so two of you under the same tent. Are you in anybody else's tent or your own? Are you independent? Uh, we're with uh, Midnight. Okay, and I'm not sure. I'm not real familiar with Midnight. Have you raced with us before? No. Okay, first time ever? First time. You come to the Grands from Idaho, first time ever? Yep. Way to go, man. What's your chassis? Uh, it is a croc. I don't think I'm familiar. Yeah, it's not on, on I don't see it on her, no. no. Um, is, how old is it, roughly? Uh, it, I think I got it this year. Okay. Well, I wish you the absolute best. I hope, hope the best for Idaho. All right. Congratulations. Good luck. What do you got, Marie? Okay. And this is one of my north of the borders. How are you doing, my friend? I'm, I'm all right. Just hoping to get this final underway. Yeah. And I mean, be good. Do you, feel, do you feel a lot of pressure? Oh, yeah, it's a lot of pressure just going, just trying to go through the field, racing all these American drivers that you've never seen before. Sure. Like, from Canada, it's like a whole new experience for me. Yeah. Yeah. Do you trust them? Them sneaky Americans? I wouldn't trust them. Not okay. really. <laughs> yeah. It's new to me. <laughs> ah, they're scared of you? Yeah. Oh, okay. They could be scared of me. <laughs> okay. How aggressive am I going to be in the what, final? What's your home track? Uh, Goodwood. It is? Goodwood okay. We were just yeah. there. You raced with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was that, at Cup Hurts. I, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and your chassis, did I ask you yet? No. I'm the Goodwood cart. Like from Goodwood Cartways, they make their own carts. I did not realize that when yeah. we were up there. They make their own chassis. Yeah, okay. they make their own chassis. Good. From oh. Marco DeLeo. What kind of engine? Uh, just the bricks. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Everybody's the same. Okay, it looks like, thank you uh, very much for the interview, and I wish you best luck. Yeah. And too. disregard my comment on the sneaky Americans. <laughs> Good luck, Ronnie. Can you, can you get Good luck, Ronnie. Ronnie. I'll take Sammy, yeah. Huh? Uh, can you tell me your name, please? Uh, my name's Ronnie Kloss. Have I ever seen you before? Uh, yes, a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. oh, like a black, Ronnie Clay. Number seven? Right. And where's home? Uh, Florida. Okay. Yeah, and you're racing under whose tent? Uh, we, we're not under a tent. We're under our own tent, really. But we're driving for Coyote. We have Coyote chassis, and they're really fast. We just got a new one, trying the 50 mil stuff. But okay. Yeah, it's always been fast. Absolutely. So. Does John help you out down there at all? Yes. Yeah. He's good for getting us parts, getting us yeah. everything we need real quick. John is wonderful down there. Yes. Yeah. John Seagum, Precision Performance Karting. You right. feeling pretty pretty good. Um, where do you start? I'm starting 10th on the outside. Not an ideal position, but okay. as long as we can make it through the first lap, I think I'll be all right. Is your dad the same name? Yes. I've screwed up both of them. I didn't realize there's two of you. And I, I called you both Ronnie, not realizing there's a Ron and a Ronnie. So I'm so yeah. sorry, Dad. Okay. I wish you the best of luck. Stay safe. Thank you. Do you got a, do you got a game plan? Um, I just got to survive. That's okay. really the main thing. Make passes early and when would draft. When would you say you're sitting about fifth or something and you're right with the lead back? When would you make your move? Second to um, last lap? I would say lap? either second to last lap and try to block in the last lap. And if it, if it just has to come down to it, then last lap, if it works out. Okay. No, we noticed a lot of people all weekend are trying to make their move on the very last corner, which last year was absolutely perfect. It worked. This year, not so much. Yeah. So, just a secret between me and you. Move before the last corner. Right. Make your move. Ronnie Kleis, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Ronnie. Sammy. Oh. He's got a big fan club. Okay, Sammy Tutwiler, what's your name? Sam Tutwiler. <laughs> Where are you from? Uh, Fishers, Indiana. So, you're close. Okay. Much. Who, who uh, real quick? Who drives the big rig to get you here every week, or mom, get you at every race? My mom. And she drives it fast and furious. <laughs> I seen I seen her smoking through the pits a number of times. Yeah. She she's not afraid of that. She's got a great big rig, and she's not afraid of that thing at all. What's your chassis? OTK. And let's see. I asked you where you are. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, she's a little nervous. What, where are you starting? Thirteenth. Yeah. Oh, that's a little better than I thought. Okay, good yeah. for you. When are you going to make your move, you think? Just between you and me, big secret. I don't, don't know. Don't let anybody know. Right? I'm just going to let it play out, really. Okay. Don't win on the first corner, though. Yeah. yeah. Be very careful, Sammy. I appreciate it, man. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I'm looking. There we go. And can you tell me your whole name? Isaac Malquet. Ah! For real? Yep. I, I don't think I know you. I'm glad to know you now. And where are you from? Where's home? I'm from Strasburg, Ohio. Okay. 
So. Yeah, and yeah, what's your chassis? I can't remember. Uh, Burrell. It is a Burrell. Burrell Art? Yes. Okay. And uh, is it running pretty well? Oh, yeah. It just <laughs> qualified P2 and starting fifth in the final, so it's going to be really good. That's very well, yeah. And when, when are you going to make your move? I don't know. I'm going to try and just push my friend away, and then me and him can just do our deal on the last lap Who, and try and... Who's your friend you're going to push? Jordan DeLeo. Oh, DeLeo. Okay. So the Canadian. Okay. Very nice to talk to you, Isaac, and it is Mel Kiewit, isn't it? Yeah. I kept trying to tell the rest of them people up there it's Mel Kiewit, and they kept telling me, no, it's Mel Cut. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you for verifying me, making me legit. Yeah. And I think Marie has somebody else. Come on in, my friend. And what's our name? Uh, Jordan DeLeo. Ah, okay. <laughs> Jordan DeLeo, and Jordan DeLeo, I know the answer to this, um, but you got like a favorite track that you race like every day. Hmm, probably Goodwood Carways in <laughs> yes. Stouffville. Yeah, absolutely. We were just up at Goodwood. And what's the name of oh, Stouffville? It's, yeah, uh, in Stouffville, Ontario. No, I always say Toronto. We just came from there. It's, it's Technically, it's not Toronto, but it's, it's fairly close. That's the ma first major city. Can you tell me something about Toronto? <laughs> every other city I've ever been to in the world, there's one big downtown oh. skyscraper in Toronto. Every few miles, all the way along the lakeshore, there's another another city. What's up with that? I don't know. I don't either. There's a lot of cities there. There is. It yeah. goes on for miles and miles and miles. So, yes, yes. Um, did you you must have fast all time lap at your track. Yeah, well, yeah. probably one of them to be honest. So yes. I I don't know if we said or if I let it out, but his dad owns Goodwood. Yeah, yes. So yes. and we just raced up there. We brought the show up there. Yeah, that was a that was a good race. Too? Yeah, it, it really was. So. Very, very happy. I wish you the best, my friend. Thank you. Stay safe. Don't trust some sneaky Americans. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and who do we got here? Brady Shad. And Brady Shad. Where's your dad? Does your dad work for a um, Snap-on tool company? Yes. Does he ever give you any? No. Ah! <laughs> Brad. <laughs> Brad. Okay. And so what you have here, you on? Uh, Merlin. Yeah, and do you like it? Yes, very and, much. And your is home track Road America? Yep, Road America, Elkhart Lake. Okay, which would be Merlin would be close by. Okay. Yep. Um, I used to have a Merlin myself back when I was racing, or Red Ball or something. Oh, okay, there's Horn. I wish you the best of luck, yep. my friend. What's your favorite candy bar? Uh, Hershey's. <laughs> okay, let's run. Well, there we go. Dave Mack, of course, rolling through, but the air horn means that it is about that time to go racing. Junior's grand final lineup, of course, another class that had to have uh, uh, a uh, last chance qualifier to set the top 60. That will lead us to green. Cade Yeager has had a spectacular weekend. He'll lead the field off alongside him on row number one. Uh, the only Sodi cart out of the 500-plus entries here this weekend, Christopher Wakefield on the black and orange number 811 completes that opening row. Row two's got, of course, Jordan DeLeo from Canada, who we just uh, uh, heard from, uh, a third-generation racer. Jordan DeLeo, of course, his family owns Goodwood Cartways and uh, uh, his father, uh, help uh, they normally come to the u.s quite a bit to race jordan's grown up racing in the u.s almost as much as he's been racing back home from micro to mini to now junior rolls off third after a good uh, qualifying ever brady shad of course we spoke with him on the outside and isaac Malkit uh has uh, the last time he was here two weeks ago for the rotax u.s grand nationals uh to try and get a ticket to bahrain to represent team usa at the rotax world finals ended third one spot shy of getting the punch to go through and that was kind of that's what's kind of been the story of his year lots of close calls for Isaac Malkit but that uh you know uh, the number of big wins maybe not as many as it could have been that's racing for you though he knows it his dad knows it Isaac Malkit also a third generation racer his uh, grandfather a legendary late model racer in the Midwest Jackson Young of course coming out of Texas will uh, get set to roll on the trackside karting service at number 807 Josie Chambers another Texan to the inside of Jordan Klein Landon Boer on the MPG Motorsports uh, Cart Republic rolls the inside of row number five. And, of course, we spoke with Ronnie Kleis in the number seven. Uh, there on that grid walk, he completes your top ten. Jared Clark from North Carolina rolls off on the inside of row number six alongside Canadian Nathan Dupuis. Sam Tutwiler and Jack Grote make up row seven. Garrett and Dexler, Mason Rick on row eight. Christopher Utsi, Shane Smith, row number nine. And Prevail Perkins, Truett Sweeney, 
round off the uh, top 20, the upper third of the 60 cars here in this field. 21st will be Lucas Theck out of Miami, Florida. Declan Black on the outside. Jackson Wolney on the inside of row number 12 and 23rd. Sebastian Day joins him uh, on the outside. It's Cooper Perez and Derek Wargo on row 13. Tyler Colshorn, Ryan Sukina on row 14. Trenton Moore, Sloan Sterling on row number 15. Max Frances Jelly and Emil Osmond there on row number 16 there, 31st and 32nd. It's Michael Robbins, Austin Johnson, Gavin Crutcher, Porter Trudell, Caleb Tarter, Nicholas Felino, George Ma, and Peyton Fyan uh, to round off the top 40. The final 10 drivers that automatically transferred in were 41st to 50th. That was Nicholas Capilongo, Jonah Good, Maximilian Spelger, uh, Alex Miller, Ryder Brown, Colt Schlotthauer, Adriano Januzzi, Alex Rakua, Paulie Hart, and Parker Fitz was the lucky one to get the last ticket automatically. And then the last 10 made their way in. You heard from Indy Anderson. He won the LCQ. Starts 51st. Back through Jack Blommer, Thomas Anthony, Reagan Kerr, Zach Henry, Liam Plate, Gage Shipley, Leland Anderson, Cammie Feister, and Cole Morgan. No and all six of them, or all 60 of them, will have to wait <laughs> one more, more moment lap. before the 16-lap feature for these junior 206 drivers gets underway. A bit too eager for the front row of Cade Yeager and Christopher Wakefield. And uh, I can see Jason Burgess just off camera making his way over to the side of the racetrack. Going to let them know, hey, guys, slow it down for me, boys and girls. I want a nice and slow start. Try to keep it as safe as possible. The later he can get them to punch off, the lower the speeds. Typically, the less carnage we'll get in the opening couple of turns. So experienced flagman, of course, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, hitting a baseball a little bit. They come at him so fast. He's got to make that split-second decision whether to start him or whether or not. And I've done that before here, working uh, club and regional events. Uh, Tony and I can tell you the thing that just really makes uh, your heart and stomach just fall out of your chest is the moment that you throw a green that you were a little bit iffy on and then a big wreck happens right. in turn one. You feel almost responsible as a flagman. That's why you want a guy who cares. You want a guy like Jason Burgess that puts yep. a suit on, wears a race <laughs> helmet, and looks as professional as ever. And he's ready, primed into hoping that they're going to meet his standards to throw the green. Cade Yeager on the inside on the black and white number 64. The outside, the black and orange Sodi card of Christopher Wakefield. There it is, boys and girls. We're racing down to turn one. Jaeger trying to get through on the inside. He does almost get clear, but Wakefield's still there. Now he'll get clear and safely into the lead over through turn three. And a good start from the outside for, I believe, Brady Shad. He's moved his way into third. Jordan DeLeo back to fourth. And they're all going to try and give each other just enough space, nothing more, to survive out of turn number four. And a couple cars got turned around there at the back, but the leaders are good. It's the 184 machine that was way towards the back of the grid, I believe, about maybe in the early 40s. That was 52nd starter, Jack Blommer, actually, that got spun around there coming out of turn number four. But Cade Yeager leads us through the kink into the green corner here on lot number one and a smooth start for your pole man. Yeah, so a great start there, and that just what you said. You know, you got to have an experienced uh, chief starter there, and uh, he's done a great job here today keeping everybody in line and making sure, trying to get them at least through that first corner without a problem. And uh, these, these are 11 to 15-year-olds out there racing. And like I said, the people at home maybe watching this might say, hey, this looks pretty easy. But it is not easy, and they make it look easy because they're so good at what they're doing. And they're anywhere from 11 to 15-year-olds racing out there. So we'll see how this boils down. But it looked like Kay Jagger did take the lead with Christopher Wakefield going into second, Brady Shad in third, Jackson Young in fourth, Jordan DeLeo in fifth, Isaac Malcutt in sixth, Nathan Dupas in seventh, Jordan Klein in eighth, Josie Chambers in ninth, and Garrett and Nexler in your top ten. Garrett's come up five positions to get there. And a good run by Nathan du Dupas, who's moved up Dupuis. to set Dupuis. I'm sorry. And did, you, did you catch that as well, Dave Mack? We oh, got yeah. another Malcut that yeah, went oh, through. Yeah, Not yeah, a Malcut, yeah, yeah, but another Malcut slipped in on that top <laughs> ten. Yeah. Yeah, uh, right. Nonetheless, <laughs> Isaac Malcut, a decent start overall. Big mover, like you said, for Nathan Dupuy up five yeah. spots. Uh, so he's already continuing to charge in that number 669 beer alert for Mark Steele Motorsports. In fact, I think he might have gotten another one and gotten into uh, fifth or sixth. No, there he is in seventh in the all red suit. Uh, the uh, number 669 beer alert leading that second pack as he got around Jordan Klein earlier a lap ago. We've got about six cars together in the lead pack 
Uh, going back to Isaac Malkitz, number, se uh, one se or, uh, number 75. Down the front stretch, though, for Cade Yeager in the 64. Looking strong, looking sporty for the Coyote, although pass it further back. Jordan DeLeo wants fourth. He'll take it away it. from Jackson Young's trackside karting services, GFC. Currently in uh, at fifth, sixth, and seventh, there are all uh, Mark Steel Motors, and he's very proud of that. He told me earlier, so try to mention it. So thank you, guys. I didn't mean to jump in. But. Oh, good. Yeah, he's, uh, he's had a great weekend. He's had a lot of guys up near the front. Of course, Henry Wheeler's at speed. Ian Quinn is at speed as well. They are close and I think could be contenders if the dominoes fall the right way come the senior media main event. One driver a little bit slower that just dropped out of the midfield uh, edge of the top 10 that's kind of backed the field up through the horseshoe. I don't know who it was, but they got kind of all tangled up here and going way back to outside the, the teens. And I think it might have been Landon Boer. There is the 316 off. That is uh, bad news for what looks to be maybe uh, one of the invaders. Uh, no, that looks like more like an MGM. Left the 316, rear. left rear issue he was uh, working on. We'll try and ID who uh, that may have been momentarily. In the meantime, back to the lead, though. J Cade Yeager, Christopher Wakefield has just been hooked on his rear bumper since the drop of the green. Isaac Malkiet has uh, been able to move his way up to Jordan DeLeo's bumper, get around Jackson Young. Nathan Dupuis is still there in seventh. But both 6th and 7th now are a little bit out of frame oh. from your leading uh, five-car group. You can see from Malkit back to Jackson Young, the gap starting to open up here. And unfortunately for Jackson, looks like a similar story, similar fate potentially that what he just saw with his uh, teammate and driver coach Austin Garrison's trackside GFC just barely losing touch with that lead pack. That's what's happening right now to Jackson Young in the 807. He's just out of range, and he's watching that potential Champion, Grand National Championship win get further and further off into the sunset. Yeah, I'm looking back at the pack and I see this number 15 of Emil Osmond, who's, uh, who became a Northeast champion in this class, running way back there, but he's made up nine positions, moving up to 23rd. He's trying to get up into that top 20. That'd be a great run for Emil Osmond. But, with, you know, some great racing going on here and a lot of experience, even though they are only, like I said, uh, 11 to 15-year-olds. Uh, but a lot of racing experience, so the top racers right here, right now. So tough to beat. The competition is at its highest here. And it looks like the top six, right, have pulled away. Top five, uh, almost seven. Now so. as uh, Nathan Dupuis closes in, but little gap there. Dupuis kind of kind of be the saving grace. There's that penalty flag, as we talked about with uh, Jason Burgess waving that one. Looking back to the 43 of Garrett and Dexler. He is all by his lonesome there in the eighth spot. Nobody around him. He's got two seconds out back and out front, unfortunately, the way things transpired here for Garrett. So without any major shuffling in the lead group, he might just have a pretty boring race from here on out, Tony, because yeah. I don't know if they'll get to him. Yellow flag's flying. Got a big flip over by turn number uh -oh. four. There goes the Reds. We yeah, are red. under red flag conditions as we've got a major crash coming out of turn three to turn number four. Looking over to check on the drivers here of the reason for the red. Looks like they all are up and standing, so I think we are okay. Oh, Derek, is it Derek, Derek Wargo? Derek Wargo, the driver that they uh, are still attending to. Uh, he was running uh, around the, oh, he had all gotten all the way up to 13th. That was just outside the top 10. Derek Wargo had picked up 13 spots. The New Orleans, Louisiana native had really begun to move. He uh, already cut up half the positions from 26th on the grid, and uh, he goes up and over and is the reason for the red flag here. We will give you an update as we get it. There's a look at the carnage. Lucas Theck involved in the 52. Tony Cart, heavy damage to his front nose cone. Wargo, you can see that steering wheel slam the pavement and totally bent the top of the hub and probably the entire steering column, and I'm sure a whole lot more uh, when a cart goes up and over. So... Uh, our, uh, hopefully Derek is okay again. We've got a great medical group here that have been working so hard to try and take care of all the drivers and everyone this weekend. And uh, good call again from the CKNA race director, Rick Folks, to say, hey, the moment we don't see him pop back up, we're stopping this race and we need to get him some help uh, immediately. So the medical truck's going to roll across the racetrack here while the drivers wait. And at this point then, we're still below halfway, so we are not over. Uh, Cade Yeager uh, we'll have to lead us back when we do get back going in a single file restart. Um, Here's Chris and Sarah with the medical department are going to get right on it. Yep, there they go, moving the medical truck across. They're going to take a look over at uh, 
at Derek Wargo and uh, see if they can make sure that he's uh, okay. So uh, Derek Wargo, again, the driver involved from Metairie, Metairie Louisiana, specifically uh, over in uh, turn number four with a flip just off the side of the racetrack. Kate Yeager, again, now uh, also red flag procedure. It goes back one lap, so any other passes that would have happened outside of the drivers involved in the incident, we go to a lap before, so we'll end up with just four complete. It'll be Yeager. That will lead us back to green. Wakefield second, DeLeo third, Malkiet fourth, Brady Shad fifth, Jackson Young sixth, Dupuis seventh, Garrett and Dexler eighth. Prevail Perkins had already picked up ten spots from 19th. He'll restart in the ninth spot, it looks like. Josie Chambers in tenth. Uh, Ronnie Clyes 11th. Jackson Wolney, it's showing on race here up 40 spots. He actually started a little better than that. He started uh, mid-grid. Uh, I believe uh, in uh, 22nd. So he's oh. still up a good bit. Not as many as Ray Ciro showing. He's up 10 spots in the 896. Uh, Derek Wargo again was 13th. Lucas Theck was 14th. And any other drivers, there looked like there were a couple other cars off in the grass over there. So I'd imagine a few more drivers like uh, further back will move up maybe as many as three or four spots. Because whether or not uh, you're the driver that was hurt, if you're involved in the red flag crash and you do want to restart, you do restart at the tail of the field and that's a lot of cars that you go behind now with 60 cars on the racetrack tony yeah that's that's a tough break but that's the rules and that's how it works and so uh right it's opening up some positions but some people like tutwiler and klein got you know they were back there that'll get them back up there maybe into the top 10 or close to the top 10 and it, it's just a tough race it, the competition is so tight and uh you know we hate to see these red flags go out but doing the right thing by checking the person out, making sure everything's all right. And uh, that red flag had to come out at this point. But it was, there's still 12 to go, so it will not be called. The race will not be called. And as Xander said, it'll go to a single-file restart, which will allow everybody now to be back together. And usually those single-file restarts are pretty good. You don't have to worry about somebody being next to you and all of that. So uh, it, it gets them off and, and kind of settles everybody back in because nerves are a little tight right now. They see somebody, they see the ambulance or the medical team roll <laughs> out there. So that, that, you know, gets everybody a little nervous and stuff. But basically we're just being safe. We're not saying this was a bad accident. Uh, it's just you got to be safe, and especially with the young kids, we want to make sure everything's okay. So, like you said, Randy Folks did the right thing by saying, hey, this, let's put the red flag out, let's make sure everything's good, and then we'll get back to racing. And I did see Derek Wargo standing up for a little bit and yeah. then decided to go back down, probably catch his breath or whatever, you know, and just uh, make sure he's good. But, yeah, yeah. he was standing for a, a short period of time anyway. So that's good. Yeah, they're giving him some water over there again. Like you said, probably got the wind knocked out of him for a heavy tumble like that, and uh, – Always good to see. At least he was able to pop back up. Of course, once the adrenaline wears off, then you're like, oh, yeah. that, yeah. that did not exactly. feel too good to have a 150, 200-pound go-kart come and land on top of me. But, uh, again, he is moving. He's good. Uh, they're just uh, giving him some water, checking him out. Obviously, they want to make sure to look for a concussion or anything else that could happen when you go head first uh, into the grass uh, uh, at one point. And that's uh, that's just part of it, man. It, it's yep. it, just as you've been saying a lot here today, Tony, about how difficult this racing is, that <laughs> karting is, is a very safe sport. At the same time, there is always inherent risk in everything, and there's a little bit of it. And that's why these guys running as close as they are have to have a lot of trust in each other. And, uh, and it's tough to get all 60 guys to fit on this racetrack, right. try to pass each other without having contact. It's just partially uh, you know, what will uh, naturally happen in it. So. Derek Wargo again. Good to hear. He is up and okay, ladies and gentlemen. Derek Wargo yep, is uh, all good, and that is going to be great news for him. His dad's going to make his way onto the racetrack with the mechanic. They'll get the cart up and onto the stand for the DYL Cart Sport Comp Cart uh, entry, and uh, we'll get the medical team off the racetrack, clear it out from some of the other uh, wrecked cars earlier, and we're going to get set to go back racing, ladies and gentlemen. Cade Yeager is going to have the field in his, command, uh, in his hand to take us back underway with 12 laps to go when we return live on Car Chaser. You're watching Cup Carts North America Grand National 7 here from Newcastle. At Precision Performance Karting and Brandon Jarth Crack Racing, developing winners is what we do. We're a complete karting program with support, driver coaching, parts, and arrive and drive packages at all levels. Trackhouse Motorplex Karting Challenge, Club Races, the CKNA South Division, the CKNA Majors, and a complete in-house ladder program with the BJR to move from 206 club racing to the highest levels of KA and X30 competition in the U.S. 
If you're ready to learn from industry veteran John Seglem and multi-time U.S. Pro Kart Series champion Brandon Jarzakrat, head over to ppkartingfl.com and contact us today. If you're a do-it-yourself 206 racer, then LawsonSpeedShop.com needs to be in your favorite spot. Along with building rocket ship engines, we keep a full stock of everything that the privateer racer needs to get out on track and win. Visit our website at LawsonSpeedShops.com for more. Whether you're dominating the pre-final or just getting started, BriggsRacingGear.com is the only place for official Briggs Racing swag. Place an order of at least $25 by October 15th and you'll receive a free gift. BriggsRacingGear.com Here at MPG Motorsports, our main goal is to provide the best pathway into professional motorsports for our entire team, drivers and mechanics alike. based out of Whiteland Raceway Park in Indiana. For more information, contact us at chase at mpg-motorsports.com. Are you a racing enthusiast? Drive Your Line is the Mid-South's only full-service kart shop. We make dreams a reality for those five years old and up. All racers start in karting, and we're the purveyors of fun for the whole family. Karting the Coast is presented by Drive Your Line Kart Shop and is the premier race series on the Gulf Coast and brings racing to Biloxi at Finish Line Performance Karting and at the world-renowned NOLA Motorsports Park. Call us at 601-667-0770 or find us at driveyourline.com. Also on Facebook or Instagram. Hi, my name is Brandon from Brandon Jarks Crack Racing slash Precision Performance Karting. I'm driving the 138 in Senior Light and Senior Medium. Here's the rest of our driver lineup. Rob Howden, the driver of the number 37 in Legends and Masters from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. Kay Yeager, number 64 in Junior, hometown Kewaskum, Wisconsin. Chris Carroll, car 12, running Senior Heavy and Masters. Hometown is uh, Charleston, South Carolina. I'm Christopher McKeithen, driver of the 19 and senior light and senior, senior medium from Gastonia, North Carolina. I'm James Overbeck, driver of the 48 and senior light and senior medium. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Paulie Massimino, number 40, senior light, senior medium, hometown, Chris Knockman, North Carolina.
Engines have fired, the carts are lined, and we're going to get set to get our juniors back underway here. Uh, still uh, a couple of races to go this afternoon. Masters is on deck, and after that, we'll end it off with the biggest class in uh, the biggest single-entered sprint karting class, I believe, that we will see in 2023. The only race that might come close on a single division going triple digits would maybe be the Scusa Super Nationals later this year, but those classes are typically capped at 88, over 100 right. here in senior medium. That'll end off our day with the best 60 of them coming to green. But again, a single-file restart uh, for Cade Yeager and company. He'll bring them on the uh, center of the racetrack, nice and slow, and this is pretty much going to be an automatic green. Normally, you don't see the wave off because we know we're a little behind, so it's up to Cade. When do you want to fire off and get the field going down to turn number one? It looks like he's fired and ready, and Jason Burgess likes it. We're back racing here in junior. As they head through turns one and two, Cade Yeager takes the lead and keeps it. No one able to pull out a line. Still a little bit of side-by-side -side action through four, though. Isaac Malkett caught Jordan DeLeo sleeping. He takes over fourth, and there's more battling through turn four as we start to get back up to full song side by side as the Briggs Juniors lead him into the horseshoe. DeLeo and Malkiet now getting by on Brady Shad. Shad back to fifth off the bat there in the Millwright Racing black and orange machine. Jackson Young is back in the mix, and again, we talked about eighth place Garrett and Dexler before the red flag that he was uh, in no man's land, wasn't going to go much higher than that. Well, that's why you never give up. Sometimes you end up uh, with a reset, and now that's what's happened. This race has completely changed. We had a five-car breakaway, nearly six. It's back to that by a hair, but it may not stay that way. Mm. Isaac Malkit from Ohio trying to take over the lead on Florida's Christopher Wakefield, or at least take over second. Yeah, good driving here. K K Kale uh, Jaeger uh, got the lead. Uh, Kate Jaeger got the lead. But he's being hard pressed. I mean, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carts uh, on that lead draft, and we'll see if the. I believe that is Jaeger who leads. Wakefield second. Isaac Malkiet is third. Jordan Deleo in the white suit on the uh, uh, barrel art for Mark Steele Motorsports in fourth. Little mistake there from Cade Jaeger. You saw the dirt get kicked up yep. by the Coyote driver as uh, they head down into turn at number five. He just watched, of course, the seniors on the PPK BJR tent mm -hmm. dominate senior light. Now the pressure's on Cade. He's all by himself at the front of the junior field to try and get him another win. Isaac Malkit wanting to do Ooh. the same thing as the father-son Viral Art duo moves now to second and third. Jordan DeLeo right there on the Mark Steele Motorsports car. Wakefield back to fourth. Isaac Malkit has done nothing but move forward since with a restart. He's now caught up to the leader. I don't think he's caring at all to follow. Almost, yes, to the lead. Mm, Isaac Malkin oh. gets through in the infield hairpin. Jordan DeLeo trying to follow on that Robert Kubica beer alert manufactured number uh, 219. He can't quite do it. He's tucks back in, uh, backs in behind, or 229, sorry, tucks back in line to third. Brady Shad still there in the fifth spot on the Merlin. Jackson Young right behind him in sixth. And then you go back, Nathan Dupuy leads the next group. This is going to pack everybody up. Cade Yeager wants to stay out front. He retakes the lead in turn one. Wow, what a drive there. But Malcutt really working his way. But Yeager, he I got him again. I think Malcutt's still coming back. It's not over yet. And it's so early on in the race that they're dicing this out. But uh, that's what it's got to be. But right now, it looks like. Uh, Kale Yeager. Nope, nope, it's Malcutt going, Mal pulling yeah, Malcutt out. Got it. Yep. Mal uh, Malcutt got yep. him back Malcutt. in turn number three. Kate Yeager couldn't really have an answer for that, and he yep. was just trying to fend off Jordan DeLeo, who's now been shuffled back to the fifth spot once again. Wakefield is up into third, Shad into fourth, and that's brought the rest of the pack back into it. In fact, this group goes back outside the top ten. Ronnie Kleis is there. Prevail Perkins on the blue, white, and orange magic cart is now up another spot as Jackson Young Ooh. climbs up on the rear of Jordan DeLeo. Prevail Perkins right there in that black suit, blue helmet. Prevail is up now, I believe, 12 spots. Great charge here for Prevail Perkins. He's on the cusp of getting into the top five. That black suit there right behind the red and white beer alert of Nathan Dupuy. So great run for Prevail Perkins. And uh, it's not over yet. We still got plenty of time. We're still not even at the halfway mark here in junior. But it might as well be the last lap because they are duking it out. Cade Yeager retaking the lead from Isaac Malkiewicz. 
He leads at the end of lap number six over to turns two and three. Yeah, you got to give through pre-credit. He's doing a good job in sixth place. Perkins in seventh. And Woldu in eighth place. They are all in the lead draft. Cade Yeager leading them down. But it's, it's so much action happening so early on in this race. It could get a little dangerous out there for them. They could really, you know, go from first to eighth pretty pretty quickly you're seeing a driver now getting shut out of the line they're closing they're not letting him back in and he's trying everything he can but just can't make it back in i think he'll have to settle for that eighth place so this is the freight train that they have going and a lot of movement in that freight train so early on but right now it is uh is jaeger back in the lead Jaeger leads, yep. Malkewitz right. still second. Right. He hasn't made a counter move right. on uh, retaking the lead this lap around. Christopher Wakefield third, DeLeo fourth. That was Brady Shad on the Millwright Racing. Right. Merlin getting shuffled wide. Uh, he falls back to the eighth spot, like you said, yeah. slotted in just behind Jackson Wolney, who, uh, again, uh, the uh, timing a little bit off. It is a good charge forward for Jackson Wolney from outside the 10th uh, uh, row to get up into 6th or 7th now. Um, not 45 spots gained for Jackson Wolney, but still a good amount yeah, very and good. Uh, a great drive in the works for uh, one of the biggest rising juniors on the scene in 2023. We'll see him in action next week at the U.S. Pro Kart Series season finale at Trackhouse Motorplex. I don't know how much 206 racing he's done this year, but he's uh, gone to it like a fish to water. He has picked it up really quickly and uh, the uh, variety of different racing he's been doing, KA 100 cc driving, 125X30 racing, Rock GP racing. He's uh, done a little bit of everything. And Jackson Wolney, even the Road Tax race two weeks up. ago, another spot there in that uh, white, pink, and purple Cosmic suit on the Tony cart. So he moves forward, move him if sixth, prevail Perkins into the top five. No changes in the lead pack uh, of four, and that's what's got that gap opened up as Brady Shad just tried mm. to get by and couldn't quite, and it really bogged his momentum, and you could see he knew it. That was a, a big blunder here to his race. Yeah, it set him back. But it good. Well, it looked like we thought I saw somebody Debris going out. Something. Yeah, something happened there. Yeah, a couple cars get together coming out of the infield hairpin. Three of them we've lost on the infield over there as the leaders come oh, on yeah. by. One of them looks to be maybe Caleb Tarter, and uh, I'm not sure who the other two are that uh, are together over there. One of them might be one of the GP carts, so... Uh, collected out and early, a few more here in junior, but it's clean for Cade Yeager and Isaac Malkewitt, Christopher Wakefield, and Jordan DeLeo. All four of them lined up, and, uh, and it's not all the same brand or team like nope. what we saw last race, okay. but that a four-car pack pushing together, well, all right, check that, not pushing together. <laughs> Isaac Malkewitt <laughs> retakes the lead <laughs> right on cue there for Malkewitt. In the uh, cell tower hairpin. Yeah, Mal Kewitt might have made this move a little too early, but we'll see uh, if that if they've been changing position. So it, it is going to come down, you know, again, to the last lap or next to the last lap. So uh, we'll see what happens. But Wolney has made some good moves. Yep, there we go again. Uh, the change in positions again. And uh, Cade we'll, Yeager going back on by there in that black, white, and orange PPK BJR Coyote. Yep. Another uh, quick trade of, uh, you know, moves and counter moves between Cade Yeager and Isaac Malkia and Christopher Wakefield just kind of watching this whole thing unfold in front of him, sizing up the leaders again. These guys are, you know, showing their hand a little bit of the corners they feel comfortable to pass each other in, Dave. But Christopher right. Wakefield, he's not shown them anything. He's learning because he can watch them by following, but he's not showing them his weaknesses uh, by being in front where they can see how much they catch him or not. He hasn't led a single lap. He's just been cruising in third. And uh, Chris Wakefield, he might be kind of a, a sleeper pick in this one, if you can call it sleeper when you run as high as third and qualify on the front row. But he hasn't made noise yet, Dave Mack, but he's there, right? Absolutely. And Katie Yeager is still up front in that green cart. Uh, just showing the way all the way around. Everybody's keeping in line. Any one of them could win, absolutely. Lots of laps to go. There's probably six and a half laps to go. So any one of them could win, but uh, you all got to get around Cade Yeager right now. I've been watching the 896 of Jackson Wolney, and he's been making some really clean moves. So he is a factor in this race, and he's up into the top five. And so he turned purple that yeah, time. And, and, yeah. and he turned purple. Right. I didn't even notice that, but he turned purple. He's been driving an excellent race, and I saw him. He was back there a little bit and had a dice with some people, but he kept it clean, got by them. So he is in contention. I give Wolney. He got up into fifth. So he is somebody that they might have to deal with towards the end of this race. 896. 
ja- Jackson Waltney doing an excellent job catching up to that lead draft and now staying with him, and we'll see if he starts to make a move. But you can see he's right there, and he can start to start w- working his way back up. Jaeger's done an excellent job. Malkewitt. Mal- they, they've been fighting it out, and they might have been fighting it out a little too soon, which might cost them. We'll see what happens at the end because they're not breaking away. Top three a little bit. You see a little bit of a breakaway, and that's where Wolney's got to make sure he keeps the driver that's in front of him, which I believe is DeLeo, to keep him in that lead draft so that he's got a shot and any one of the five can win this race. And they were six. Prevail Perkins yep. has started to fade a yeah. bit there on the Magic Cart. Now, uh, one interesting thing to note, we talk about all of them kind of being under different fronts. Of course, Malcuit and Jordan DeLeo, not the same team, but the same chassis. Uh, independent run for the Magic Cart of Prevail Perkins. But uh, it, it is actually teammates for the guy in first and the guy in fifth. While not on the same manufacturer, I believe Jackson Wolney, if I'm not mistaken. He's run with the Brandon Jarstrack Racing Team. Uh, ran with him last weekend at the Stars Championship Series race in Cincinnati. And being on an LN cart, that's the typical cart that Jarstrack uses right. in K100 and X30 competition. So I wouldn't be surpri- I'm pretty sure uh, that he's under the BJR camp as well. So in theory, Cade Yeager's got a dancing partner where the rest of these guys don't. don't. They're all on their own uh, in this group. You got the Mark Steele Motorsports uh, Kubica cart of uh, Jordan DeLeo, the uh, privateer Sodi cart, typically uh, backed with the PK Sport North America Factory USA Sodi team of Christopher Wakefield. And, of course, Isaac Melkin with help from PSL Karting remotely, but just by himself with him and his dad going to the lead over 60 drivers in junior. And it's Isaac Malkit, a father-son duo, a third-generation racer, leading the way up and over the hill to the left-hand kink. Yeah, these top five are really battling it out. And, again, maybe making moves kind of early. And there goes Jaeger trying to get back in the lead. And maybe, you know, he should have stayed in second, but he takes the lead again. He gets by. But here, here comes Malkut. Malkut coming right back. So we got a seesaw battle for this front duel, the race here. And they got to watch. They don't knock each other out. Jaeger's not giving up any space. Let's face it to Wakefield. Wakefield, try, look at this. And now you're going to allow uh, DeLeo, I think, to get in there and DeLeo to pull up into second place. So we got a race. And I said it could change. And I said keep an eye on Woolney because he's in the mix. And you see uh, uh, Mal- I mean, uh, Jaeger trying to, oh. oh, and he puts a tire in the dirt. So we got a lot of action taking place right up at this point. And let's see how they pan out. Wow. That was a lot of stuff going on there in the top five. So it kind of broke up the group. Big time breakup. Yeah, I mean, look time. at the next group yeah. that's caught up to them. Perkins is all of a sudden back in the picture. Look who <laughs> else is back. Welcome back, Brady Shad. There at the back there, yeah. the black and orange and gr- uh, uh, gray. As he's side by side with Nathan Dupuis, who's also gotten new life. But Cade Yeager, who's led so many laps in this one, is watching Isaac Malkiewicz with three and a half laps to go have a massive lead in the 75. And we mentioned Chris Wakefield, kind of an underdog or sleeper pick. He's still in contention. He gets a little bit of help from uh, Jackson Wolney, who just did get a t- I just did get a text from Brandon Jarsh. He said, yeah, Wolney's with me. He's under the BJR <laughs> camp, so we've got two bullets in the gun in this one. And of course, again, Brandon Jarsh in great spirits. What a great run for the team in the last race. Now, they thought the hope might have been Cade Yeager, but he's back to fifth with three to go. The hope rests maybe on Jackson Wolney to keep that BJR pride alive. In third on the LN cart, Christopher Wakefield has him uh, right on him as they try to make up ground. Let's watch this the next time by the timing loop. We'll see how close they've made up ground on Isaac Malkewitt and if they can get there before this one's over. The gap is right at a second. Well, Wakefield, if he can work with Malkut and keep him out there and not let the other three catch him right now. Woolney is right there. I said keep an eye on Woolney. He's been doing a great job. The Leo's right there. Cade Yeager back to fifth, and we know Yeager can run in the front. So if they team up, they can maybe catch the top two of Malkut and Wakefield. But we'll see what happens. Like you said, we got to wait for them to come over, and we'll see what the separation is and what the times are. Are, are Can they catch up to Malcut and Wakefield? Wakefield, if he gets behind Malcut and keeps pushing them, it might be hard for them to do. One thing of note as well about Jackson Wolney, starting uh, back on the 10th row in, 20, in 19th or 20th, that might, one of the, might be one of the farthest back drives at minimum today, if not in CKNA Grand Nationals history, that a driver's come through the field in the main event to get the win. I mean, that's a 20-spot yep. potential net gain if he can get there. But he's lost a little ground to Wakefield, who is gaining on Malkit. Christopher Wakefield 
four tenths better last time by. We're down to just six tenths away. He's now within the drafting window. That'll help pull him a little bit further. You pointed out as well a few laps ago, Wakefield's at the fastest lap of the race. This is, again, not any bit a uh, specialty of the Sodi Kart group. They're planning on doing more and more research and development, but their bone stock Sodi Kart right now looks pretty good with a 206 <laughs> on it because that yeah. thing is moving as they head to the cell tower. And, of course, Jackson Wolney, again, fully standard to Tony Kart there with the LN colors. There's Cade Yeager and Jordan DeLeo behind him. They were also faster than Isaac Malkut by three-tenths. So when second and third arrive, fourth and fifth should not be too far uh, more behind as we go to the infield hairpin. Coming this time to the white flag. Isaac Malkit trying to run out the clock here, Tony. He just opened this was the checker, but he's got to make yeah. one more. No, that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to run out the clock just to stay out in front. But Wolney, let me tell you, I said keep an eye on Wolney. He is he is drive Like you said, coming up through the pack, I saw the way he was doing it. He did a very clean, great driver. Wolney has is, is got a shot maybe. I don't know is, is the white flag will be waving this time around. Yes, white flag is out. And the top three have pulled away. The battle is for first and the battle is red, for red. Oh, oh no, red flag. Red, red flag. flag. They're giving checkers and reds. Uh. Oh, a big crash somewhere on the racetrack. I, I'd imagine it's got to be in the back section somewhere that we are under. Yeah, right. yeah, it's coming out of the cell tower, I believe. Coming out of the back cell tower hairpin. A wreck further back is going to shorten this one by it's one over. lap. Isaac Malkiet. Granted, you could say what you want. He drove a phenomenal race right. and a well-deserved uh, junior champion. And, uh, again, the way that he lost the Rotax Grand Nationals <laughs> chance at a ticket was also a red flag for a flip. He ended third right when he was hoping to catch the leader. So yeah, not his sometimes, fault. <laughs> sometimes you, two weeks ago he lost a race getting ended early. Today he wins one he that wins way. One. And he that's how racing back. cuts sometimes. Yep. You know, it comes around, goes around. Yep. Some days it's exactly. your turn for the good luck. Sometimes it's yours for the bad, the bad luck. luck. Yeah. And he still might have held on all the way to the end of it because he was still <laughs> wicked quick. Uh, but Christopher Wakefield ends up second. Jackson Wolney picks up a ton of spots, oh, a podium result, third from way back. Cade Yeager led a lot of laps, just kind of was on the short end of the stick of some uh, late race battling there to end fourth unofficially. Jordan DeLeo should get credited with a fifth place result and end up on the podium. Brady Shad sixth, Prevail Perkins seventh with a net gain of 12. A uh, big move for him up the grid. Dupuis eighth, Josie Chambers ninth. How about 14 spots gained for Sebastian Day? He picked up a ton. And, of course, when you go back through the grid, you start to see some guys that really made up spots. Yeah, you really heard from Indy Anderson. He said that winning that last chance qualifier gave him a lot of confidence. I yeah. want enough confidence to go 30 spots higher, <laughs> 51st to 21st for Indy Anderson, and 33 spots up for Liam Plate, who was one of the last drivers getting a ticket through the LCQ to go from 46th to 23rd. Great drive wow. for Liam uh, to carve his way up the field. Yeah, so we saw some great driving here again for the juniors. They did a great job, but a uh, tough break that it has to end on a red. We hope that person is okay or drive might be multiple persons. We're not sure yet. We haven't gotten word here in the tower, so uh, waiting to see, but hopefully everything is okay. Uh, we see the, the medical team has uh, out there, out there, and they're attending to them, so I'm sure we'll get word, and hopefully everything is fine with that because it was such exciting racing, and we'll wait to see what's going to go on here. Uh, but once again, we are concerned about the people, and it was you know the red flag, right thing that they've been doing here today at the CKNA Grand Nationals, not taking any chances. They see something that looks serious, whether it's serious or not, waving the red flag to get everybody and get the medical team out there to take care of the person right away. Yeah, well, uh, with the the way it all went down, it happened so quickly. They just mm -hmm. shoot all the drivers off the racetracks. It'll take us a minute to get to podiums. Take us a minute also to begin filling the grid up with our Masters drivers as we get set to go. So more racing coming your way here. Here's Isaac Malkit murking his way over. We'll let them make their way to the podium and then come back after this quick break here with your top five from Junior. Isaac Malkit, your winner, and of course, a uh, two-class, a uh, one-two punch to end off the day with Masters on deck and a 60-car grid in senior medium to round us off. Oh, man.
Are you a racing enthusiast? Drive Your Line is the Mid-South's only full-service kart shop. We make dreams a reality for those five years old and up. All racers start in karting, and we're the purveyors of fun for the whole family. Karting the Coast is presented by Drive Your Line Kart Shop and is the premier race series on the Gulf Coast and brings racing to Biloxi at Finish Line Performance Karting and at the world-renowned NOLA Motorsports Park. Call us at 601-667-0770 or find us at driveyourline.com. Also on Facebook or or Instagram. Got it. At Cart Eat Parts, we are your complete online aftermarket cart part superstore. From chains to bearings to bumpers and components, we've got it in stock and ready to ship straight to your door from our base in Ontario, Canada. Check us out online at carteparts.ca. Kurt's beginning to roll onto the racetrack now here, folks, as uh, the Masters drivers slowly fill the grid up uh, on. And there's a look down at the junior podium as the pictures get staged here for your top five. There's a look at all of them. Of course, Isaac Malkit, great performance there. And uh, uh, Ike uh, still has yet to hit that growth spurt. He's still about probably a foot shorter than everybody around him, but hasn't uh, shied him at all from getting his elbows out and uh, uh, putting on a great, great run here. Isaac Malkiewicz, uh your winner over Christopher Wakefield, Jackson Woolney, Cade Yeager, and Jordan DeLeo makes that long trip uh, back up to Canada a little bit easier here this weekend with a fifth-place result on that uh, Mark Steele Motorsports uh, Bureau Art machine. So it's a Bureau Art 1 and 5 with the way it ended up. Isaac Malkiewicz breaks up the uh, uh, ma uh, major American manufacturers with one of the major, one of the biggest three in the world between Beryl Art, uh, CRG, and OTK, and gets them a win in the 206 Junior Class. Down for uh, our uh, Masters drivers, we'll see where we can find Dave Mack. I know he's looking to try and uh, make sure that he's got everything lined up. Dave, let's send it down to you and David Land as well behind the camera because it's time to start talking here with some more drivers and some more friends and family down on the grid. Okay, welcome back everybody. I am down on the hot grid here and I've got a really special person. This young lady has been my trophy girl a number of times over the year. And what's your name? Can you say it real loud, honey? Harley. Harley Dittmer. And where's home? I bet it's right, right with mom and dad, isn't it? Hmm? Yes, that's yes, okay. Davenport, Iowa. And who's your dad? Who's your favorite racer in the world? My dad. And what's his name? Michael Dittmer. King Michael Dittmer, right? <laughs> isn't he the king? Number 77? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you've helped me out a number of times uh, being my trophy queen, haven't you? Thank you very much, Harley. I appreciate it. Michael Dittmer's daughter, Harley Dittmer, and she really has helped me out a number of times. At the very last second, I've asked her for some help. So uh, thank you, Harley. Yeah, thank you very much, Mom and Dad. Yeah, you can stand on my side here. Okay. So can you tell me? Yeah, Tiffany Kelly. And, oh, Tiffany, I didn't realize that was you. Okay, so Tiffany and your husband's here? Yes. And yes. I, I've forgotten his name. Uh, Justin Kelly. Justin? Yes. Okay, so I did Rock Island Grand Prix last year uh, on that, and her and her husband both raced the shifter class, and you guys were relatively new at that time to racing, if I remember right. Yes, and then we've only done shifter carts since, so this is actually yeah. our first time ever doing LO206. First time ever doing 206. Yeah. Tiffany Kelly, where's home? I think it's Nebraska. Ohio, some Nebraska. Nebraska, okay. Yeah. So that's highly unusual, too, but... Um, are you fairly successful? I didn't realize it was you, so I wasn't no, paying attention. No, no worries. Um, I've, I've, yeah, 
<laughs> I've been kind of trying to catch up, and I go to the back, go catch up. But it's been an experience. It's a different sort of driving, so it's been fun, though. It's, it's been a lot of carts. Definitely different. How, how, how did your season go with uh, Shifter Kart? Um, I took second in the championship for Rock. Well, fantastic. Yeah. And where do you race in Nebraska? I can't even imagine. Shifter uh, Kart in Nebraska. We don't race in Nebraska. We actually, this is one of the tracks we come to most of the time to practice. So we love this track. Indy's the best track ever. So. Okay, how far is it from home to here? Uh, Ten hours. Yeah, okay, so you're yeah. pretty dedicated. Uh -huh. And you're both still racing? Yes, yes. I am so happy to see you, Tiffany. I didn't realize that was you when no I saw way. you walking by. So. Okay, very nice, nice to see point. you, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Come over here, my friend. Okay, and can you tell me your full name? Isaac Malquith. Have I ever seen? Oh, you just won. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Um, you're, everybody clean? Everybody safe? Everybody okay as far as you know? Yeah, I think everybody's okay, but my buddy Derek Wargo, I seen at the beginning he was out of the go-kart, so I hope he's okay. But, yeah, everything else looked good. Yeah, okay. I, I'm really, really worried about Derek, but yeah, okay. And you won that race, and uh, you won it under red, but you still won it, and you probably were going to win anyway, right? Yeah, I, I, I had to work for it as hard as I could, so yeah, I, it was going to be tough, but I knew I could win the race. Yeah, absolutely. That's good confidence. Hey, what do you like better, the mountains or the beach? I'd have to go with the mountains. The mountains? Good on you, Isaac. Congratulations. You are the Grand National Champion, Cup Cards North America 7 Grand National Champion. Way to go, my friend. And we've got somebody else here we're going to interview, and can you tell us your full name? Curtis Crawford. And where are you from? I'm from Avon, Indiana. So that's close, right? Yeah. Isn't that northwest suburb, I think, by Brownsburg, right? Yeah, south of Brownsburg, my, about an hour away. Oh, I thought it was right next door. Yeah, my kids south. are Brownsburg, so. Yeah. Avon. Okay. Just south. Okay. I, was, I was a bulldog, though. Oh, I, I think that was that's their team, right? Yep. Brownsburg. Yep. Okay, yep. yeah. And what, what chassis are you running? I'm running a 2015 Eagle. 2015? 15. So that's, let me do my math. Five, six, seven, like eight years old. Something like that, yeah. About eight. And you're plenty happy. Did you buy it from Gary or from Mark? Uh, or? No, from a previous racer. So from, yep. Okay, and, and you're plenty happy with it? Yeah, absolutely. Who, who's your engine? Uh, Gary. Gary Law. Yeah, I figured yeah. as much. Okay. Yep. Well, very nice to see you, man. Thanks Thank for you. coming up. Where are you starting? Uh, 33rd. Okay. You got a lot of confidence? Absolutely. I'm going to go top 20 minimum. Ah, my man. <laughs> Way to go. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry? We still got audio, so we're going to carry on. Yeah. Okay. Um, where is our camera? Just do audio. Oh, we only have audio. Okay. So I'm going to interview you. What's your name? Your full name? James Tatad. And uh, where are you from? Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York. Tony, one of yours right here. Yeah. Tony. Yeah, yeah, all right. Tim and, and Tim, yeah. I'm on Tim's team, yeah. Tim, Tim is a little bit in the suburbs from Brooklyn, <laughs> unlike you. I've been to his house. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, where are you starting? I'm on 27th. Okay, and you feel pretty good? I feel pretty good. It's my okay. first national race, but yeah. um, I'm loving the experience. Yeah. Hey, you didn't you didn't race with us last year, obviously. No, no it's your first, first national. national okay. Race ever. Yeah. So tell me, tell me about Brooklyn. Is it really as bad as us Midwesterners always here on TV? I'm loving it out here. I'll, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> we got another convert, Tony. He's moving to the Midwest. <laughs> Thank you very much. I oh. wish you the best, my Appreciate friend. Appreciate it, Dave. Good luck. Oh, okay. Um, hey. And we've got a Burrell Art Racer. Obviously, you're wearing the correct shirt, right? That's right. Okay, yeah, we got a Burrell Art Racer. Where are you from? Uh, Knowlesville, Indiana. Okay, and what's your name? I'm sorry, I should ask that first. Casey Stahl. Casey Stahl, okay. And, oh, I lost my camera. I keep looking for it. I can just talk to you. Okay. Um, and where are you starting? What position? Uh, 14th now. Oh, that's very good. Yeah. Okay. And you feel pretty good? You think you're going to win? No. Oh. I've got no illusions. <laughs> you think you're going to be in the top 10? That's the goal. Okay. Is this your home track? Yeah. Okay. How much, how much do you race here? How many times? 14 times a year. Okay. Is that that KRA, mm -hmm. that club? Okay. Yep. Well, I wish you the best, my friend. Thanks, Dave. Good luck. Take care. Who, who did your engines? Gary? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I figured as much. Yep. Okay. Okay, and who do we have here? Ron Kleiss. Oh! Ron! <laughs> you got that, a big fan club. There, I, there I we got, got a camera over there. Okay. So we got a camera over here finally. Uh. Um, and what, oh, what's your chassis? Uh, I drive on a Coyote, which has been really fast, way faster than me all weekend. <laughs> the, the Coyote's been faster than you? Yeah, I've, uh -oh. been, I've been having some bad luck. I broke a seat strut uh, one day, and then the seat dragged. I had to get the seat. I didn't realize that the other side broke. I had to weld that the next day. Then I had left rear go down in the heat when I was running up pretty good. So I have had some bad luck. Uh, it's not the chassis's fault at all. It's just strictly the driver. I'm waiting for him to show up. Yeah, <laughs> well, I think it's about time. <laughs> you better find that driver soon. It's perfect time for him to show up because I'm in the back and, boy, I need him. If you do win, how are you going to celebrate? 
I'm going to Disney. There you go, my friend. <laughs> okay. Horn honks, I got to get off the track before I get run over. So let's take you to the starting lineup here for the Masters main event. Eric Fagan uh, was the best at the end of the heat races by a fair bit over Mark Steele, who will be uh, joining him on the outside of row number one. Jeff Shaw on the VLR starts on the inside of row two alongside Todd Barron. And then it's Chris Giamara and Jamie Bradford on row three. Ben Cruttenden put it on the pole in qualifying. He'll start seventh after all the heat points were tallied alongside Michael Dittmer in the number 77. David Cole starts on the inside here of row number five with one of his best efforts in a couple of years of the part-time karting schedule that the eKartingNews.com boys were able to do. Saw Rob Howden have a good starting spot in 11th in the Legends class earlier today. That was going to be his major focus, although he's entered in Masters as well and will race this final from further back on the grid. But unfortunately, Rob kind of got the short end of the stick on the start and lost a bunch of spots and, and wasn't as uh, close to the front as he could have been. Hopefully, better luck for DC and David Cole can maybe just move four spots higher and get a podium in the same way Rob was able to for the Team EKN crew in 2022. To his outside will be Sean O'Shea in the 164. We have problems off the grid, though. One driver was not able to fire. It's one of the Comet Eagles, the 632 machine. I'm trying to see who that, that's Eric Bond. He was slated to start 43rd, tail end Charlie for Eric Bond, or near the tail end of the uh, 49 or 50 drivers we've got, 43rd for Eric Bond. He will not join us for the main event, unfortunately. So bad news for Eric Bond, and that Comet Eagle will not race the main. But uh, we are set and ready to uh, get underway with everybody else at the front of the field, going back to Matthew Grunholtz and J.D. Gunn on row six, Amber Flint and Kevin May on row seven. Then you have uh, Casey Stahl and John Price on row eight. Ryan Cassidy and Bill McLaughlin Jr. on row number nine. Dan Breitenstein and Stephen McAvoy round off the top half uh, or top 20 and the upper half of the field with Tim Stifle there in fifth and the number five and 21st. Jason Rowe, 22nd. Tim Hannon's got a long way to go forward here in Masters. Rolls off 23rd after having a rough run in a couple of heat races. And then it's Ian McIntyre, Chris Worley, the top 25. Michael Welsh, Chuck Maitland. James uh, Tatad, Chris Rupp, and Todd Overmeyer Sr., the top 30, 50, CRG, LSR Motorsports, Masters Drivers, strong down the front stretch as we get set to go. Jason Burgess staring him down. It looks like it should be a good start. They want to keep him in the tram lanes? No, we're going to wave him around again. No green on attempt number one. They want to show them, I believe, I guess uh, I would imagine on that case, because they didn't look like they were preparing for a start. I don't know if it was just an early punch off or they were wanting to keep them all in the tram lines. Again, that's what the Cup Carts North America rule set. A little bit different uh, than a lot of the other race series that we cover. Uh, one of the major differences is the tram line rules here. You have to stay in those tram lines until they end, not until the green flag waves, where if you're further back, you can break formation. That's again to try and keep that four and five wide racing that the midfield will get down by turn number one and keep them more two abreast with only the same hundred feet to fan out that the front row gets. So it's so far kept turn one pretty good uh, for the most part. A couple of spins over the course of the weekend, but the bigger stack ups have been more so turn four and a little bit in turns two and three by the time they finally have gotten a little bit faster and spread apart. Outside the top 30, your final 20 starters. Matthew Burpo and Rob Howden roll off on row number 16. Joe DeBover and Curtis Crawford on row uh, number 17. Sean Croskery and Jorge Ruiz, 35th and 36th. Ron Kleis, 
Father to Ronnie Clyes there, 37th. Todd Davis at 38th. Carlos De Moraes in 39th. And Gary Wheatley, the top 40. And your last few starters, Kevin Medeiros, Rich Foligno. We know Eric Bond won't be out there. That leaves Tiffany Kelly alone on uh, in 44th. Chris Osgood, Rick Kaczynski, Chris Carroll, John Lasky, and David Galonia, the 48th. That will make up the field in LSR Motorsports CRG Masters. Let's try it once again for the veteran class here in the CKNA Grand Nats. And we got a good start and a great start for Mark Steele from the outside. And Eric Fagan lets him in line. And man, this feels like heat number three, fellas. Mm -hmm. Eric Fagan strum the pole, lets Mark Steele get in front of him and says, you know what, let's just push away with my good dancing partner and try to get further and further up the road. Clean for everybody else. Good start for the Masters here, Tony. Yeah, that Mark Steele said he does work well with Eric Fagan, and right there, Fagan just kind of let him slip in. It didn't push him that hard. But Fagan, like we know, that's his style. He likes to be in second, maybe not in first, unless he knows he can really pull on the pack. So we'll wait and see. There's 16 laps, and Fagan has to see how his cart's coming in and to see what's going on. Of course, Fagan on an MGM. What I forgot to mention in the kid cart class, the winner of that class was on an MGM, and now MGM offers a kid cart. So anybody interested in an MGM for a kid cart, you can talk to Paul Rice in April. They do offer a kid cart in the MGM line of carts. But right now, it's Mark Steele, Eric Fagan in second, Jeff Shaw in third. Chris Giamara has done a great job this weekend. He, he was, you know, getting used to getting back into the seat, never racing 206. And now you see him up into that fourth slot on a OTK chassis. I believe that's what he drives. And I believe he's with AEM uh, for this weekend. So a great job by, <laughs> by Chris Giamara. But I'm not sure where. He, I think he had. He, he has fell back, back a little bit. Yeah, yeah he's, he's in that seventh spot right, right there on your right. screen behind the white helmet. Super Tune USA Tony Kart of uh, Ben Cruttenden, the right. top qualifier from Friday uh, or from Friday's action. Down the inside for Ben. Mm. He's going to want another spot. He goes yep. to the inside of that MGM entry of Jamie Bradford and takes over the fifth spot. Bradford. Oh, oh man, was that a slick oh. move by Jamie Bradford. And that's going to be a tough in. break for Bradford there because he got, but he recovered, but it cost him. Yeah, it cost him a little time. Big break uh, for uh, Ben Cruttenden. He lost uh, about eight or nine spots there. And, uh, again, kind of roughed up Jamie, and I think Jamie, that was a, a veteran move from Jamie Bradford. Just kind of waited, sent it back on the inside, and then made sure he used all the racetrack right. on exit. <laughs> But uh, good stuff from Jamie Bradford getting his elbows out when he needed to. He's still in fourth. Giamara in fifth. Right behind there in the sixth spot now is uh, going to be Sean O'Shea, or seventh, as out front. It's Steele, Fagan, then Jeff Shaw, who's actually caught up to Fagan, and Fagan's lost a little time to Mark Steele. And Todd Barron, I believe actually maybe on the Aero chassis. That's what he's... Uh, Todd Barron, yes. Yeah, on the Deadly and Aero go-karts. He likes those machines. Yep. They've had a lot of grip. We've had, uh, of course, many... It's inspired the designs for a number of four-cycle chassis yep. because of how good that... Oh, we got two, three around over in turn number three. Spin further back, and that's uh, split the group up. This was oh. uh, Bill McLaughlin Jr. involved there in the middle. One of the beer arts on the outside. Uh, the 0-5 involved as well. Uh, we're talking um, around the mid-teens. Amber Flint involved and Casey Stahl. One of the Stahl brothers involved in a wreck over at turn number three. So all of them were 15th, 16th, 17th. Now they're going to be about mid-40s. Unfortunate there here, Tony, to have that early yeah, on. Yeah, that was unfortunate there. But uh, back to the top five. It's Steele, Fagan, Shaw, Barron. Barron doing a good job coming up a position, getting up into that lead draft, wants to stay with that lead draft. He's been a hard contender in both the South Series and, and the North Series and the Northeast Series. Mm -hmm. Todd Barron gets out there and races. He was a former IKF champion many 30 years ago, 20 years ago, right, Dave? He told us about it. Yeah, <laughs> sure. So, uh, you know, good racing by Todd Barron, and he's out there in this Masters class. So Mark Steele continues to hold the lead with Eric Fagan right there in second, Jeff Shaw, Barron in fourth, Chris Giamara back up to fifth. But the top three are starting to pull away from the rest of the pack. So uh, it's going to be tough for that fourth-place driver, which I believe is Todd Barron. If he doesn't get any help from Giamara, he's just not going to catch them. Cause they, but he's doing a pretty good job, uh, Todd Barron, number 11. And he is closing the gap on those top three. So uh, maybe he can catch the lead draft on his own. 
because the top three, well, now four, you could say, are way out there. I didn't even see Giamara in the picture there where you see the top four coming around. And uh, like I said, Barron has some space to catch up to your third-place driver, Jeff Shaw. So uh, interesting what will happen here. Right now it's just a battle between Steele, Fagan, and Shaw. That's where the battle is. And they're going to play it clean, I think. They're going to drive like this throughout the most of this race. And you see Steele pulling away a little bit. But don't give up. Don't think Fagan's not. Fagan's not going to let him get too far out there. And Shaw is right on Fagan's back bumper. And Shaw can even help Fagan yes. stay with Mark Steele. And that's what he needs to do. Meanwhile, all alone, Todd Barron runs in fourth. And I'm showing Giamara in fifth. Sean O'Shea in sixth. David Cole up to that seventh spot. Kevin May in eighth. Ryan Cassidy. You know, keep an eye on Cassidy. He's your champion in, in uh, the Legends class. And he's doing pretty good here. Jamie Bradford uh, makes it up to, the, I mean, intent, dropped a few positions. J.D. Gunn out of, out of Camp Chaos running in that 11th spot. And Gunn looking to move up, move that CRG chassis up. John Price, a champion out of Maryland. Nicholson Speedway running in that 12th spot. Yeah, he is uh, up a hand or up a couple. A lot of drivers moving into the top ten again. Cassidy, the biggest mover, he picked up a lot of spots in those uh, final few heat races uh, on the weekend. Thirty spots in one of them. Right. As there's a little bit of side by side action. That's one of the Charlotte Clerk carts, the 498 of uh, Ian McIntyre, up ten so far. He was trying to get around John Price uh, for that twelfth position in the triple four. Uh, I believe uh, the Invader cart he's on. Down to turn one, Todd Barron. Losing touch with the top three right now here. Uh, uh, he uh, was three-tenths slower than the race leader last time by. So he is slowly fading into the distance. And on the other end of the spectrum here, Ryan Cassidy on the move with Kevin May. Now eight spots up for Cassidy. There's David mm -hmm. Cole. He's the next one uh, up the road from Cassidy. A couple seconds up specifically for the LSR Motorsports CRG of David Cole running uh, just behind Sean O'Shea. There's the next group. That's 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and on back. So it's uh, the top three breaking away. Todd Barron kind of by him by himself, and he may yeah. get swallowed up by the next pack pretty quickly. Well, we'll see and what happens three -car with group that. with yep. Giamara, O'Shea, and David Cole, Cole. on screen there. 5th, 6th, 7th, having a good run for all those guys. Again, for Giamara and Cole, I mean, they're not behind the wheel all too much here this year, so impressive. And now David's going to look to the inside. Wow. He'll David. take over the 6th spot there in the infield. So David Cole up to P6 on the number four. <laughs> Uh, CRG. So David Cole making a good move there, getting around the 164 of Sean O'Shea. You got a guy to keep an eye on is the 531 of Ryan Cassidy. Yes. If he can get a dancing partner, I think he can get up there and race with them. But the top three, they're pulling away, and it's going to be tough as this race continues with Mark Steele, Fagan, and Shaw in the top three. And any one of those three right now, if it stays like this, any one of them could be your grand national champion. It's amazing how uh, much the top three were faster than Todd Barron that time. The difference of the push in the draft, mm. nine to eight tenths of a second. Wow. Uh, were they quicker than Todd Barron? A 14 2 for Mark Steele, a 15 flat uh, for Todd Barron. Eight tenths quicker uh, was the leader than the guy driving by himself. That's how big, again, the, the draft is just a oh, part yeah. of uh, low horsepower racing. Yep. And that's part of the game. Again, you can be as great as a, of a driver as you can by yourself if you aren't in that right spot early on in the race before things spread out with a good dancing partner, a good pusher at some point or another. Uh, you're going to end up uh, in the place of Todd Barron, unfortunately, watching the battle for the win a couple seconds backwards. You know, I'm looking out there, and it looks like it's getting really pretty greasy out there. But, I mean, they're still holding their own, but it is a little greasy out there. I don't know how... How to time? Oh, big crash over two, here! Two cars on top up. of each other. One eleven and four fifty-four uh, into that it. Was Carlos De Morales and Todd Overmeyer Sr. getting together for twenty-eighth and 29th. How about some of the big movers, by the way? Here, while well, this race continues to roll here at halfway, Michael Dittmers, Dittmers picked up fifteen spots from the back of the grid to thirty-first. John Lasky up twelve into thirty-third from uh, way back, and they're going to pick up a few more John thanks to that wreck. Joe DeBover's making up spots, 11 gain for him. Problems for Jamie Bradford, by the way. I don't know what in the world happened to the MGM of Jamie Bradford. He just dropped off the face of the earth off the timing monitor as we were kind of circling around, and I'm looking around the racetrack to try and find the 118. We knew he was having a good day going, running uh, 
uh, inside the top 10, but Jamie Bradford, oh man, he goes out uh, as well on lap number six as those two cars. So Jamie Bradford's uh, Masters Day ends there. Rob Howden up nine spots to 21st here. David Galonia up 22 spots. He started basically dead last. David Galonia is charging. He's up to 20th. And he's running lap times that aren't far off the leaders. He had a 114.7 last time. The wow. leaders a 114.3 and a 114.2. So David Galonia is making up a lot of ground. As we watch now, David Cole closing in on Chris Giamara. We uh, mentioned uh, on the uh, grid lineup that if David Cole could just pick up four spots, get to fifth, he'd match the effort of Rob Howden in Legends from 2022 <laughs> and get a podium year to year now to go two in a row for eCartingNews.com, getting some kind of hardware here at the CKNA Grand Nats. Rob couldn't get it done in Legends earlier. He's a little bit too far back to get it done in Masters. David Cole is a bit too far back in Heavy to get anything, but here in Masters, it looks like it may be him, Chris Jamara, and potentially even Todd Barron uh, as they close up to him in a battle for fourth and fifth to get those final two spots to join these three because I don't think anyone's touching them here, Tony. No, nobody's touching the top three yet. And now maybe Giamara, if he can get Dave Cole as a dancing partner, he can maybe push themselves up there and then do battle. Who's going to be on the uh, podium? So right now it's Giamara with that fifth spot. He, he's got a podium position. But David Cole is coming on strong. And David Cole seems like he wants to maybe help him out and push him. And so we, oh, and David Cole now has moved up into fifth place. So Cole takes over that podium position. I'm not sure if Chris Giamara can work with him and push him up because Cole is faster and it's hard for Giamara to catch it. It would have been Cole should have been pushing Giamara until they got up into that top three and then to take that position away from Giamara. But, you know, it's hard to, when you're in the driver's seat, sometimes that forward thinking is very hard. You're just concerned about gaining a position, gaining a position. But you don't know sometimes how far out the lead carts are, and they are out there. And you're starting to see Eric Fagan do the typical Fagan-style racing. He's going to push Mark Steele so that they're going to leave Jeff Shore in the dust. And you can see the space is starting to open up. Steele is out there in front. Fagan's going to push him, and then Fagan's going to try to pass Steele. Now, Steele's a hard guy to pass, so it might not be as easy as everybody thinks where Fagan's going to pull off his famous move, but... He's in position to do that, and he keeps pushing steel. I'll tell you, Jeff Shaw not doing bad, trying to, trying to close up the gap, but if uh, Fagan gets again behind steel and starts pushing him, he's just going to make that gap bigger. Before where they were running bumper to bumper, that is not happening now. So we'll see what happens. But I see Fagan kind of dropping off of steel, and that will allow Shaw to catch back up. So we got a good race here for the top three, and any one of these three can win. And look at the lead the top three have on the rest of the pack. It's unbelievable. Look at that. Yeah, massive gap. And as well, going back there, Todd Barron continues to get reeled in mm -hmm. by that second group. And David Cole has gone around Chris Jamara. David Cole into a podium spot there in fifth here. <laughs> one of his best outings in probably uh, a decade of running one to two races a year or so. David Cole staring down a podium here at the biggest Masters division the CKNA Grand Nats has ever had. Of course, the biggest Grand Nats in general yep. that we've seen. And uh, it's funny here, uh, talking about Eric Fagan, obviously we've seen Beer Alert already get a victory there with Isaac Malkit. We saw Coyote get a couple of wins in earlier parts of the day and then that crazy one, two, three, Whoa. four finish in senior light. Uh, for MGM with Eric Fagan and Paul Rice, I saw Paul Rice around earlier today. He said, man, keep an eye on Kid Cart. That's going to be our class to win it because <laughs> they, did. they have had nothing but bad luck <laughs> for a lot of their senior and junior drivers. And, of course, Eric Fagan was leading on the last lap, then got into it with Jerry Fandry and, uh, you know, that some questionable that. moves there. <laughs> but nonetheless, he's got a chance at redemption yeah. to bring home a, a full-size uh, cart victory for the MGM espionage camp. If he can play this one right, five to go. He's continuing to push Mark Steele, and now Jeff yep. Shaw made a big mistake that lap, lost three tenths, mm. and all of a sudden where he was catching back up to Fagan, yep. that one bobble, and without having a guy behind him to push him. Right, he's in trouble. He's, he's, in, he's trouble. in trouble. You know, I always like to say it's kind of like but if you're in the middle of the pack, if you're Eric Fagan, you know, Jeff Shaw was your safety net. If yeah. you made a mistake and messed up a corner, you got that shove right coming out of the turn. Jeff Shaw, right. he had no room for error, and unfortunately, one bad lap might have just cost him a chance at the win here in LSR CRG Masters. And it's Mark Steele versus Eric Fagan at the moment starting to pull away. 
And meanwhile, that battle for fourth is almost here because Todd Barron has a company. David Cole is three <laughs> car lengths back with Chris Jamara closing in to the green corner. So two battles oh, getting yeah. set to go no. down to the wire here. The final two spots in the podium, fourth and fifth, Barron versus Cole versus Giamara for those two. And, of course, up at the front, setting up for what should be a mano a mano duel between uh, uh, Mark Steele and uh, Eric Fagan. Fagan. But still with four to go, like you said, Fagan probably wanting to wait a little more, give himself some more uh, insurance, if you will, in terms of a bigger gap back to Jeff Shaw. Because he knows if he goes around Mark and Mark wants to go back around him, Jeff's back in it. So he'll wait, minimize the damage, spend more, probably two, maybe three more laps, building up that gap back to Jeff Shaw. It now currently rests at 1.1 seconds. All right, so now we got a three-way battle for that fifth place. Fourth place. Fourth place. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. They caught up to Dr. Todd Barron and Giamara. I see him getting up on the wheel, so he's right there. I didn't think he was going to be able to keep up with David Cole, but he got up on the wheel now, and he's driving that cart, that uh, CRG cart. I mean, I'm sorry. He's the, uh, OTK. Cole on the CRG. Yeah. Giamara right. on that blue and yellow right. Lando Norris yeah. uh, OTK cart. OTK cart. cart. But uh, they've caught up to Dr. D Todd Barron, who we believe is on an arrow cart. And uh, Barron oh, loves it. Oh, there goes, goes Cole. Cole making the move early. And Giamara yep. now trying to get in there. Giamara doing a good job trying to shut out Dr. B Todd Barron. And he does it. So Giamara and Cole start to move up. Oh, man, that, that is where the race is. We still go back to the front with Eric Fagan and Jeff Shaw. And Fagan... Just is going to, I mean, uh, oh, Fagan took the, no, I'm sorry, Fagan in second is going to keep uh, right behind Mark Steele. And as this race comes to an end, I think you're going to see Fagan try to make his famous move and finally give MGM a, a podium, a, a top podium, a Grand National win here at the Grand National CKN, a Grand Nationals 2023 season here at the Newcastle Motorsport Park in Indiana. It would be uh, pretty massive for them, again, to take that kid cart victory and then yep. get it, match it up here with a Masters main event victory. It'd be great also, of course, for Beal Art there is Giamara. Oh, no, oh. David Cole. Oh. Hang on. Oh, man, Giamara went to the inside in turn five. Cole was just <laughs> trying to hang on, and he kind of got hooked there on the outside and dropped a tire. David Cole so close to that ever-elusive yeah. podium. And, oh, man, coming out of turn five, he gets shuffled back. And so now it's GMR into fourth unofficially. Todd Barron in fifth. Cole's now got pressure in the form of Sean O'Shea, who has closed up to his rear yeah. bumper on that Comet Eagle. So Sean now gets new life to try and catch David Cole. And, and uh, Dave might be a little faster, might be able to break back away. But two laps to go. That's a tall order to run back down Dr. Todd Barron and Chris GMR. It may be... Uh, unfortunately out of reach now to get that top five yeah and like i said i saw chris giamara a few laps back get up on that wheel he wanted it he could taste it he could start feeling it evidently the cart was coming in better than it did on the earlier laps and he was able to get up there so now he's in a confident spot on the podium in fourth todd Barron is pushing him around the track and and maybe push him up to try to catch up to your to uh, jeff shaw and uh fagan but I think Fagan and Steele, Steele and Fagan are way out there. That's going to be a race between those two. I think the battle for three might just settle with Jeff Shaw. Might be a good battle for fourth. Right now it's Chris Giamara in fourth, Todd Barron in that fifth spot. Yeah, Todd Barron uh, uh, following Chris Giamara with David Cole three seconds back. That one's pretty much over. Mm -hmm. This one just getting started. There Eric it is. Eric Fagan to the inside ah. of the infield hairpin <laughs> and uh, catches Mark Steele by surprise. Does it with a lap and a quarter to go. And now uh, we'll see how early Eric Fagan wants to defend. Look at Steele already looking for maybe a way to get back by, pulled alongside. Not enough momentum. Here they come. White flag in the air. A one-to-one -one duel here between Mark yep. Steele for Canada. Eric Fagan for the Midwestern USA. Uh, down to turns one and two. Fagan on the all-black and uh, orange and re uh, hot wad red, red. Ironman <laughs> Iron uh, Iron colored, colored uh, MGM. <laughs> yep. And that red and white beer alert for Mark Steele Motorsports as they go to turn number one. And up and over the crest, over to the horseshoe. Not close enough there to get by. All Somebody right. just ran into the flag stand. So, <laughs> oh no. 
Jason right. Burgess, hopefully he's okay. Yeah. Yeah, someone just uh, driven way too down. There goes a, a bunch of barriers over in the on the front straightaway. So so Fagan now made his heck, he made his famous move, and he there might comes. be able to hold it, but Mark Steele is all over his back bumper, and, and really Fagan has him pulled away. Fagan gets into that back straightaway very good, and that's where he gains a little bit on Steele, and it might be rough for Steele. Steele comes back now, and Steele puts it right next to him, but Fagan gets the line, and there goes Steele again. Again, he's going to try to set him up in this turn. And Fagan goes, I mean, Steele goes on the inside and passes him. Oh! Fagan will come back. Now it's a drag race. Here they come. It's a drag race now up the hill, down. Here it goes. And Steele pulled an excellent move and is out. And I don't think Fagan can catch him at this point. Look at Mark Steele. There goes Fagan. He's going to try to get by. And he doesn't do it. Mark Steele gets the win. What a tough, oh man, what a race that was for Fagan. Here comes your third place. That's how far behind Shaw gets third. Giamara ends up on the podium, no problem, gets fourth. Todd Barron gets fifth. Sean O'Shea moves all the way up to six. Ian McIntyre, a, a good run, 16 positions, gets up to that seventh spot. Poor Dave Cole drops back to eighth. He did a great job. He had a shot at the podium. He uh, J.D. Gunn, what a move by J.D. Gunn, getting into the top ten. He finishes ninth, and Kevin May rounds out the top ten. What a race that was. Fagan tried his move, but Mark Steele still had a trick up his sleeve and was able to take the win away from Fagan right at the last, uh, last lap. Maybe Fagan made that move too soon on the white flag lap he should have waited for the checkered flag lap black flag is waving with the checkered which means this race will be under observation and see what's going on but right now it's going to be mark Steele, your champion ckna grand national champion in this um, i'm sorry in this masters class and Eric Fagan will finish up in second. Jeff Shore in third. Christian Amara in fourth. And Dr. Todd Barron gets a fifth place. That's how tight the competition is. You, you're looking at some of the top names in four cycle masters. And it was Mark Steele who did an excellent job uh, being patient, even though he got passed for the lead right at the end, but waited for that last lap. Kind of set up Fagan back and forth. They were seesaw battle. Fagan almost kind of tried to squeeze him at that one point, but Steele hung in there, and then Steele just took the lead and stayed in the lead. Great job by Mark Steele. Great racing by Eric Fagan, Jeff Shaw. Christian Amara got up on the wheel, started pulling up on the pack, and actually got up the fourth spot and gets a podium finish. Todd Barron had some problems out there, but he was able to retain a top five and get a podium finish. What a drive by these drivers. Mark Steele gets a big hug from Gerald from the Canadian series. Uh, Mark Steele was a Canadian. I mean, lived in Canada, right, at one time. Yeah, only recently relocated to the uh, Midwest for Mark Steele. And, and that race, that finish, that was uh, almost an identical result. Uh, last three corners to that Briggs Heavy final from earlier today when yep. Eric Fagan did the same thing, got to the lead early enough, defended, overcooked the entry and got crossed over. This time, Mark Steele saw that he needed, he knew Eric Fagan was going to kind of come down a little bit on the straightaway like he did to Jerry Fandry. Mm -hmm. So he went lower instantly, even as he got it. So and, and I think Fagan maybe gave him a little more respect, but he still kind of tried to drive into his left rear in the Monza yep. and, and get back in there. And Steele hung on strong. And uh, yeah, Mark Steele, good crossover move, textbook crossover from Mark Steele. And for the Mark Steele Motorsports Camp, He's just set the bar high for all of his drivers like Ian Quinn, Henry Wheeler, and plenty more set to go green here uh, in uh, the next class senior medium. Ooh. There's a look at, uh, so how about that? Your team owner goes out and wins, and he's like, yeah, I did it. You better be able to go out and get the job <laughs> done too um, when uh, they could be in to roll onto the grid. But there's a look at the top five, and uh, uh, looks like uh, there goes the podium. We'll get the pictures from everyone over there and see if we can chat with our top finishers. I know Dave Mack is down on the grid as well as the full 60 car senior medium grid is uh, in the staging area mm. they're getting set to roll out onto the racetrack here and man is that one going to be a show here oh uh, that is going to be a show again we got the young guns and the experienced drivers in that race as we did we saw in the light class and let's see if coyote coyote is strong in this race and we'll see how they do uh, but that it is going to be another good show. You got to hang around for this last race. This is the big one uh, coming up. It's a full field of 60 carts. And for the senior medium, 
It's going to be a tight race, and it'll all boil down to the end. There will be some moves early on for people trying to get up through the pack, but the leaders are going to try to stay clean and hold the lead just the way they did in senior light. If, if the Coyote team teams up, they did an excellent job in that race, team racing, pulling away from the rest of the pack, giving Coyote four people on the, on the podium. So uh, we'll see what happens in this medium class. Yeah, as they begin to roll, I see we've got drivers just making their way down to good old Dave Mack. Dave Mack, how you doing down there on pit lane, buddy? Let's send it over to you. Hey, Tony Lato, thank you very much. We're down here at the uh, red, what we're going to call the hot grid, the temporary hot grid. Congratulations to Mark Steele, by the way, a really hard fought win. And Mark Steele, you did a fine job. We're going to try to get an interview with him as soon as he's done on the podium. Uh, we're going to try to catch some people coming down here, though. Marie, our promoter from Canada, is going to try to get me some people to talk to. I'd like to get, I, we did a really good job in the past about getting people from the back of the grid. Now we're going to try to get people from a little farther forward. So Marie is uh, parking people, as we say. But yeah, Mark Steele, what a race. What a way to go, huh? Fantastic. So, and I'm just going to, Wait for a few more people to come by, and then I'll start grabbing them here. And because everybody has to go a little bit farther back, um, so that's what we're watching for. And Marie, I don't see if she has anybody yet. So anyway, wow! The, and I'll tell you what, the track is getting sticky. I'm walking on the track, and my shoes are actually sticking to the track. And everybody knows this is just four stroke. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So we have one. Uh, racer here, and can you tell me your name, please? Uh, Eli Fox. Yeah, and I've talked to you already <laughs> many times. Eli, where's home? I've forgotten already. Uh, Whitestown, Indiana. Okay, and that's pretty close? Uh, I think yeah. Okay, is it right down the road? Is that? Oh, I'm thinking Knightstown. 45 minutes. Yeah. Okay, Knightstown is just a couple of minutes away. And wh what position are you starting today? Uh, 57th. That's a lot of ground to make up, Eli. <laughs> I wish you luck, my friend. Thanks. Did you, uh, do you have any special preparation? You drink a Mountain Dew or something, give you energy, energy drink, anything? Drink some water and a Sprite, you know. I think I'm just going to send it and have a good time. All the way? Yeah. 50-plus spots. That's the goal. You're my man. <laughs> Eli Fox, thank you very much. Kale Zimmerman, I see him coming. He may give me a minute. Um, Kale, if you get a second, don't run away. Yeah. Okay. Full name, please. Uh, I'm Simon Hansen. Simon Hansen? And where yeah. are you from, Simon? What's the I'm state? Arizona. Oh, you're from Arizona, Phoenix uh, area, uh, PKRA. Yes. Okay, Phoenix yeah. Kart Racing Association. And what chassis? I'm Tony Kart. You're Tony. Okay, and you feel good. Oh, where are you starting? Uh, 58th after flipping over yesterday. So. Oh, that was you that flipped over. Okay. Do you feel okay? I'm. Did you tell me your back hurts a little, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, it does. But any better? It's much better yesterday. Okay. Today, took, yeah. Took some aspirin or something? Yeah. Okay. So I wish you the best luck. Don't flip anymore. I will try not to. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Eat more. You're heavier, then the cart won't flip. And thanks, Jerry. Yeah, and can you tell us your full name, young man? I'm uh, Peyton McDonough. Yeah, and where are you from? I'm actually from Louisiana. Louisiana. We got a lot of people from Louisiana who were very popular at uh, um, Metairie and New Orleans area. Is that yes, you? Sir. Okay, yes, sir. same thing. Okay. And your chassis is? My chassis is a Red Speed. OT okay. OTK. Okay. And we raced at uh, NOLA before. Were you there with us? Uh, I believe I was not. I, I don't remember you. So I yeah, was not, okay. no. Okay. Well, I really like the facilities. You're very fortunate to have such nice facilities. Yes, yes. Facility is very nice. Yeah. Where, where are you starting? Uh, sadly, I'm starting 56th. Got a little unlucky, but uh, did, definitely did try hard in LCQ and managed to make it to the final. I'm just happy with that. Okay. You got any so. speed secrets? Uh, I usually like to keep those to myself. Ah, okay. There's the man. <laughs> true, true Louisiana. Okay. Thank you. Mark! Oh, my God. Okay. Come here. Did, did you catch your breath? Should I wait a minute? I'm good, man. Let's okay. do this. So this is the dude. He just won a Grand National Championship. Mark, congratulations. Thank you very much, Mark Dave. Steele. Uh, well, first of all, his name is Mark Steele, and he's from Ohio. Uh, sorry. He's from Ohio. And, Mark, that was easy, right? Um, no, it wasn't <laughs> yeah, at no, all. No, not at all. Um, Are you kidding me? Beating Eric Fagan uh, is, like, he's one of the best in the country. Uh, anytime me and him can go head to head, you know it's going to be an excitement thing. Uh, it was a high speed chess match, and uh, you I, had to be about, I took it. About 10 feet from the line before you realized you had it. Yes. I yes. mean, I, I, 
it was a good drag race out of the scoreboard here. Had to keep the arms up going into shark fin and uh, came out uh, the cut through and had a good pull down the straightaway and that's all she wrote. Can't you just once in a while give us a good exciting race? <laughs> Thanks, Mark. He's my buddy. Hey, if you need a good deal, go see Mark Steele. I'm here to tell you, man, he sells gold and Burrell, silver. Mark. and Yeah, and Burrell, he's very happy. So definitely go see Mark. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So these guys, I got to tell you a story real quick. Oh, there's a real nice restaurant here. I'm looking in the window. And the, I, I want everybody to stand on my left side though. So I'm looking in the window. They're all sitting inside the window. And I could just barely see them. So I, I asked um, the, the bunch of them, can I take your pictures? Yeah, they were just fine. So, so they let me. So the whole bunch of them, I got a bunch of pictures. And then I said, well, make funny faces. This guy right here is capable of making the funniest face I ever saw in my life. And I am going to post him publicly on Facebook later on today. So what's everybody's name? My name's Mitchell Morrow. Yeah, and you're all Canadian too, by the way. Oh, yeah. They're sneaky, sneaky Canadians. Yeah. I'm Christian Savalio. Yes, he is. <laughs> David Barnes. Yep, David Barnes. I'm Chloe Drummond. Chloe Drummond. Okay, and these are all my favorite Canadians right now, and they do a wonderful job. And are you all in this class? Oh, yeah. Okay. And you're racing. Do you, do you uh, are you going to beat up on each other? No, no, we're all friends. Hopefully we work together. <laughs> okay. I'm starting 27th, he's starting 26th. So. Oh, yeah. 27th and 26th? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm 35. 35, 37. Yeah. And 37. Okay, so everybody's right next to each other. So you really, you're not going to bang bang a little bit? No. Oh, I mean, this right. guy might. This yeah, guy might. I was going to say, I, I, I know he will, yeah. So, and everybody's Ontario? Oh, yeah. No Quebec. No, okay. I don't like those guys. Nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you think we're bad? I don't know. I, know. <laughs> I was up there. They treated me very well, though. I was really, really you proud. Them. I not really. <laughs> I pretend to do. They they had more to deal with me than vice versa. But yeah, love going to Canada. I hope we go back. So, um, oh, yeah. congratulate or well, I guess good luck to everybody and. Be nice. Play nice. Play nice. Okay. Be there Play at the nice end. Boys. Play nice. <laughs> Be there. Yeah, I'm talking specifically to him. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Where's my Marie? I lost her. Oh, kill! Can you stand on this side of me? Yeah, both of you. Can you stand on this side, though? Here we go. Okay, what's your name? Colin Aiken. And? Kill Zimmerman. And you're Wisconsin. Where are you, Colin? Uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, okay. And uh, you're both racing right now? Yeah, Where are you starting? Uh, seventh. Uh, 36. Come on, Kale. <laughs> yeah, really? Right. Yeah. Kale's having a really tough week, and I shouldn't pick on him, but I've been friends with him for years and years and years, and he's just wonderful, and he's, uh, um, I, I really appreciate everything about him, so, um, and the family. How's your grandpa doing? Uh, pretty good. Okay, he had a real sore back, and he was going to come up and sit in the tower with us, and I'm not quite sure what's going on, but uh, I wish your, his grandpa, Grant, uh, lots of luck, and are you guys feeling fairly fast? Yeah, I'm feeling fast. We changed a couple things in our car, and I think, yeah, I think we could do good in this final. There we go, Kale. You, did you figure out something? Yeah, I think the VLR the VLRs are rolling right now, so um, I think that him and the other Colin Warren will both have a good shot at winning. Me, not so much. Start 36, so. Okay. Well, you've got you've got real good support over there in the VLR uh, building, I guess, not tent building. So, I wish you the best of luck, both of you, seriously, and stay stay safe. You both mean a lot to me, so. Be careful. Don't don't run into that flag stand like somebody else did in the last race. <laughs> did you see that? No. Oh my god, they came from all the way over here, clear across and hit the flag stand at about 60 miles an hour. It's very fortunate that um, um, Jason and everybody is safe over there. Thanks guys, seriously. Yeah, thanks. Best of luck to you. And okay, uh, we know who we are. I'm Ian Quinn. Yeah, hopefully. Where, where, hopefully, where are you from, Ian? I'm from Northeast Ohio, Chardon. Okay. Currently going to University of Akron, 2026. Oh, you are? What are you taking? Mechanical engineering. Oh, good on you. Tech, okay. which means less math. Yeah. Um, what, what's your chassis? Uh, I'm on the Kubica cart, which is a Burrell okay. with uh, Steel Motorsports. Go Mark Steel. A little bit unusual. Yeah, go Mark Steel. Yeah. <laughs> little bit unusual. Do you got any other Kubica teammates here? Um, because there's a lot of Canadians here, I have a lot. I well, I had Treadwell, but he decided he wasn't going to race today. Okay. Um, I have a couple other Kubicas uh, from VRS karting as well. Okay. Um, so we're we're gonna we're gonna put on a good show for everybody. Uh, you know? well, I wish you the best of luck. Stay safe. Seriously. Oh, I will stay safe, Dave Mack. Thank you. Okay, I'm trying to get. Somebody, I don't know if I get permission or not. Sure, okay, on. thanks, John. James and Christopher. Yep. Buddy. 
Okay, turn this way. Face the camera. Okay, I'll stand in the middle. First of all, John Siegel and Precision Performance Karting. John, do you know these guys at all? Obviously, yes. Well, I think this weekend everybody knows who they are. <laughs> yeah, good point. Absolutely. John Siegel and Precision, Precision Performance Karting. Sorry, it's getting a little bit warm. Um, and uh, you also have a pool business down there, but um, real quick, your name? Uh, Christopher McKeithen. Are you going to win? Yes, sir. All right. Hudson Brown. And, oh, Hudson, are you going to win? Yep. And? James Overbeck. Overbeck, the Cincinnati kid. By um, the, go ahead. Hopefully I can win. By the way, I never asked you if you mind if I call you a Cincinnati kid. I've done that for a year, year and a half. Thank you very Thank much, you. Jim. Good luck, my friend. Thanks, Jim. John. And I guess we're going to go back to... <laughs> Dave, Dave back running it uh, all the way down to the wire there up until the air horn. Luckily, uh, James Overbeck uh, being a class act there, state of the end, he's got to get his gear on pretty quickly. Um, again, keep an eye on some big names coming from further back in the field. Brandon Jarsakrak, if he wants to join his teammates at the front on the BB, uh, PPK BJR combination, he's got a long way to go after a mechanical failure took him out of heat two and he had to start at the rear of heat three. He rolls off 41st here in the main mm -hmm. event today. So a long run forward for Brandon Jarsakrak. And there's a few other big names like him, like Jacob Duvall, who was up front yesterday. Eli Fox even won a heat race yesterday. Both of those guys, they're starting in the 50s because they had to fight their way out of the last chance qualifier. And, of course, mm -hmm. with at least one of those PPK BJR Coyotes out of the mix, that's great news for one guy that was the best of the rest, Colin Warren, Warren. and he gets the pole starting spot for the headline division here at the CKNA Grand Nats, over 100 drivers entered. The best 60 have made up the grid. Colin Warren will lead us to green alongside Pauli Massimino, Ooh. who has still had a great weekend all the way through and a second place run in senior light from the pole. Now maybe starting second, he can win it here in senior medium. Christopher McEthan and James Overbeck make up a youthful second row, and that goes into the third row as well with a couple of senior rookies in Hudson Brown on the inside and Eli Warren on the outside. Row four has got Colin Aitken on the inside lane, who's been just chipping away, getting closer as the week's gone on. Same for Henry Wheeler, who has really kind of been out of the spotlight for a lot of this weekend uh, after a bad qualifying effort in both classes he's competing in. He's driven forward now. He's up into eighth. Mm -hmm. Ian Quinn in ninth. Ryan Gensheimer rounding off the top ten. Former race winner Jordan Pryor knows what it's like to stand on top of the podium. We saw him close there in senior light. He had to drive uh, from tenth there. Could only get to seventh by lap five or six. And at that point, that leading quartet of Coyotes, even with Austin Garrison's GFC and Colin Warren's VLR, too far up the road. The best he could do was to, to get as high as seventh. So he rolls off 11th. Maybe the inside lane would be better for him than the outside, but he's one spot further back to try and catch that lead pack before it runs away. He's joined on that sixth row by Owen Lloyd in the South Georgia karting, number 119 MGM. Then it's David Vasquez, who uh, we've heard from quite a bit over the course of the weekends, made a lot of headlines as the Californian VLR driver is joined by Adam Maxwell on the AMAX Racing Team, number 141, on row seven. Addison Ionello and Jacob Havelo will make up row eight. Jake Havelo with uh, a go-kart older than probably Addison <laughs> Ionello actually is. That's right. Uh, that's still wicked fast right now in the 331. Alex Murphy and Austin Jurors on row number nine. Sean Meyer and Brady Atwood will round off the top 20. That's just one-third of the field on through. Then you got uh, young, young gun Keegan Clark on the inside of Scott Clayman, Nick Sobiek, and everyone else uh, further back. There's 60 on the racetrack. There's a lot more. You can see the campers around. Everyone here this weekend is ready to watch 60 of the world's best Briggs 206 senior drivers get after it. It is... Uh, one of the biggest uh, events in the world now. It is the second biggest event in all of North America, only to that of the Scusa Super Nationals. And this is what it all comes down to, the final race of Grand National 7. Colin Warren on the inside. Pauly Massimino on the outside as the full 60-car grid heads on to the front straightaway. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise here <laughs> around the paddock in the grandstands on the hills because we've got 60. Briggs 206 is tuned up and Whoa. racing down to turn number one. Colin Warren with a great start there to get the lead. Massimino drops into second. So far, so good to turn three. The full field is still going. And over to turn number four, slotting in line to third is McKeithen. Overbeck is fourth. Hudson Brown fifth. 
and everybody, can they get through turn four? We can. Colin Warren, the Pied Piper, into the horseshoe with the full field. No crashes here for the first half lap. That's incredible, Tony. Yeah, really good start there. All of them got through, and you had the two, I'm going to say, veterans up front, Colin Warren and Pauline Massimino, but they're being hard, they're quickly challenged by the young guns. They're coming up. And uh, it's going to be some race here. Colin Warren's going to, I think, try to get out as far as he can because he knows it's just not going to be. He has nobody team uh, uh, teammate near him that could help him. Meanwhile, the Coyote team is right there again with the young guns and somebody, uh, Paulie Massimino. So we'll see what happens. This is, like you said, the biggest race right now. Here's senior medium in the CKNA Grand National, 60 carts taking the green, and you see your top drivers up front, some new and some old, but they're up there. And right now, Colin Warren, he's a guy to watch, but he's being uh, – there he goes, the number 19. Christopher, uh, Christopher McKeithen. McKeithen. Right, so, uh, again, the young guns coming to the front, and that's, that's going to be the deal. But – Colin Warren, he's not going to get much help out there. I mean, they're not going to take him out, but he's not going to get help. So uh, a tough break for Warren, but don't that, count Warren out. that's why he's out. going right back, yeah, right here right, in turn right. five. He's got to make his moves now. He's got to try to tire them out or try to outrun them. Maybe condition. I mean, cards will change a little bit when you get down to the ending laps. He's hoping for anything. Maybe he's got his card set up. Oh, no, Hudson Brown getting shoved yep. a little wide out of the uh, cell tower. Whoa, whoa, almost. He'll yep. lose a lot of spots there. In fact, yellow flags are waving as they go Somebody past. Out. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got three. Dylan Munson yeah. involved, two more involved. Battling still going to the end of the group. That's allowed the top three to break away as Warren blocks low whoa. in the infield hairpin. Had he not... Uh, had Massimino been willing to work with him, yeah. calling open in the door and running normal, they might have started to break away. But that one corner blocking, and now this pass, M Massimino through. McKeithen trying to go, uh, and he and, does and get by for second. Yep. Here comes Overbeck. Right. He'll look to the inside down the front straight away. Look at them coming through. There is uh, Jason Burgess off to the side. Nobody's going to help him. <laughs> and look at this. Warren back on McKeithen. Colin Warren back through to second. Didn't have any help. Didn't need it. Nope. I got to give, again, Colin Warren, a seasoned driver. He's very calculated, but he's doing what he needs to do to stay up in the top five and stay in second place. He'd rather be in first, I think, but at least he was able to break up the Coyote team there, and that's what he needs to do because once they start teaming up, they're going to be uncatchable the way they were in the medium class. So we'll see what happens here. A bunch going on here. Oh, look at that, right. Jake Havelow. Holy moly, Jacob Havelo gets through on the inside, three wide. Yeah. Overback trying to go three wide back to him. He's going to put Havelo on the outside. Mm. Hudson mm. Brown in the Whoa. middle trying to hang on. He does. He'll get freight train. There's Vasquez down the inside. Backed up wow. behind is Henry Wheeler. Addison Ionello gets through. You pick the wrong lane, you'll lose five spots oh, to no yeah. fault of your own. And the freight train just keeps on rolling in this massive swarm oh. headed to the Monza. Oh, that's all the way from about 12th to maybe 27th. Brandon Jarsakrak is already up there. Your B, uh, B uh counter of how many spots he's up. He's up already 13 from uh, in the 40s, 41st to 28th. As Warren leads, Massimino looked low, not wow. close enough. Can't get down the inside with McKeithen. Wow, what a race we're having here. Eli Warren in that fourth spot. Colin Aitken in fifth. Ian Quinn in sixth. Owen Lloyd making it up to the seventh spot. Good drive by Owen Lloyd in the 119. Ryan Gesheimer in eighth. Adam Maxwell in ninth. And Jordan Pryor in the top ten. What a race we got going on here. But you got to go back to the front with Colin Warren doing everything he knows in kart racing to try to keep Paulie Massimino, Christopher McKeithen, out of it but he is doing a good job i don't know if at the end of 16 laps now christopher mckeith and massimino if they team up at the end they can probably push by their, their team right here we go already massimino making the move trying to take chris uh mckeith with him so this way but colin warren a seasoned driver gets in between him he wants to break up that deal but Eli Warren, Colin Aiken, Ian Quinn, I mean, look at how tight these guys are still racing. This is 206 medium top drivers here at the CKNA oh. Grand oh. National. Oh, Warren, we got, and oh Warren could were, be in trouble here. Well, Colin Warren yeah. got to the inside of Massimino, and Massimino not seeing him kind of rub tires. McKeithen got around both of them. It's the rookie yep. leading the uh, field as Eli Warren gets shuffled to the wayside. He'll drop all the way behind Owen Lloyd there. Uh, in that MGM, Warren was 
Uh, Eli Warren was methodically cutting his way up to he had gotten to third and then got pushed back to fourth, back to fifth, now back to uh, seventh uh, behind uh, Colin wow. Aitken and uh, Owen Lloyd. And uh, it, ahead of him, Ian Quinn is up a handful of spots already into the fourth position behind Massimino and Colin Warren. And they've all got to track down Christopher McKeith yeah. and Massimino and Colin Warren have been going at it a little bit, but they got to put their differences aside if they want to keep their Grand National win hopes alive. Let's see, is anyone going to dive? Yeah, they're not going to do that. Colin Warren to the inside in the green corner. He goes back by on Massimino, who gives him a little wave and says, okay, that's how we're playing, fine. I'll follow. Oh, he's going to pay for it. Quinn oh, gets the through there for third. Yeah, V and Quinn. That's what Ian Quinn had to do to help VLR driver Colin Warren to get up there because Massimino probably wasn't going to do much to help him. He'll race with him, but he wasn't going to do much to help him. Now, if the number 97 of Ian Quinn can get behind, Colin Warren might make Colin Warren in contention again. McKeithen, in the meantime, has pulled a good lead, but it might be, get shortened out pretty quick. Colin Warren is up into second, and he needs the help, though, to get up there to catch McKeithen. And don't count Paulie Ma Massimino out. He's right there in fourth, and he'll be making a move to try to support his teammate of McKeithen out in front. So we got a good race here, and Colin Warren has done excellent in trying to keep the Coyote team separated so that at least he might have a shot at the end. And right now in the position Colin Warren's in, he does have a shot, but it's still early on in the race. This kind of a dogfight here makes it where anyone can get up to the lead pack, and we keep seeing more new names join the fight here. McKeithen blocking low in the green corner. He heard Warren show up, and he decided to cover the inside. He's going to do it again here. Warren is going to go a little bit wider. He's going to open the door for Ian Ooh. Quinn to get there. Does Quinn run him a little wide? No, he's going to give him room to get back in and tuck back in line. Classy move there from Ian Quinn. Very clean. He could have forced the issue with Colin yep. Warren. Yep. He cut him a big no. break there and let him back in well, line. Quinn, Quinn is probably saying, hey, I got to keep this, this team broken up right now, and if anything, I can team up with Colin Warren, even no, he's that. There goes Colin Warren. Colin, Colin Warren knows he's got to get into the lead. Also shaking up the young driver, letting him know that, hey, it's not going to be that easy. You think you're out in front, I'm going to come back. And he does. And he gets the lead. So a great racing going on here. Now you got to see if Ian Quinn can make a move and support Colin Warren so that now Colin Warren will have a better shot. And Ian Quinn does try to get behind Colin Warren. No, he wow. pushed McKeithen. He yeah. pushed McKeithen oh, right by to the yeah. lead. Yeah. Now he goes oh. by Colin Warren, or he almost, yes, oh. he gets through. Look who's joining now. Colin Aitken is there. Lloyd is there. Massimino gets shuffled way wide. Overbeck goes by. And all of this, by the way, Brandon Jarsakrak, this is the best thing that could happen for him. The more they fight, the slower they go, yeah. the better of a chance he has to get there before it's over. He's up 17 spots. Last time by B. Jars at the fastest lap of the race. Yeah. So he's going to pick up some more, and he's linked up with Gary Lawson back in 23rd. They're making up a lot of time, and the more these guys fight up here, the more everyone closes back up. And if you can keep picking up the scraps off the table, yeah. pick a few more guys up, then get a fight in front of you, catch that pack, find a way around him and keep going. And uh, with the experience of Gary Lawson and Brandon Jarstrack, most guys, when they get passed by those two, they're top of the screen there. That's how big this lead pack is. It is the entire top 25 cars, single file, there to turn number three. Oh, what a race we're having here. And as you said, Jarstrack and Law uh, Lawson, these are two seasoned drivers, veterans. They can do it if they work together and get up here and maybe – get into the top five, get into, onto the podium. But right now, I, we see that McKeithen, McKeithen Quinn. is still holding the lead, but Quinn is right in there with Colin Warren behind. Oh, Look at Overbeck. How Overbeck. about a two-for-one special? Oh. oh, no. Now he's three wide. Aitken gets underneath them. Warren holds on and uh, ends up with a net gain of nothing, nothing. <laughs> for Overbeck. Jake Havelo, he is able to pick around. Actually, Overbeck. This time gets wow. it done on Colin Aitken. Havelo is going to get shovel wide. Hudson Brown Hudson was Brown dirt tracking about three <laughs> laps ago. He's back up there. And Owen Lloyd to the inside of Havelo. Oh, they're three wide. That's going to get tight there, boys. Whoa. On the inside's out of Maxwell. 
Here comes Massimino to work his way back forward. He'll get underneath Amax's driver. And Eli Warren, who was third a few laps prior, is just barely hanging on for dear life ahead of Jordan Pryor back in the 10th or 11th spot as Ian Quinn has gone to the lead here at the halfway mark. Eight down, eight to go. It's the 97 out front for the first time today. Yeah, and it's kind of early for the 97 to take that lead, but he had no choice. He's got to do what he's got to do, but I think he's out there a little too soon, and we're seeing other cars Part starting to come through the pack, which it might make to change this whole top five. It, it could be happen here as Carters are starting to get back into it, who got problems on the start, but coming back. But right now, uh, uh, he's, Quinn in the lead with McKeithen in second, Warren in third, Overbeck in fourth, Aiken in fifth, Hudson Brown now up to that sixth spot, but they're all running bumper to bumper. So it could be any of the top ten, I'm going to say, that could get up there. And if Lawson and uh, Jossacrack get up there, it could change the whole pictures of this. But right now, like I said, I think Ian Quinn kind of got in the lead early on with all of these cards so close together, but really he had no choice. He's got to do what he's got to do. He's got to try to get out there. Hopefully that they'll, they'll get into it behind them. Uh, but I, I, with Colin Warren, you know, he's not going to make a mistake. But McKeithen, and McKeithen's been driving an excellent race here all weekend long, so it's going to be tough for them. And uh, you're looking at Jake Hevlo moving up to seven, up nine spots, up to seven hey. spot. And uh, Hudson Brown in, I believe, in sixth. So there are some drivers coming up, but I don't know if they're going to have enough time to battle for a podium position, but we'll wait and see. Yeah, I mean, they need more battling just like this. McKeithen catches Ian Quinn off guard, gets through to the lead. Colin Warren kind of overshoots it. Now he's going to lose second after just getting it. Uh, Here comes get Overback out. trying to get there. But Overback does not have help because it's a VLR for Colin Aitken. He picked the outside lane to maybe his own detriment as he gets shuffled Ooh. off the racetrack. Good save. And wow. now here comes Hudson Brown crossing him over. He's got Jake Havelo. Jacob has no team allegiances. He's driving a yeah. go-kart nobody else has. He doesn't care. He's going to the front, whichever lane is going to move. And that was the inside, so he pushes Hudson forward. Oh, Paul Massimino still there. There's Eli Warren alongside Owen Lloyd. Uh, Warren on the outside now of Maxwell. Picks that one and at least hangs on. He's able to get around Amax's driver. Six to go. McKeithen out front. The rookie. Could he pull off an upset of the year? Again, this guy went up to the CKNA Canada division. Smoked him up there at their home track in their first time ever going to Goodwood Cartways. And then beyond that, of course, he's had such a spectacular oh, year to this whoa. point. It's Colin Warren. He's getting, oh, oh. Hudson Brown. Time oh. bombs him. And he runs him way wide. Colin Warren, his hand in the air. He's like, what is going on? I got run Aww. off the track by one coyote, and another one just drove into my side. Yeah. Hey, these young kids have no love oh, for this no. old veteran out here, man. They are just beating him up. You know what's happening with the young kids? They see somebody make a mistake, and Colin Warren did make a mistake, but they didn't give him the room to get back in there. Hudson Brown just took it and said, hey, you made a mistake. I'm going. You, you got to lose this position. Maybe not the right attitude, but that's what's going to happen with the young guns. They're going to look to tr try to make a move whenever they can. And right now, McKeith is doing an extra, excellent job out front. And the only thing uh, I was going to say that uh, Hevlo and, and Brown had in common, not that they're on the same chassis, they're both from Maryland. So I don't know if they'll work together. But that was tough for Colin Warren, man. He got beat up from both sides. All right, penalty flag flying here yeah. this time by. Yeah. Don't know who that's going to be for. We saw some rough driving up there. Sign. He's got the sign He's out. He's got so. the sign out for somebody. Yep. I'm not sure who is going to get that one, but he's also, of course, got his hand in the air. Five fingers for the five uh, laps remaining. McKeithen still at the point over Overbeck. Jake Havelo is third. Uh, then Ian Quinn is fourth. Overbeck goes, hey, I'm your teammate. Let's go. Let's get away just like we did in senior light, except this time you can lead us for the uh, couple laps coming to the white flag. Yeah. Havelo trying to stay close. Quinn close. Again, no allegiance is there for either one of them in the lead pack. They're just trying to hang on to the top two's coattails. Paulie Massimino back into that fifth spot. By the way, it's all shook out. Uh, right behind him is the VLR of Colin Aitken. Eli Warren is seventh. Colin Warren eighth. And uh, Jarsakrak up to 15th and still going. <laughs> 26 spots picked up 
for Brandon Jarsakrak here in this main event. He's still digging for more on that throwback scheme coyote. He's trapped in this pack with David Vasquez and Keegan Clark trying to pick Ooh. up another one. Is he going to get it? Yes, he will. That's yeah, another yeah. spot for Brandon Jarsakrak to go forward. 14th now, 27 spots here with still four more laps to go. What a drive. Yeah, what a drive by Jossocrat. And what a drive by Hevlo. He's been struggling all weekend long trying to get up there, and now he's up there. He's in that third spot, I believe, and he's driving that old, like you said, arrow cart is older than probably McKeithen out there. But uh, he, well, you got to give him credit making it up. He took advantage when Hudson Brown and uh, Colin Warren and all of them got into it. And he made it up into that third spot, and I think he can hold on to it. I don't know if he could be a threat when it comes to the end. He's trying to catch up to James Overbeck and trying to get in there. He might get some help. Yep. Inching closer. Half yep. a tenth better yep. last time by was Jake Havelow to uh, Christopher McKeithen. So right. he's getting there just bit by bit. And again, like you said, 13 spots gained for Jacob Havelow. Yep. Jarsakrak's going to outshine the Hart Charger Award by a mile over anyone in this oh, yeah. one, but 13 <laughs> spots up from 16th. Jacob Havelo is trying to get himself a main event win here. And uh, there's Hudson Brown going at it with David Vasquez. He gets Ooh. through. Vasquez goes backwards. Jarsakrak back with Vasquez again. I don't know how Vasquez got back around him, <laughs> but uh, he had to work his way back by. And now he's working on Gary Lawson. They're door to door. Whoa. These two have had run ins before. No love lost there as they go side by side. <laughs> Not an inch extra given between the two veterans. And Jarsakrak watching his teammate Hudson Brown go as Lawson. Points on by, says, if you fellas go through, I'll let you in. And uh, now behind him, they all kind of line up again. So uh, Jarsakrak wow, and uh, Lawson, uh, they were, uh, that was 14th uh, for Jarsakrak across the line. Hudson Brown up to uh, 13th on his recovery. <laughs> I believe Hudson probably uh, dropped back uh, behind Colin Warren a lap or two ago. I think that may have been the issue because he was up a lot oh, higher. Yeah. And he then he may have right. gotten, he may have been the one they gave the penalty right. flag to yeah. over in turn Correct. number four. And but so he gave it up and dropped back and he gave, paid it back, right? Yeah, assuming. We don't know yeah. that, no, right? We, we can't know. say it from we our side. Right. Nonetheless, look at this. James Overbeck now is trying to play blocker a little bit to help out McKeithen because they are swarming him. Jake Hamlow to the outside, Quinn to the inside. They're getting frustrated wow, because that, uh, Christopher McKeithen uh, is now coming to two to go, and this uh, lead's about to be huge. Massimino's in there. He's in the middle. Uh, Three wide. Oh, man. What? Three oh. wide, and Quinn runs Massimino wide. Oh. He'll get himself back to third. Oh, there goes oh, Havlo on the inside. Colin Warren back there. Jordan Pryor there. James Overbeck being a loyal soldier, <laughs> defending there for second. I wow. think, was that a black flag given to someone in that group? Might be, because they were really roughing it up, but I, I didn't think anybody did I think did James Overbeck bet. just got a black flag. Oh. It was given to the man in second, is what we're being told. James Overbeck might have just gotten a black flag given here with two laps to go. Wow. He's oh, in. He He's it. off. Oh. James Overbeck's off. Black flag to the kid in second. I don't believe that. I'm not sure why I wasn't watching that close, but a wow. tough break for Overbeck. So that'll put Ian. And look at Hevlo now starting to come back. Hevlo, I, I said he wouldn't be a threat, but he could be. They got a lot of territory to make up, though, before yeah, they no, can catch up McKeithen. McKeithen caught a break with all yep. of that that was going on back there. He caught a break, but now here we go. Well, either way, I mean, that's wild. That's the first black flag just straight up. Oh, oh, no. oh no, Jordan oh. Pryor. Oh. Jordan Pryor, oh. Jordan Pryor oh. and Colin Warren oh. slide, and they collide there. The Two the former Warren. winners battling in the top five. Oh. The Canadian gets spun around off the racetrack. Warren gets back going. Jason Burgess, Burgess one more time around here for CKNA Grand at 7. Christopher McKeithen, oh, McKeithen with the walk-off. Of the weekend for the rookie, Ian Quinn second, Adam Maxwell third, Massimino fourth, Havlo back to fifth, Eli Warren's recovered to the sixth spot, Colin Aitken is seventh, uh, Henry Wheeler is eighth, Keegan Clark is ninth, and look who is in the tenth, Brandon Jarsakrak, 31 spots gained on the PPK BJR Coyote. Wow, what a drive by Jarsakrak. He has moved up it getting into the top ten. But a good run. We got five to five, top five. This Chris is the fight for third on screen right oh, here. Yeah. Adam Maxwell there in the blue and white Amax racing machine. Then it is uh, Paulie Massimino behind. I believe Maxwell on. Hevlo. Uh, Maxwell trying to defend the spot into the green corner. Hevlo, like you said, there in the blue and yellow arrow right behind. Then a big swarm yeah. with Eli Warren and Colin Aitken. Uh, and Hevlo. Henry Wheeler going at it. Is Hevlo high? 
low crossover. Look at Wheeler leading that next pack. Jarsakrak's in it. All battling, all to the end. And Hebo for, gets between. But for Christopher yeah. McKeithen, yeah. out of the final turn <laughs> on the Brandon Jarsakrak Racing Precision Performance Carney Coyote, it's a rookie main event winner <laughs> at CKA Grand at seven. McKeithen wins it in the black and checkers. Ian Quinn second. Maxwell third, Havelo fourth, Massimino on the podium in fifth, wow. Wheeler, Aiken, Warren, Keegan Clark, and again, the hard charger, Brandon Jarsakrak. Team owner is going to be happy. He's got another one of his protégés, a grand national title, and 31 spots gained for the team captain there from wow. 41st to 10th. We got to catch our breath after yeah, that one. What there, a Tony. race Holy that was. Moly. And McKeithen caught a real good break at the end there, but he – you know, he was in the lead. It wasn't like he caught a break. He, everything worked out for him. But he was up front, and he did a great job and took the win very easily. Quinn was there in second. Adam Maxwell Hevlo coming up third, 12 positions to get that fourth place. Massimino playing it safe. He's been a great, been driving great for this whole weekend. Gets a uh, podium finish and does a great job there. And like you said, Joss a crack. The head of the team there is going to be pretty happy. We'll keep our eye on the scale line. I would not be surprised to see a few frustrated drivers after that one. We saw a lot of guys have to eat some dirt oh, yeah, in that yeah. main event. I mean, I mean there's, there's a lot that's going to go on there, I think. And uh, the black flag was out. Whether or not, uh, I mean, uh, we saw him just pull right off the track. You I know? mean, he knew it. Yeah. And, and it wasn't a meatball. We confirmed it with no. our spotters. It no. was a full black, full flag, black flag for James Overbeck. And, uh, again, wild to see that. I don't know where the move was that, that they were so it, right. frustrated about it. I right. mean, he, we saw him defending hard for second. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, nothing, you know, there's, there's no radio comms. No, right. I don't, you know, I I'd be curious. It, but, right. obviously, they saw something they did not like. Right, right. I, I didn't see Overbeck, you know, do anything major that would say, hey, not even a roll black flag, just black flag, Straight get him it. off the track. But, yeah, we didn't see everything maybe. So whatever the, whatever the officials thought, they thought it was serious enough that the black flag them off the track. But also the checking and black flag was waived, and I would think there's still something else. Maybe there's, you know, tram line things or something going on. So we'll see. I believe hopefully the top five stays the top five. But uh, there was a lot. We knew that was going to happen. We knew it for, from this weekend with, with, you know, over 500 carts and with the names that are here, the top drivers and the young guys coming up. We knew there was going to be a lot of pushing and shoving. We just hoped that it would stay clean, nobody getting hurt. And I think we got through this weekend pretty well. And we've seen some great driver from the young drivers and from the seasoned drivers teaching them what they need to do sometimes when they got to be a little more patient. But you got to give them credit. It was some great racing, and, and it was the young guys up front. You yeah, know? and there's, <laughs> uh, there's a look at uh, Colin yeah. Warren over there as yeah. well as uh, the VLR of uh, Kale Zimmerman. Uh, over uh, chatting here in the scale line. And again, Colin Warren, he, he probably got uh, uh, pushed around more than yep. doing the push and more than anyone else in that one. And then him and Jordan Pryor getting together at the end just was a kind of a last second throwaway, unfortunately. So uh, yeah. just uh, an unfortunate end here for a former Grand Nats winner. I believe this is maybe the first Grand Nationals. Colin Warren hasn't won a single main event because he's always found a yep. way to be up yep. there. And he's won, you know, quite a few. Uh, Gary Lawson there standing in the background as well as everyone's uh, <laughs> chatting after uh, the scale zero. We wait for the top five uh, results. One other cool thing to note here for Christopher McKeithen is, you know, Christopher McKeithen, for all the club racers tuning in around the country, this is a guy for you. He grew up in uh, North Carolina, was uh, racing at the Trackhouse Motorplex Club Series, and that was it. That was all they were able to manage. And then after uh, getting onto the radar of uh, John Seglum at Precision Performance Karting and Brandon Jarscrack, they started taking him, helping him out, getting to the CKNA South Division races, and then to the Nationals, and then it was okay. We are going to help turn you into a superstar because we see something there. And, well, today all of that comes out to uh, uh, pay off. Christopher McKeithen is the main event uh, senior medium grand national champion here from CKNA Grand National 7. 
Of course, uh, Paulie Massimino gets a podium. He finally gets some hardware. Well-deserved after the good runs he's had here over the years once again. Adam Maxwell, former Grand Nats winner in heavy. He gets some hardware. And Jake Havlo sets what should be a record for the <laughs> oldest go-kart to podium at the CKNA Grand Nationals. You don't need a new piece of equipment. It's well, nice. That's it looks what it's nice. That's what well, it's can showing. Do it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing that that cart, you know, people will say, hey, my cart's getting weak. It's getting soft. I got to change the chassis out. <laughs> Talk. Talk to uh, Hevlo and see what he thinks. And uh, all he did with it was repaint it up. But he's always had those blue and yellow colors ever since he's been racing juniors back in the day. He was a Gold Cup champion, him and his brother, many times over. They would win just about every Gold Cup they would enter. So it's good to see him back in the 206 uh, doing something, and he, he did prove himself again getting up into that fourth spot. And believe me, he had no help from anybody, and he was side-by-side side a lot of times with people trying to make a move, and they weren't going to give in to him. And But he, he stayed good. Just the way Paulie Massimino, Paulie Massimino could have got really into it, not finish on the podium, but he did also a good job of staying with the group and being a seasoned driver, saying, okay, you know, I don't want to get into trouble here. I'm going to try to keep it straight. And he still got a podium finish, which means a lot to that whole team. You know, yeah. I mean, they, they're, they're definitely the dominant team here. <laughs> There's the right on camera. You see the Coyote team, uh, precision performance there. It, they are the dominant team here, and this will go a long way for them. And like you said, with, with uh, McKeithen doing, the, doing this win here, I, I, how long has he been in seniors? <laughs> this is rookie year. Rookie year, Christopher okay. McKeithen. He's on top, thumbs up, and uh, he's standing by down yep. with, of course, the voice of CKNA. That has been from the beginning. Dave Mack, only fair to have you help us talk to our main event winner, our last one of the day. Dave Mack, take it away. Oh my goodness, am I ever lucky? I'm standing next to a Grand National Championship winner in his rookie adult season. Christopher McKeithen, how does it feel to be a Grand National Champion? It feels great, and uh, we've worked for this really hard. And last year in junior, I led here almost the whole race and uh, was leading with two to go and then got shuffled. So it feels really good to get the monkey off our back and get into victory lane. Christopher, you are having one of the greatest years I can ever remember of anybody racing, and I'm, I'm truly your biggest fan. You know that. Yeah, he came out to Canada. That. He won three out of four at Toronto, and they truly were ganging up on him. They did not want that doggone American to do, have a successful weekend, and yet a very successful weekend. Now you're the Grand National Champion. What's next? Uh, I think we might try to go to IKF or uh, run some GoPro Club to finish out the season. Uh, IKF down in Texas, third week of October. May try to run that. I'm not okay. Sure yet. Well, I didn't mean for you to promote other series. I meant you were supposed to say we're going to Disneyland. Christopher, who do you race under? Uh, Precision Performance Karting, Coyote Motorsports, GT Machine. They're all top people, top notch. And that John Seaglum, is he a pretty good guy? Oh, yeah, he's a great guy, <laughs> along with Jim Lapari. Jim Lapari, too, also, yeah. yeah. Christopher McKeith, and I am just thrilled to know you. I, I, I'm not kidding. I am thrilled to be watching you race when you're young. You make me. Very proud of you. So, I thanks for it. thanks for letting me call you my friend. Yep. Congratulations, champion. Thank you. <laughs> and there you have it, folks. Here, uh, myself, uh, of course, Tony the Toe uh, Cirillo. Uh, man, what a what a great weekend of racing here. Uh, I know Dave Mack is uh, over the moon. You can see he's beaming ear to ear, probably even beaming, oh, smiling yeah. more than yeah, Christopher. Yeah. <laughs> he's just having a great time. It was, it's been a great weekend uh, of racing. 500 plus entries 500 plus. fit them all in here somehow and uh and we were able to get through the whole weekend for the most part you know pretty close to on time as well yep. here for uh, yep. grand national sunday so yep. that's pretty cool and uh to see you know the congregation of so many people this this may be their only traveling event of the year you know that's i right. mean that's that's where the grassroots part of this event is we talk right. about the high level drivers the veterans the guys backed by the major manufacturers right like your charge the cracks and right. colin warrens and so on and so forth but the real heart and soul of this event is the families where this is their big vacation their one vacation maybe yeah, this right. is what they do they come they race at their home track all year long maybe they can make it and commit to the CKNA Divisional and then they come here and this is their one big weekend and it's so cool to see all these people here. The campground at night every morning <laughs> has been so lively. Kids yep. running around having such a good time even more than and, and that normally here happens uh, with the way Mike Adams runs Newcastle Motorsports oh, yeah. Park. It's always a good time all day long and of course you know kudos to Greg Jasperson, Lynn 
leaning into that. Steve Vermeer and everyone at CKNA, I mean, there was something to do every single night promoted by the series, not to mention what kind of uh, goofing off with your friends you can have when you're pitted next to each other <laughs> from fence to fence and just yeah. walk around a, a city of go-karters basically right. here. Yeah, really great for the, for the carters and the families that come to this. This was a great race, and, and like we said, you might have had a lot of top, <laughs> top drivers and names here, but that only makes the people that weren't up there saying, hey, I want to try to run with these people, and, and brings them back, I think, year after year because they're saying, hey, I think I can run with them. The way the rules are, it's such a spec class that they do have a chance. They just got to you know, figure out everything as far as setup, and we know it's so important. And, and it really, nothing, nothing backed off with 16 laps. I, I didn't see anything that, you know, like kind of dra dragged out at the end where somebody started losing power or traction or anything. Everything stayed consistent, and everybody seemed to have their cart set up right. I mean, at least in the top 20 or 30, they, there was no not very few people. If they were falling off, we did not see I didn't see it. So doing a great job here. Uh, and, and like you said, the family atmosphere, the fun, it was really good that uh, everybody had a good time. And, uh, there we go, Dave. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I, just, yeah. I was trying to be as sly yeah, I as I could right there and say, Brandon, can we get a little bit of help to get Dave Mack oh, on yeah. it? Okay, okay, i got to tell everybody, yeah. me and Tony are not professionals. These guys are <laughs> really professional, and we're screwing up their broadcast so <laughs> no, badly. No, I'm sorry, no. Xander, and the whole gang. He's got a whole field of people here that are working. Yeah. we got um, <laughs> the floor directors and, I don't know, everything, cameras and whatever. So, sorry. Yeah. No, Xander, no. But, the car chaser does a great job, yeah. and like I said, I know the drivers and, and everybody appreciates that because you want that recognition. You spend a lot of time. You spend a lot of money. You want that recognition. Car Chaser has come on the scene, and it's something that we didn't have 20, 30, 30 oh, years no. ago. We Absolutely didn't ha not. even have the Internet back then, but it, we had the magazine, and, and that's why I used to write articles for the magazines and, and get that out there, try to s let people know who are, the, who are the people to beat. And here we know by this who are the, who are the people to beat, and that sets the challenge out for these drivers that couldn't get up there, what do they got to do? And believe me, everybody learned something here, especially at Newcastle Motorsport Park, because this has been the place where the Grand National has been held year after year. So that kind of helps the people that come back. At least yes. they know the track. I mean, I know we change it up a little bit, but it's still basically, the, you know, the setup is going to be the setup. And uh, it, it's one of the few places, like I said, you can hold a race this big. Yeah, there's not a lot of places that the CKNA Grand Nats would fit uh, if it was ever to leave here. But everyone has such a good time here. This place hosts this race so well. Uh, of course, for us, uh, our first time getting to stream it, we were here in 2021 doing just some feature coverage. And uh, this weekend to be here, we felt the love from all of you guys, both online and here around the paddock. Our entire team has had a blast. And uh, it's another stint in our busy season. Unfortunately, of course, this is our only CKNA event of 2023. Hopefully, we'll be back for maybe yeah. a few more than yeah. just one in 2024. But uh, just as the schedule's working together for CKNA, our schedule for next year slowly coming together. And we know that our schedule for this here continues to roll on of course for car chaser viewers dave mac mentioned it's a monthly membership we race and stream almost every single weekend next weekend it's the u.s pro kart series season finale at Trackhouse motorplex will be live in six days from mooresville north carolina at another world-class facility with probably over 250 drivers from the pro two-stroke side of the world and uh, we continue to roll all the way in our road to vegas to end it off with the biggest race in north america just now only a little bit bigger than this one the <laughs> las vegas scusa super nationals the 26th edition happening at Las Vegas Motor Speedway in November. But, of course, for Dave Mack, for Tony the Toe Cirillo, for the entire CKNA team, for the Newcastle Motorsports Park hardworking track crew, and a huge thank you to all of you guys yep. from all of us at Cart Chaser, myself, Xander Clements. It's been a pleasure, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sign up. Get a year subscription. <laughs>